The NHL playoffs are finally here. Not long from now, one team will be awarded the greatest trophy in professional sports. And here at Pub Sports Radio, we are celebrating it with our first ever NHL playoff pool. $50 to enter and all of that money except for $3 in credit card fees goes into the prize pool. Your job is to create a roster of 20 players, any 20 players of your choosing. One point for a goal, one point for an assist. The team with the most points at the end of the Stanley Cup playoffs gets the cash. The top 10% will be paid here in our Pub Sports Radio NHL playoff pool. Picks must be in by Saturday, April 20th. Puck drop of the first playoff game, which should be an easy day to remember for you ganja smokers out there. 420, it all goes off. Compete against your favorite Pub Sports Radio personalities and get that cash. The Stanley Cup playoffs are here. Let's get paid. Yeah, the Stanley Cup playoffs might be here, but the NBA playing tournament is here as well. I'm joined by my man, Connor Miggity Miggity Mac, and my man, Nicholas Earl. Cheers. No, I cheers. I'm scared to take it, actually. Damn, you get some uh, hair on your chest with that, huh, Billy? I'm a man <laughs> with that shot. I might need this brown liquor. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I'm i a Sixers fan, but I'm not a Sixers fan. I had to say publicly last year I'm not a Sixers fan anymore so people could stop texting me and tweeting me and sending me DMs. And it worked this year. I haven't gotten a text or a fucking DM besides Joel being hurt. But, Connor, I'm back on him. I had to do it. I bought the opener. I took it. I took the cheese bait. I'm in on it. Sixers money line. Fire me up. I played at minus 165. I played at minus 200. And I played at minus 215. Wow. Good luck. I, I, I'm the sucker here. It seems like uh, <laughs> I had to take the heat. And uh, maybe I get slapped uh, today. And I wasn't going to stay off it. I like the under here too i just i talk about with these teams i think it, it, it can get there and stay under i just had this more like 212 and a half you know right around there but hopefully this playoff ba- basketball we'll see uh if it can stay under but i had to take the points you want to get into are you guys on any props are you on any props yeah. or are you billy yeah, yeah okay. only, uh, a couple dgem player props here um, not the not the ones that I thought I was going to be playing pre-flop here. I'm on uh, Joel Embiid over eight and a half points in the first quarter. He plays uh, usually the whole entire first quarter, like the Yochik, Dachik role type of thing. And then I also have a little D-Gen shot here on uh, Nicholas Batum over a half a three-pointer at minus 140 there. And uh, this is the most degenerate play that I think I've ever bet in my life here. Joel Embiid to score a field goal assisted from Tyreek Maxey in the first quarter within the first three minutes of the game listed under NBA floor general props on FanDuel. And the odds were plus 410 for Joel Embiid to score a bucket assisted from Tyreek Maxey in the first three minutes of the game. So, I, you know, you bet some chalk, you got to get plus money somewhere, right? Yeah. That's some degenerate ass shit right there. <laughs> That's a straight uh... – yeah, Billy, DJ. Actually, Where's the cap on that? I think that's the most degenerate <laughs> thing I've probably have ever bet on. But we got another man join the panel. And uh, shockingly, when I was looking at the videos that we have under here, he's got an intro. You All know, right. uh, Jimmy, what do you say? Where we want to see your toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that, that was... That was your favorite stream, right? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like a lot of toe night. talk that night. How we how we doing, guys? When does this game start? I thought it was supposed to start 15 minutes ago. I was about to start right now, Dave. And let me tell you, we got some DGen props. If you would like the tail, tail with your own caution. Joel Embiid to score a field goal assisted from Tyrese Maxey within the first three minutes of the first quarter, plus four ten. Listed under NBA floor general props on FanDuel. Well, good luck. Um, I I, uh, 
I took a 30% boost and I turned a minus 135 prop into basically even money. That is uh, Embiid plus Hero or Embiid and Hero to have 10 or more combined assists. That seems like a gimme. I found that. I actually DM'd it to you guys or to, to Billy. Um, I'm on that and I'm on the heat. I took I took five last night, which is five and a half. But Shouts to the chat. One Time Sports says he's on the under 208. Bulls minus three for him in the NBA. Harold Williams is on the first quarter minus one and a half. Uh, my man, Justin McElby, is on maxi over points and assists. I do like that one. Uh, and shouts to everybody else in the chat. You know, it was an impromptu stream. We didn't uh, really – it wasn't really traditionally planned, but it was planned enough. Shouts to everybody that's joined us. We got 76 live so far here. Um, make sure you guys hit the like, subscribe button. Uh, first two points of the game, and I didn't even notice who fucking scored and was it the prop that I needed. <laughs> you had a first to score? No, uh, I had uh, – Of course you did. Device. You got the Joel and beat assist. Nice. Um, hold on. Yeah, I, there was I got one time I was going through. Yeah. I was going through props. Nick was on stream with me, and I took a bet that I did not mean to take. Oh, I, I remember this one. It, it was which team will score a three pointer first, and I was sweating Clippers. out because I put like two units on it. Clippers. They hit it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, I, 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 I was a boost, yeah, yeah. so I took the heat money line with the over 208 and a half as a small play uh, okay. at plus 413. I don't do NBA that much, though, so take that with a grain of salt. We got razor sharp picks under 208 and Mikey Money in the chat now on the panel. Mikey Money, what up? Oh, shit, he's there. There he is. Fucking appears. Boom. Just gave my, I gave myself the old C Mac entrance there. Don't even need yeah. to do that. Actually, C Mac always has the spinning little sperm on the that little white spinning thing on the stream. Oh, oh man, they're gonna, they're gonna do it to me. I think Maxie hurt his hand. Normally, I'm waiting for somebody to uh, have to bring me in, but I happen to have keys to this car, so let's drive, baby. Let's have ourselves a night tonight. Go. We're already up one zero in the Islanders game. Let's go. Who yeah, scored? I, my, Mike, uh, the, the one goal scorer prop I told you about, uh, I finally, about five minutes before game time, FanDuel released him. So I got plus 500 with uh, Ruslom Iskakov, Iskakov uh, to score a goal. Oh, yeah. the one. So I, I, I was searching for like half an hour before the game, trying to, on all my books, trying to find a goal scorer prop on him. FanDuel finally released one at five to one. Andrew, That's my yeah, for the I, uh, I wish I, had, I, I wish I had, I wish that game started at seven thirty because I would have taken a shot with that. How many? See it all the time. The first goal scorer ends, or the first game, the guy ends up getting. They want to get him a score. That shit yeah, said any time. Saw that the other scored. night with um, with the one Blackhawks player, um, that I can't remember his name right now. Uh, right out of college, I uh, came in and scored on his first shot. Andrew G, I'm excited. What was the price? I, I'm, uh, this is my first cocktail. What? I have not had on the on the, the black guy tonight. We're getting. Uh, I think it was like six to one or something like that. I don't I remember. I didn't bet it. Oh, I thought you bet it. No, but I remember earlier in the week that was a situation where somebody came in right out of college uh, and scored on his first shot with the Blackhawks. Okay. Speaking of who can eat a giant bowl of shit right out of college. Hunter Gauthier just got himself that contract linked up and signed up with the Anaheim Ducks. Go fuck yourself and throw up your nuts, Hunter Gauthier. Yeah, shouts to the boys that are on the under, man. Uh, I know it's the first TV timeout and uh, all that, but the under looks fucking good. That shit, I haven't seen it. I'm, so what I'm what number are we time. looking for in a live bet and over? Uh, 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 199 and a half. 198 is what I'm looking for. I'll keep an eye out to live betting over. I saw that crazy number. Um, I was Connor. What did I say? Cut. Yeah. God, fuck him, Andrew G. You loser. <laughs> How about that? It's Cutter, isn't it? It's Cutter Gauthier. Cutter Gauthier. Cut up. Wait till he comes to Philadelphia. Then he's going to learn what getting cut up means. Oh, don't say, don't say that. Physical like, threats. Um, those are 
Oh, those oh, fans geez. are gonna be ruthless to that guy, man. He's gonna he's gonna be crying before the fucking even gets on the ice. That's how brutal it's gonna be. We're talking about this pre-flop. Hey, yeah, early, early early first flop of the season, Trout looking like the MVP. Cash to Jack plus three hundred in the first inning. Sheesh. That was one of my I put out a post on Twitter of my bold predictions for the uh, MLB season, and Mike Trout winning the MVP was one of them. Shouts to Big Show Picks. He says basketball still exists, and Big Scott. 510 says, I'm going to become a YouTube member. Make sure you guys join a little $4.99 a month. You want to know what gets you with the special pass, special horse races. And if you're into the UFC and MMA, we got those special little interviews that uh, come out, usually fight weekend. Uh, we've been hot with the interviews of recent. Um, we might be getting a uh, special Tyler Diamond oh, yeah. soon. Uh, shouts to PFL. Dan Kelly says, Cleveland, Boston, no run first inning cashes. Yeah. By, by the by the way, somebody in one of my group chats uh, told me it was Frank ne uh, ne Nezer for the uh, Blackhawks who scored in his first shift or first shot out of college. Nice, Frank Nazar. Nice. Dude, well, how is that no offensive foul? What the fuck? Wow, what's going on? Oh, my bad, my bad. Big show nine ninety nine for the gold and the horse races, Billy. I you know, I thought it was five ninety nine a month. I don't really check the YouTube thing. I just put my credit card in there, and uh, hopefully, you have money. The regular over. one, yeah, keeps you in the green. Of course, you get the the first. You know, read all your quotes and shit. Gold horse races, all the fun. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Right. Shout, uh, shout 99. out Sam Comer. Thank you. Thank you for that in the group chat there. Sam Comer was the one that mentioned Nazar. Uh, C Mac, what racetrack is EVD three? Uh, Evangela. Yeah, if that Wally just pays on downs, exact a ticket. Oh yeah, Fat Wally. Evangeline Downs. Yeah. Live line two hundred one and a half. I don't think I'm going to cash this Joel Embiid prop. I got. I'll tell you what. I saw that crazy stat uh, around the overs. Uh, I'm gonna butcher. I'm not gonna look at it. But basically, it was a 73 percent hit rate to the over when you got a team. When the total 16 points or more lower than the league average, and you got a team that loves to go under in the Miami Heat, 73% of the over. So I think the live betting is certainly in play, but at what number, right? It's so I'm hard. Looking, I'm looking it's for a 199 and a half, which we might be getting. It's yeah. down to a 20 or 200. Down to two. Yeah, I see it too. 200. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm hoping for maybe a 198 and a half, 199 and a half. I'll take a shot with. It's so hard to gauge the Heat recent form because Tyler Hero came back that last week and a half of the season, and then the last, like, eight Heat games have all gone over. But then Terry Rozier is out for this one, so I don't know how that counterbalances itself. Um, but as of right now, these motherfuckers ain't hitting shit, both teams. The bricks are uh, nice. Gerald Jones looks good. and a half. How much? Does, yeah. How much? Does, yeah. How, how much does more does this have to drop for us to be interested here? One ninety eight. I'm seeing one ninety nine. One ninety eight would be like my threshold where all right, you got me signed <laughs> into the sports book. One ninety six and a half. It. I'm gonna move on that. What book are you using for uh, DraftKings? Ah, that makes sense. Got in on it over 196 and a half minus 115. Wow. Butler just wide open miss. That was pretty clear wide open. Oh, and I forgot to tweet that out. Beautiful. If this drops to like one nine one eighty nine and a half, I'll grab a little of that too. But I'm gonna try not to stack a bunch of over bets. I can't believe I forgot to tweet that out though. <laughs> I had that saved on as soon as I clicked oh, on sorry. Twitter, it had the thing right there. Uh we're gonna we're gonna have a uh, uh I should say, like, an impromptu guest come in, give out some plays, and then pop on out. He's got to go to a dinner. But um, 
hey, I like his basketball content, so fuck it, right? <laughs> yeah. Nicholas Handy said he's tailing Earl on the – I got to stop saying Earl, though. It's because of the name on the screen. <laughs> he's tailing Nick on the 196 and a half. Dan Kelly says it's not just the playoff teams that play. Teams are just tighter and nervous. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Uh, there's no nervousness than uh, being on the Golden State Warriors last night and watching the <laughs> two minutes of that game and just knowing you're on the wrong side. Um, I, I, I had to, I had to bet the fucking Kings on the other side to make back the smallest amount of money. Whew. This is bad. This is ugly. And then at halftime, the line with the plus one hundred. I was like, damn, I could have waited to hedge this shit. <laughs> Oh man, last night was a disaster. We owe it to uh shouts to Daily Fantasy though. Daily Fantasy put some money in my pocket and uh, helped me uh weather the storm. This is horrendous as Andrew G. First to 85 wins this era. <laughs> he can't make a shot. I feel like I'm watching a fucking high school basketball game with JV players. Oh shit. Baby had a bio shooting threes. Like, what the fuck is that? I'm not complaining. Let's go, Sixers, baby. Next TV timeout. Got time. Clay, zero points. But Dan Kelly, the, I feel like with the Warriors, they got to figure out if they want to go with the veterans of Clay, Draymond, or they need to go with the young guys of Kaminga and Pazeminski because they looked a lot fucking better than the vets. But it's just like, is Pazeminski going to be like, Hey, Clay, I'm not going to pass you the ball because you're 0 for 7, even though I watched you play on television my whole entire life growing up. Like, you know, it's one of those type of things. You just got to put his foot down and uh, make a decision. Uh, Pelicans game last night. Zion Williamson, that was not a scripted injury. He's actually really fucking hurt. He's not playing. He's out right. tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know how that – does it that like was hurt? How, how has that moved the line? Because I haven't really looked. How is is that? How many points has that moved the line? It's a pick, uh, not a pick them, but uh, the Pelicans are slight underdogs. It's literally the same exact line as the Lakers game. The Pelicans are slight home underdogs. All the money's coming in on the Kings. Eighty nine percent of the spread bets are on the Kings. Eighty two percent of the Line bets are on the game. I'm interested in the Pellies tomorrow. I don't yeah, so with him out, it what moved three points. I mean, they were what two and a half point favorites. I think got the a no, that was that was yeah. Legend. At, at this point, I mean, the Pellies have some interest to me. We got the man, the myth, the legend yeah. coming from the land down under. You they you are. don't swim in these oceans without seeing the fucking shock. Gentlemen, what's up? What's good? What up? How are you feeling today? Cheers. 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 I see that three-way beer. Four-way. Oh, my God. It was like That was like synchronized swimming in the Olympics. It was so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I got 10 minutes. I'm going out to dinner. But, guys, what do we have on the Philly side here? Anything going on? Mike, how are we feeling, Philly, tonight? Mike, you're muted. I don't know how. He's so Mike's excited. So he's muted. Mike's so hyped up. He muted himself. He couldn't contain himself. Exactly. So excited. <laughs> I, I, I'm saying, what's up, Shark? I see sharks in there. I'm, ride the wave or get out of the fucking water. Here we go, baby. I'm on the, uh, I'm on the Sixers, baby. 10, 9, 8, 7, Sixers, baby. Minus five and a half. Damn right, bro. Damn right. No, I was only not a homer player, right? I thought Philly is 100% decide here tonight. They got, they got to show up. But not only that, but I was just saying this, guys. This whole narrative that Milwaukee or that uh, Miami is going to run the table again out of the play-in, if, if we look back in 20 years, 20 or 30 years, I think what happened last year could be the biggest single season outlier from the play-in tournament to go to the finals. I don't think a, a team's going to go to the finals out of the play-in really almost ever again. And uh, I thought that was just an interesting point. Hey, if the Lakers would have fucking lost last night, and they would have been fucking smart and played the Oklahoma City Thunder, who have the average age of a 24-year-old and haven't been to the fucking playoffs since KD was in there. Hey, they could have beat the Oklahoma City Thunder, but as Garvin Ham would say with his hands in his pockets, 
we ain't ducking no smoke. All right, get four old motherfucking nuggets. And uh, let me know if you keep that job any longer. No, I mean, bro. And them, right. them OKC boys were saying they wish they were even younger. Crazy. Yeah. How much younger do you want to be? Josh Giddy saying that. And uh, you know how Josh Giddy is. Dave's got to play. Know, uh, yeah. I didn't want to interrupt. I took it. I took it about, I don't know, a minute ago. Dave, by the way, I haven't seen you in months. What's going on, bro? Yeah, I well, I've been um doing the same thing. I don't know. I um it's good to see you. It's good to see you. No doubt, no doubt. Don't let Dave that. bullshit yeah, you. Bro. Look at Dave's yeah. face, look at the body. He's getting healthier and healthier by the fucking day. I am proud of this young gentleman. Yeah, young guy. Absolutely. I am uh I'm much closer to age to, to Sharky than I am to you. And I know I, my mind feels young, but my body doesn't, I'll tell you that. We got to get that body young, no doubt. That's the first yeah. priority here. Before we win wagers, and then we win wagers for the next 50 to 70 years, no doubt. So let's do that. Let's go. 100%. Earl, I see you over there. ECU. I was, I was thinking uh, Tristan, uh, what's his name? Newton out of uh, UConn. You probably, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Crazy. And then who's the other guy? Chris Johnson back in the day, right? Yeah. CJ2K Gavin was Williams. Guy. Gavin yeah. Williams in the MLB. He's hurt right oh, now, yeah. but that's. But there, there is a player currently on the ECU baseball team. I will say, listen for his name about three or four years. When he gets drafted, he's going to be a late first, early second round pick. Trey Yasavich uh, the for the ECU player? Pirates pitcher. Uh, he is going to. Uh, is that, he's going is that, to his last name is You're a Savage? Yes, Savage. Y E Savage. Yes, oh, Savage. Okay. He is yeah. one of the best. He's one of, if not the best, college baseball pitcher right now. All right. Yeah, we'll definitely look out for that. Right. That's that, that last name is so noteworthy. We, we cannot forget. Yeah. Savage. Absolutely. That one will be top of sure. mind. I'll, I'll see him and be like, oh, I know Nick was talking about that guy. But I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll be talking about betting him every Friday night during his ECU days. <laughs> Earl, we'll be out. We'll, we'll go out to Vegas. You can remember it because this is right on top of my view. Mike and I'll be at the bar with Bill, and uh, Dave will still be in the bedroom doing yoga, and we love him for it. But we'll be sitting there. We'll have completely forgot about this situation. And Mike will be like, yo, is this the guy named You're a Savage? And I'll be like, absolutely. That's three and a half years ago. <laughs> I got oh, some yeah. nosy questions, though, Shark. Where, where are you specifically going to dinner tonight on a nice, calm Wednesday night? As they say in the streets in college, Wednesday's oh, hump day. Who are you humping on tonight? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, I don't know. I mean, newly single. It's the open business of promiscuity here. I have no idea. I actually just go out, take an Uber and go out, have a drink, see what happens. I, last week I met some Spanish girl, didn't really get that far down the line yet, but uh, you never know what's going to happen. I'm going to Carabas, actually, in uh, Central Florida here. It's a great little Italian spot, little chain, but above average. They got a good bar scene for the game. So a couple of local joints, boutique spots. It's going to be a little too restauranty. Definitely want the uh, the bar scene in the restaurant. So Carabas, those of you guys, uh, We'll give them a plug here. We'll get some sponsorship money soon, I'm sure. And uh, <laughs> that's what's happening tonight. That's just a suddenly a little, little, carabas, a little, little chicken cutlets with some wine. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly, not so casual Wednesday here. Let's go. No doubt. No doubt. And, uh, you know, as I said, re recently single in the last year. So integrating that life a little bit more. It's fun to go out there and just kind of see what's going to happen. It's a freedom that most people kind of wish they had and they, they have it. They don't want it. They have it. You got to own it. So it's going to be a good night. Cheers to you guys. You guys got the high lot here in Florida. We'll plug that one too. Great beer, 7.5%. Cheers up, fears down. Shout out to the chat. Chat's absolutely live. And uh, my guys say, do not take Krabbas as good. Well, it depends on where you are. And I'll say this. I'm from New York. I know New York, you know, Italian food. It's not. Where in New York? Like I was born in Manhattan and uh, lived there for a while. So straight right there. Decided lived in Gramercy for a while, 18th and Irving. Um, but I know, I know Italian food. I will say that hundred percent, hundred percent, like different conversation, but there's a lot of really poor Italian chain food in this country. Carabas is not poor Italian chain food, just to put that as a clarification. It's not Olive Garden. Right, right. Exactly. It's definitely a step up. And not only that, the bar scene is a little more alive, which I think is definitely a component tonight uh, for this game. And I think we're centered in, in this point, too, because this game is going to be a good one. The, the second one, you know, the second one could be a good ATS spread sweat, but the actual matchup lacks a ton of uh, energy. And, 
you know, I think the second game, just I got to run here in five minutes, just want to touch on it in a half second here. I think the second game is going to be super tight on this line at three and a half, four. I think the books just have this one kind of nailed. Would lean towards Chicago, you know, ironically, I would say, because Trey Young, I believe, is playing tonight. And he seems to be kind of the cancer of the group right now. And they function better without when DeJounte is the, you know, the lead energy. So I think the Chicago side probably does get there later. Um, and, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. But, uh, There's a DJ prop I'm on in that game. Uh, uh, I can't say the dude's name, but Vetchik, uh, the kid that we came over from the Oklahoma City Thunder, played started some games for the Hawks in the last month in the season. He was on a two-way contract, and they couldn't redo his two-way contract for the playoffs, so he's not on the playoff roster. Leaving the Hawks very short in depth at the forward position, Garrison Matthews uh, shouts to Mikey Money. Mikey Money said, you always make money on the bench player props, and we did some searching. Garrison Matthews over four and a half points at minus 125. He's like their only – forward that they have summon off the bench and his three-point prop tonight we were laddering it up over one and a half at plus 135 over two and a half at plus 400 hey he's gonna go out there and shoot some fucking threes off the bench uh i'm gonna take my money on it four and a half is basically the three-point prop i like that yeah i like, I like it too that. i mean i'm not i'm not versed on it but i mean bro i mean Convince that you convince me. I'm mean, I'm right there with you. I'll be watching it for sure. What was what what was the, the bet specifically? Uh Garrison Matthews over four and a half points minus 125, over one and a half threes at 150, over two and a half threes at plus four hundred. When you see little Whitey subbing off for the bench and you see him shoot the little fadeaway threes, you're gonna be like, damn, that 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 young man Billy told me about that uh young man. And uh cheers to everybody in the chat. Um last night. I said I was going to take a shot for every TV timeout. I didn't do it in the Pelicans game. Once I started doing it again, they started coming back. I did it in the Warriors game. They started coming back. So I'm going to have to stick to tried and true. Every TV timeout, shot time. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. If I die by halftime, let it be so. As long as the Sixers fucking win, I get the money in my bank account. <laughs> I'm looking at this uh, Garrison Matthews. Went to Lipscomb. You guys know Lipscomb. Yeah, Let's little, go, little, baby. Little, oh, yeah. A little small, small market. Cal like, for us this year. Cash That's, Cal for us this year. Let's I can almost guarantee you, like, put money in our pocket. Them bro, those. I was gonna say, like, this Lipscomb team for a while has been, like, just really solid ATS, particularly out of conference early season. This guy's 27, so he was there probably, like, six or seven years ago. I'm sure they were covering spreads back then even. Yeah, I, I, I would even uh, – were they even D one back then? I don't even know. I think they were. This year, been around for a really while. good man. Uh, you also got to remember, uh, money started betting against them. Yeah, I was gonna say you also got to remember in college basketball, everybody's D one. I mean, yeah. versus college football. I mean, like it's funny you start you you know you cap college football in the fall, real small market ultimately, particularly in the FBS. All of a sudden, you come to college basketball D one. Every single FCS team is D one. It's like okay, I remember now. Like, totally different marketplace here. And uh, so I think Lipscomb's been there for a long time, for sure. Because, I mean, I was at, I was up at Dartmouth uh, going back about 20 years. And Dartmouth really? – Yeah, yeah. 99. Dartmouth, I just looked it up. It's been it's been 25 years. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. I was going to say with Dartmouth, it, it's a very, very poor, below-average college basketball team. But they're D1. Like, there are bad I mean, teams yeah. D1. Now, I learned that shit in college. Uh, when you go to the courts and shit like that and you're fucking around playing basketball like five on five with like D2 basketball players and you're seeing them do fucking windmill dunks, you start really understanding like there's levels to this shit. And this dude at D2 is doing fucking windmill dunks. I can't imagine what they're doing at D1. So that was like my uh, welcome to reality it was uh, my freshman year. We used to do the. I don't know why the NBA, I mean, not the NBA, the college players would do this, but they would have like tournaments with like a bunch of different teams. One player on each team would have a team. And I saw a windmill dunk and I said, oh, shit, man, I'm not walking on any fucking basketball team soon. So I was a uh, scout. I was a uh, what scout team for the uh, girls, Holy Family basketball team. That's one of my favorite Billy Here we go with this fucking thing again. Yeah, I will say, even the D2 girls 
are Did really you fucking good. Dunks? <laughs> <laughs> They're really fucking good, man. Bill, Bill's getting dunked on by women in college. <laughs> oh, you know, the basketball's people. lighter. I'm just shooting the shit from the three point line. Like I'm shooting that shit NBA range. They're thinking I'm a I'm a goddess from the three point line. But uh, I, I learned real quick. Uh, one of the homies thought he was real cool doing some little dribble move, went to the lane, got that shit pinned by the center. She was like 6'5 from South Jersey. That bitch was nice, man. <laughs> uh, it's actually funny. One of the girls on the team actually left that season. She was a freshman on the team, and she went to LaSalle D1 University, uh, Was played four years after that at LaSalle University. So I will say, man, D2, <laughs> once you see some D2 basketball, boys and girls, you'll learn. There's definitely levels to this. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. If you, if it's you almost like the, the story of when Brian Scalabrini uh, challenged random like high schoolers to one-on-ones and they couldn't score a point on him. And he was an, a, uh, a, a bench player that averaged like two points in the NBA. But still, he was an NBA player. You, you oh, put yeah. some respect on Scalabrini's name. Oh yeah, Scalabrini. Oh, yeah. He's, He's a USC Trojan. You you put some respect on that fucking guy. Oh, name. okay then. Never mind. Yeah, I mean, early no early. respect at all. USC Trojan, no respect at all. It's such a different yeah. level. NBA. I mean, NBA players could cook anybody on the planet other than NBA players, pretty much. I yeah. mean, the, even the bench guys are just absurd. It's just insane. That's why they get paid so well, actually, because they're at such a higher level, even if they don't touch the floor, and it's. You know, it's kind of that crazy. I was watching the game last night. I was thinking to myself, you know, half this roster is not going to touch the floor of the entire playoffs. And they're still cashing these big checks because they are better than 99.99% of all that. Well, you got to keep in mind, there's, what, 364, 361 Division One basketball teams. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And like, there's how many rosters in the NBA and how many players in the NBA. Right. Like, And that's not even including players coming from international scenes. Yeah, no, that yeah. ass though. That Euro Cup. If you ever watched the Euro Cup and you see former NBA players like Kimball Walker out there just lighting it up the scoreboard and stuff like that, you'll be like, damn, man, the NBA is a little bit harder. But I will say the Miami Heat are running a 3 2 matchup zone, and it's giving the Sixers Fritz 20 to 20 is the score right now, and it's tied up. You know, Bill, that's that's such a good point. And I was kicking myself last night for not betting the unders immediately. It hit last night. Hit tonight, it's automatic. It really is just the officiating. The physicality is so much different. You saw it last night, like particularly in the Warriors game. The Warriors are driving the lane; they can't even make a layup. And I was watching with some people more casual, and they're like, "What's wrong with the Warriors?" And I'm like, "Because they're not used to getting hit every time they go to the hoop." And they now I'll tell you what the problem ball. is with the Warriors. Steve Kerr's got to decide: Do you want to go with the veteran guys? Or do you want to go with the young guys? The young yeah. guys, it's like, do you play the undrafted kid that came out of fucking Santa Clara over Clay Thompson who won you three rings? Like, it's a psychological thing. Like, they just got to get rid of the old guys. Move on from Draymond. Move on from Clay. Pazeminski and fucking Kaminga, you saw last night when the second quarter started and they were in the game with Curry, the game was close. When the third quarter started and the veteran guys were in, that's when they started getting blown out again. I Call me crazy. Call me what you want. Uh, I think the NBA is kind of changing a little bit, the changing of the guard. And it's really the young guys really understanding how this new era of basketball is being played. Like, when the fuck do you see a kid from Santa Clara, damn near undrafted, play over a four-time fucking, like, you know, a four-time fucking champion? Like, it's it's crazy, the world that we live in. You know, uh, you know, speaking of Santa Clara, look at uh, Jalen Williams on OKC. They're running a pretty good program out there all of a sudden. Huh? I mean, what's going on with this this school? I mean, Is it for real, though, Shark? Do you think the Oklahoma City Thunder are going to benefit from playing one of the Kings or the Pelicans in the trail? Yeah, I do. I do, yeah. absolutely. I think that it's much better than the Lakers because Lakers have owned them for a long time. Anthony Davis plays really a, a list ball when he plays OKC. They just can't match up with him down low. And, you know, I was saying this on a couple other shows. You know, this is going to be such an interesting playoffs, particularly for the West, because the teams that have the top seeds outside of Denver are so unproven at this point, at mm. least at, uh, one and three seeds, particularly Minnesota and Oklahoma City. And it's like, you know, Denver is going to be Denver, but. The one and the three could wash out in the first round, in my opinion. 
I really, I already, I actually played Phoenix to beat Minnesota in the first round at minus one. I was going to say, I'm, I'm super close to betting that uh, Phoenix to beat Minnesota in the first round because uh, you mentioned that, yeah, they're very unproven. Also, when you just look at the odds themselves, you have a six seed who is what six games worse than the Minnesota Timberwolves as minus one fifteen favorites to win the series yeah. without home court advantage. That's mm-hmm. a play for me. I'm going to be betting the Phoenix Suns to win that series. I just gotta, I just gotta figure out how much. One yeah, of the a little bit is the Clippers beaten. I, I'm a big Mavericks guy, but I actually think the Clippers might take that series away from the Mavericks. I think the Clippers are live. Man, I, I think that the Clippers could go on a run, man. Some shit works out right for him. A couple bounces go their way. I and mean, we know Kawhi Leonard's the king of fucking bounces going his way. And I I hate to say it, man, because I love the Mavericks. I love everything that they did. I think they're going to lose that first round against the Clips. Yeah, I see I mean, so much sure. love for the Mavericks in the first round, too. I see a lot of people really like Dallas. You're, you're looking at a coin flip. I mean, it was a split market the entire lead up here, 110 either side. Like, I feel like if you if you guys remember the last time these teams played in the playoffs, it was a couple of years ago. It was the series where the road team won the first six games. And it was really historically bizarre that the home team was just so poor. And then the Clippers did win in seven. And I was talking about this before. This is not going to happen again. The, the road team's not going to win the first six games. But I do – I actually kind of lean to the Mavs. It's not really a biased thing for me. I, I don't have any sort of emotional lean to either of these groups. If you just kind of look at the way these teams closed close the season, Dallas closed great. And it's symptomatic to a couple of trades. They got Gafford, I believe, off the Wizards. Um, a couple other moving parts. Kyrie's playing a little better ball with Luka. And, you know, you think about it historically – when you when you pair a guy like Kyrie, who in my opinion is the best ball handler in the handler in the history of the league, with a guard for, uh, slash forward Luca, that's going to be a clash, and it was a clash. But the point is, it can work. It just takes you want to know why that works. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. It's the best pairing that can ever happen, and it has to do with how low. Kyrie is all about Kyrie. He's always trying to find some non basketball thing to talk about. It's the first time he's playing with another star. <laughs> that won't fire back at him. Luca goes out and proves it. He's not, he's a quiet guy. The other guys are big mouth. LeBron's a, a big mouth. All the guys on the nets were big mouths. This is a good match. And that's why Denver or Dallas is scary. So I'm with you. Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're right. No, hundred percent. And I, and again, I think the line speaks to a seven game series, potentially maybe six or seven. It's going to be tough. No doubt. So we're not, we're not speaking to some sort of blowout max point here. Uh, but I do think the revenge is real. And it seems a little anecdotal going back three seasons. Luca remembers that. He remembers losing game seven on the road in L.A. And I think, you know, it's crazy when you cap these games within the series and you cap the series price in a totally different market. There's going to be a ton of zigzag. But when it comes down to it, I think in the last five minutes of game seven, I do trust the Mavs more than I trust the Clippers. The Clippers have too many hands on deck. Who gets the ball? Who's the leader? I mean, all season they were talking about Russell Westbrook being actually the leader of these guys. And it's kind of crazy, but if you remember 10 years ago, out of James Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook was maybe the best actually on-court player at that point, but 100% the best leader. And that doesn't change. You don't lose your mind as you age. You lose your body. So it's crazy that they have a bench player leading the group. But the point is, if he's not on the floor in the last five minutes of Game 7, that's where the team doesn't function well because you need your leader on the floor in the big moments. That's a good that's a good way to look at it. I feel like the uh biggest thing that concerns me about the Mavericks is um their guard play is really good, but uh some of that wing depth is uh somewhat a little bit shallow. Um as you can tell, Jason Kidd has inverted the small forward shooting guard position literally the whole entire year. Josh Green started some games, Tim Hardaway started some games. Now they're starting Derek Jones Jr. He's trying to find that uh, nice little right go-to, but the front court situation. Uh, R.I.P. I got. I, I feel like I should pour one up for this one. R.I.P. to Derek Lively's mom. She uh, passed away from cancer on uh, Sunday. Uh, Derek Lively yeah. is one of the only rookies to live with his parents, and uh, they asked him why you live with your parents. He said. Uh, Free laundry and uh, free food. You would live there too. <laughs> I would imagine a house. Dude, 
huge. But uh, R.I.P. Derek Lively's mom. I want to know how that will uh, – does that inspire the team for game one? Like, we got to get back on our guy here because he played a lot of minutes to start off the year. Uh, he, it was really that Real Madrid game where he really went off and then uh, – Jason Kidd was like, all right, maybe this kid should be in the starting lineup over Maxi Cleaver. And he had a good little run. And then Daniel Gaffer came in there. PJ Washington game came in there. The Mavericks have definitely uh beefed up their front court, but will it be enough in this series? I don't know, man. I don't think those transactional moves will help them guarding a guy like Kawhi Leonard or Paul George. Um, they're gonna have to figure that out. Yeah, I mean, Bill, by the way, great segue to uh, Real Madrid with a huge road win today in the Champions League at Man City. I mean, talk about timing on a broadcast. I was watching the game this afternoon. Man City de- dominated the game, completely dominated ball possession, whole thing, and just lost in a shootout. But, no, I think you're right. And I, I think Dallas game one has a lot of merit. And I think that the road teams in game one are going to be kind of a scatter plot. I don't like Phoenix in game one just as much as I like them in the series. For one really specific point there, Phoenix won the last game of the regular season in Minnesota. Now Minnesota has to stew on that loss for over a week and come back in a revenge game to open the series. And if you guys remember a couple of years ago, Minnesota played Memphis at home. And that was a great series with a young John Moran. Of course, he's still incredibly young, but a younger John Moran. Uh, maybe unscarred John Morant with that group the guys. With, with with Dylan Brooks and the guys pre you know pre shenanigans. But Minnesota had D'Lo and they had Towns and they were great at home in the playoffs. So I think that Minnesota game one is going to make the official card for me. I got to run, guys. This was excellent. I want to come on more often. Mike, you're the man. C Mac, Bill, Dave, Earl, you guys, legends. Chat's amazing. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much. Don't get it, Sharky, man. Good to see you, my guy. Appreciate you rocking with us. No doubt. I'll talk to you guys. There he goes. So this is the second fucking day in a row that my batter has got a guy in there, but it's a Bach pitch that gets another fucking run. I'm unbelievable with this Bach pitch (laughs) bullshit. Cash is out there. I just got it. I think they do that shit here. I'm looking at I'm looking at Cassius here in this Boston game, and uh, here he goes. He had a runner on second and third. There's a Bach pitch. Guy fucking scores. I forgot who it was yesterday. Bach pitch. Fucking oh, it's was, it was the Mets game. It was Alonzo. The, Met, the, the, the Mets. Met the Mets scored on Bach pitch. yesterday. Yeah. yeah. By, by the way, t- touching on touching real quick on what Shark was mentioning before he left, where he liked Minnesota maybe game one, but the Suns the series. You, on DraftKings, you can get Minnesota to win game one, Suns to win the series at plus 320. Uh, if if you think that's a, a decent script for uh, the series is for Minnesota to win game one, but Phoenix to win the series, that, that would be plus 320 on DraftKings. You know, shout that's out. It. I know a couple, a couple guys in the comments had some things to say here. Marcus McCarthy says Mavs are winning the whole thing. He's got Mavs in Boston, Mavs in six. That says – says, remember, I said that, and then I did want to comment, too, because Dan Kelly came in and said he bet Golden State not to make the playoffs preseason at plus 320. And what's funny is Probably. I bet Golden State just the other day to make the playoffs at plus 320. I thought that was funny, just the timing and the way the numbers worked out. So shout out to you, Dan Kelly. I hope I win. Well, they, they didn't make the playoffs. They lost last night. That's it. That's it for them. They yeah, oh, the Warriors are done. It's, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's, the, uh, it's the Pelicans and the Kings know. tomorrow. It, yeah, funny, that funny <laughs> situation. So Dan Kelly's gonna fucking win, and I'm gonna lose. There you go, go figure. I will say though, Dan Kelly, uh, one of the sharpest cappers I've seen on the future markets. I believe he gave out Wemby to lead the league in blocks, and it was like plus three hundred something. It was ridiculous. Is there a hockey I'm game so tomorrow? I'm so in tune with this play in tomorrow. Yeah, there's six hockey games tomorrow. Only one will matter for anything now. Oh, then fuck them. Well, is there? So there's no. There, is there, there? There's NBA basketball tomorrow. Yeah. 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 No, we'll be streaming, Pel- but Pel- definitely Pelicans. won't give us. Hockey's meaningless the next two days. We'll talk. We can talk about it, but it's meaningless. tonight and tomorrow is the last two games of the regular season. Why did hockey wait so long to start the playoffs? Usually, them the NBA. Yeah, but they like, haven't started yet. No, all, they're, all usually, the they're usually a week later. That's the way it usually is. Yeah. It's usually a week later. 
Yeah, well, it's usually the NBA is a week later, is is the way no. it's gone. My entire life, the NBA has started after the NHL. Did I have that mixed up? The NBA did start earlier this year. They started like damn near before fucking Halloween because I remember my the, N- the NHL Halloween. is definitely a little bit later now. But like I said, my entire life, the NHL has started before the NBA. I think I remember that too. I can't. I can't remember exactly, but I think I always remember the NHL starting before the NBA. I think. Um, Andrew G, how can you say the NH hockey always drags their season out way too long? First of all, there's so many ways to dissect that, Andrew G. First and foremost, it's the hardest fucking trophy to win. You got to go best of seven, grueling physical nature every single game. Second, the NBA fucking starts in August and runs through August. I mean, tell me there's a longer season than the NBA, except for maybe baseball. And somehow those fuckers are still playing in November. I don't know. Oh, we are. No, well, that was on Mike's. Mike said that on his channel. But yeah, we can. Yeah, Mike, we'll do. Um, let's do the. Um, I'll set it. I'll set it up. Let's do the NHL bracket tomorrow because we'll know the bracket by tomorrow. Yeah. If you want it? If you're if you're available. Yeah, I should. You should, little should be good to go. Fucks, what the fuck you. day is it here? Is it Wednesday? Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, C Mac. I lose lose track in the middle of the week. You know. Now nah, this week is flying by fast, though, bro. <laughs> My, Mike did bring that my, up, Mel, but he was. He I only was know my days of the week by my guest on last call, and I know CMAX up tomorrow. <laughs> that means Connor Mickey, Mickey Mac with the Angels hat. Wait, is this like a uh, buy on Angels play? I see Reed Detmers is on the mound today, and uh, if I had to say best Angels pitcher, it's probably Reed Detmers. Yeah, buy on him. Andrew the D, the best time. Uh, the best time for hockey playoffs is in that late spring, early summer after you're cooped up all winter long. You get to go to the game. You get to go in shorts and a T-shirt. They got the outdoor bars rocking there. It's a lot of fun seeing playoff hockey uh, live in person. Lots of things to do. Seasons change. It's a lot of fun. The NBA, they're still Yeah, I'm going to go to a Knights game, game, I think. Are you going oh, yeah. to fork out the money to go to a Knights game? No, it's well, yeah, not too much. I got I got a few people that have season tickets. Oh, okay. So, Stop. And they're not going to be there, it looks like. So he already hit me up. No, not normally. I don't want to fork over it. <laughs> no, fuck no. Two hundred dollars to fucking see it. That'd be fun though. It'd be fun to see one game. Put yourself in there. Check the box. Say you saw it. So, they're they're likely opponents. Edmonton in the first round. Yeah. We'll say, though, Miami's getting hot right now. Kevin Love just hits a big three, 33-26. Philadelphia cannot find a bucket. Kelly Oubre. If you like the, if you like the Sixers, point. minus 130 on the money line right now. 10, 9, 8, 7, Sixers, baby. Well, Joel Embiid's about to sub out, so I wouldn't be betting the Sixers. Paul Reed's about to sub in for Joel Embiid. Cassis sucks. God. Fucking scumbag, dude. He got balked. Somebody fucking balked. I know he struck out anyways. You know what Duran's who I wanted? Do you know what his one and a half was? Mike? No. His over one and a half bases. Uh minus one like fifty five. They had two and a half with it. Plus, well, like, plus like one thirty five. There's no way I was gonna say he just doubled right before that. So yeah, I couldn't take it. But Cassis, I'm on it. I'm on the I'm on the Homer and Ruby. They finally announced the uh round one game one for the Eastern Conference times. For the playoffs for for uh, NHL, uh, Hurricanes Islanders is on Saturday the twentieth at five, and then Bruins Leafs at eight, and then on Sunday at twelve thirty Lightning and Panthers, and at three o'clock Rangers and Capitals. So uh, Saturday Sunday schedules for the NHL playoffs are out already. You teeth cool. First leans on that uh, Saturday card. Um, I kind of like the unders a little bit in Islanders um, Hurricanes. Maybe a first period under one and a half, full game under five and a half type of situation there. Uh, maybe a draw. Um, I think the Bruins um, win in six or seven against the Leafs. Uh, so I would, I would look towards the Bruins, especially at home there. I like the Panthers. I think the Panthers go really far this year. I hate that they're playing the Lightning in the first round. I really do. 
but I think they do. I think they do beat the Lightning in the first round. And um, I mean, I want to take a look at what that number is for the Rangers. I think the Caps could be sneaky in the first round. Uh, I think that they could force it to six games against the Rangers um, in that series. Yeah, I'm betting every. I'm laying every money, uh, every fucking money line against them. Like it's minus two hundred. It's a waste of a playoff spot. It's a waste of a city to have a sports team. Every single. Let me tell you this. If the Capitals You're just mad to shave your head. No, 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 no. How many times have I said this for years? You've known me for two years. If the Wizards, the Capitals, the Nationals, and what's the other fucking stupid team in, in Washington? If all of them fell off the face of the planet, no one would even recognize that it happened. The most meaningless team in sports. Meaningless. When was the last time the Wizards or the Bullets were relevant in the NBA? You remember the Bullets? Does anyone remember the fucking Bullets? When they won his idol or 78. Agent Zero, man. That was the last time they've been relevant. Yeah, I'm sure there's a time you can find when they were relevant, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, the wizard. Agent Zero was getting, was getting those. If the Capitals didn't they have Ovechkin, they would be they would be <laughs> AHL teams could beat them. I mean Ovechkin gets the uh trophy for the hardest partier with the Stanley Cup. That guy, did you see all those pictures? The name change the, the worst. By the way, Dude, Wednesday, yeah. next Wednesday is when the yes. event happens. I'll be hairless. Next Wednesday. Come on, Dave. You I know you remember this. Do the John Wall. Oh, the do John the John Wall. Do you have the zigzags from Reebok that came yeah. out that everybody bought? I like John Wall. I still like him. I like them and I like him now. Yeah, he actually has a podcast on uh, the DraftKings YouTube channel. Uh, it's a pretty good podcast. He had Calipari on uh, right before he right before the NCAA tournament. This fucking fly. Right before he dipped Kentucky for fucking Arkansas. <laughs> It's crazy. Are you watching that back, bro? He was saying, you know, there's a couple guys on the team that I would, I would probably convince them to stay in the extra year. They could use it. But, uh, you know, that's not the way the sport is nowadays. And boom, two weeks later, he's a gone and out. God bless him, though, man. Uh, Arkansas probably is a better place than Kentucky. Kentucky fucking fandom is ridiculous, man. They don't have any professional sport team to cheer down there. So, it's way too much Blue Nation, dude. They they watch those fucking college games like it's the NBA Finals. Wow, we're gotta be looking at the SEC thinking he can go in there, implement his style of game, and just go dominate the SEC because there's a lot of Bama's a you know good team, but there's just a lot of suspect teams in the SEC. He should be able to go in there and kick some ass. Think about it like this, pimp. If you're bringing in eight to nine guys every year that are all transfers and freshmen. But what the fuck does it matter what school you go to? They're they're gonna come. If you play for Calipari, you're going to the NBA. And uh, at the end of the day, say what you want about Calipari, but if you're putting players in the league, that's all that really matters. Let me catch the refill, boys. I'll be right back. The first year, the first year or two that he's there, he's gonna get the recruiting is gonna be the best. Listen to this. This is the logic. I think what happens. Uh, he's gonna get guys. That, that are top tier but don't want to go to Kentucky to compete. They know they're going to go to Arkansas and play right away. So he, Have so you he's Toronto? okay. What I'm okay, compared compared to Kentucky, they're gonna the Kentucky will still get better recruits overall than Arkansas. Just a big the blue blood school at 100. They will. Have you Same seen Santo surreal? There are five OT. or six schools. It doesn't matter who's the coach. They're going to get the players now. Arkansas didn't get the players. Now they're going to get them. So the first couple of years, I'm telling you, the first couple of years. Well, Mark Arkansas, Pope, the former BYU coach, is now there at Kentucky. Is he going to implement his bullshit where you got to go do the fucking Christian retreat bullshit before you go to Kentucky? Well, people Who won't knows? go there. He needs to. He needs to. Ref, he needs to change. Christian adapt retreat. Fucking, BYU yeah. Mormon retreat. The you know BYU Utah those schools. They yeah, but they're not Mormon, Mormon though. Mormon. They have to be Mormon. Mormon bullshit. Hey, it's a religion thing. Who I knows? saw him wearing that suit, and then he ripped it off with the Kentucky. It was so, like, cheesy. <laughs> but I will say, though, that kid, Sompto Surreal, uh, I don't know if you guys watched the OTE Elite. Uh, OTE Elite is the league that they pay the high school players uh, salary to mm -hmm. play in their league. It's in Atlanta, Georgia. Sompto Surreal is fucking legit. 6'11", huge black dude, 260. Jumps out the fucking gym. Uh, he has the he has the highest vertical ever in OTE history. And those are some of the picks like Azor Thompson, 
uh, Jalen Green, who's on the uh, Rockets and shit like that. They all came out of OTE Elite. I'm telling you, man, uh, don't sleep on Arkansas next year. Put those fucking futures in. Uh, they got a the, the couple kids that they do have are fucking legit, man. They got two seven footers in their starting line. They're gonna be good. He's a good recruiter. That's a really good spot for him to land. That's great for Arkansas too. Uh, it's it's one of those spots. Like, hey, go to Arkansas. You live in. He's a not big starting. Life. He's not starting from nothing. But but he has room to put whoever he wants in play. It's like the perfect. It's the perfect place for him. I think. I think it, it's great. Um, I I didn't want muscle whatever the fuck muscleman, uh, <laughs> whatever the fuck his name is. Now he's at USC. I don't give a the fucking idiot. Um, muscleman is a good coach, man. I fuck with him. When he I don't at, like uh, him. What, but what major was he at FGCU <laughs> with uh, their Dunk City? Sounds the Angels crazy. scored a run, so Nick, you might get it. Shout out, shout out, Dan Kelly. <laughs> so, son, you're not in the NBA next year. You're going on a mission to Perma. <laughs> The process. I, that's some of the wildest that. shit I've ever seen in my life. Uh, he'd be fucking up the draft stocks of these players. Shouts to Ben Carlson. Uh, he had to go on a Christian retreat for fucking two years. Comes back. And it's called a mission. It's called a Mormon mission, bro. I like, that, I like that we're laughing. The retreat something you do over the weekend at a spa. Okay. Yeah, but this shit's bullshit, though, Dave. They're fucking college basketball. <laughs> it's players. true. Oh, it's retreat a nice Mormon retreat. Mission's like two years where you got to yeah. work. And, and they, send, they send you to, like, you don't get a choice. Like, <laughs> you, you, you can go to, like, Miami or you can go to, like, the Congo. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. well, no, I'm going to pass on the NBA. I have to go inoculate babies in Burma. One way to get to Beirut. I have to go dig fucking fucking shit ditches and ask. Go dig a well and fucking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shout out to everybody that believes in that. Go get them. Yeah, if you like the Sixers, you can get them. Yeah, if you like nice digging wells, Burma's hmm. the place. You to know do what? It. We shouldn't actually. We shouldn't poo poo that because it, it is out of a good place. But it is crazy to see twenty seven year olds playing college sports. It is. It's pretty. You know, bro. Connor Cormack, I mean, not Connor Cormack, McRyan, uh, the starting shooting guard, fifth year senior from Notre Dame. We are the same exact age. The kid's still playing college basketball, bro. 23? No, 25, about to turn 26. That is absurd, bro. Talk to me if you could find a college basketball player that's my age. Actually, there wasn't there like a fucking guy on South Carolina. Wasn't there a receiver on South Carolina like 15 years ago that was like 40 or like 35 or some fucking shit? What's his name? Brandon Whedon was like 29. Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, yeah. Oklahoma State the quarterback. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. How do imagine, they imagine that? that in fucking I, that that sounds like that would be the fucking career trajectory I would prefer. 29-year-old quarterback starting out there, college football. Can't even imagine the life experience. You got 10 years on everybody around you. Uh, we got the Sixers fans chirping in the chat. He said, I'm sick and watching Jimmy violate Tobias every play. The game's still early, though. Shouts to Jimmy Butler, though. He's looking really good. Uh, 10 points, 3 assists, 4 steals. And then he hurt his knees, what I'm hearing. Jimmy Butler. I, 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 Jimmy looks fucking good tonight, man. No, oh, I, I, I saw my group chats that you heard. I'm not watching the actual game. I'm just watching the live odds. Uh, but this is how, uh, this okay. is this is how like I watch most of the NBA playoffs, Nick. There's a hockey game. Live odds. <laughs> so the hockey game on. Yeah. No, I have the live odds. I have my monitor. I have a split screen with the live odds in the Islander game. Oh, it's looking a little bit fishy here for Philadelphia. That's it. They got to – might have to put in um, – I, I hate to say it, Nick Nurse, throw him Ricky fucking counsel. At least he can put the ball in the back of the basket. He might not be able to play defense, but it's not like the rest of these guys are. Andrew G says, 29, half your life's gone by then. Jeez, I was thinking the opposite. At 29, you got them 19-year-old college freshmen. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's sophomores <laughs> by that. I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like a good time. Nasty Nate says Red Sox smash. Ah, I do like the Red wow, Sox today. I'm shocked. I'm on the Red Sox. I'm on 
cash is to get a fucking RBI too, scumbag. NCAA, NCAA limit doesn't start until you're in rolling college, so they have four plus years plus a red shirt as a limit. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of because uh, I was the first year that had the extra year for COVID if you're like an athlete, and yep. I was my first day in school. Yeah, they got some dudes that are like seven, eight years deep with the COVID exemptions. Yeah, that, that COVID exemption good. thing a little bit absurd because if you had the COVID exemption and the medical suspension, that's two years right there. I don't want to be out of line, but if I was and a- there's and there's some sort of stipulation too. I don't know if you can add on to it. It's kind of like you can't use five different coupons, but um, the one where you can where you can you can be a red shirt, you can be a red shirt. Like there are six year players in football without all the exceptions. If you transfer, then there's another year too. You transfer another school. So, well, with the really- transfer portal of recent, they've changed that where you really? can transfer and go right in and play. Cause that used to be a thing where you had to sit out for a season or yeah. half of the year. But now you could say, Dave, you have mental health problems, Me- and- meningitis. No, it's a uh, mental health problems uh, uh it's so, all being a pussy but some of the people didn't get away with it uh if you remember west virginia yeah uh, I, I only know this because i was in the state but west virginia they had four transfers all four of them did not get a uh exemption from the ncaa they try to say that the bob huggins situation was traumatizing and uh, it, it, they said they called out bullshit. And, and uh, they're yeah. with fucking seven guys for the first month of the season, dude. It was ridiculous. So, something similar happened with <laughs> now, obviously, it wasn't like a situation. He was he transferred twice, I think it was. It was, and you can't, I think you can't transfer twice in one year or something like that. Yeah, no, uh, now, now it's a situation with Cam Hayes, uh, which who is a uh, basketball player for East Carolina. <laughs> Because he transferred from LSU to NC State to ECU, uh, and they wouldn't let him play for the first beginning of the year, and they had to put in like an appeal for him to be able to play because you can't transfer twice. What was his name? Hey, him to play? Cam Hayes. Oh, I've never heard of him. Where did he go to school? Did they allow him to play? Yeah, LSU. Then he transferred to NC State. Then he transferred to ECU. They call that getting demoted. Yeah. I agree with Dave. And, and that's the thing. And that's the thing. I know a lot of people. I'm just giving uh, it a hard time. Like, I know. No, but I, I know a lot of people uh, that are like fans of like group of five schools or mid major schools will see like a transfer. Like, oh, cool. We just got a transfer from LSU, or we just see. I as an East Carolina fan, as a mid major fan, I would rather see a transfer from Gardner oh, Webb. I would rather see a transfer from like a lower school. A lower mid major than a, a a player going from a power five school down to a um a mid major school. I would want to see yeah, someone get promoted though, rather than demoted come to my school. Sometimes though, Earl, depending on uh or Nick, sometimes depending on where you go, the academic shit actually fucking matters. Like if I see a lot of players that end up used to go to Notre Dame or some shit like that, and then they end up transferring out because they actually give a fuck about the academics and you're not going to get the tutor to do all the work for you. And they're like, fuck this, I'm out. Uh, uh, Tyon Grant Foster is a prime example. We always talk about him. Uh, Kansas kid um, ended up having a heart surgery and that took two years out of his career. And then he ended up going to GCU and making a bag. And GCU, Grand Canyon was fucking popping this year. They were good this year. You know what's Only- stupid? Never mind. Sorry. Go ahead. We got a Patoom over a half a three pointer minus one. Yeah, you just hit it. I was gonna say, didn't you have that? <laughs> you fucking Jesus! I you know what? Stu- Kyle Lowry's point oh, prop dang. was five and a half. I didn't take it. He already has seven points. What the? Fuck? I played him a daily. He just had a horrible air ball though. Two minutes left. They're up. Yeah, I, I. I mean, he had a game the other day where he was in for twenty eight minutes. He scored like two points or nothing or some some fucking shit. So I mean, you can't trust him. Shouts to DeLon Wright. DeLon Wright with the three. Uh, Shouts to DeLon Wright, though. After getting cut by every fucking team possible in the NBA, he found his way into Miami, and he's playing. Off his head. Batum trying to get those reps in. Eight-point game right now, right before halftime. Sixers are down by eight. Miami is uh, looking a little bit spree here, and it's really not the guys that you would think of. It's really the role 
players that are really playing good basketball for Miami tonight. Those are your guys, Billy. Yeah, but they didn't have the right prop markets for them today. And I, uh, you know, I, I, I was like, Ooh, ah, big three. Best. Here, wow, what was this five minutes ago? Cocksuckers. You want to score points yeah. now? No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just complaining. Sixers are plus six. Plus six? Sheesh. Yeah. Look, he's saying uh, this is going the other way. Yeah, bro, are they going to lay the down here at all? I'm going to take the money line on the Sixers here. Fuck them. Yeah. What's the number? Three Another three. three. Heat. Sure. Oh, shit. 51-37. One minute left here. Homer bet of First the day. Half. Let's go, Heat. Telling you right now, I said it last night. Two things if you got two things from last night, the most important things I said. One, if you're a young kid and you're not and you're not a guy that only dates tens, lower your standards. Number, <laughs> number, number, number two, um, Embiid has no heart, and that is the truth. If he had heart, they'd be the best team in the East. He has no heart. That shit had me died last night with dialogue. <laughs> you know it off on the tangent about the uh. Prostitutes versus strippers thing. <laughs> he went off. I mean, he was also drunk. He went off on some stu- – you and him arguing about st- strippers versus prostitutes is ridiculous. Prostitutes are drug addicts. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, they, they all can be drug addicts. I mean, you know, normal strippers, strippers, are strippers and their drugs. I'll tell you what. I – Person, well, I'm not gonna, never. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm sure they both. Yeah, I'm sure they both. It. We don't need a deep dive on it. Yeah, yeah there's no more deep. Yeah, there's. Yeah, <laughs> Trotter Hernandez says he's. So you say you met one? All right, go uh, ahead. Fuck it, Dave. No, I've met. I've met one of multiple of each. But but um, <laughs> they, bo- they both do drugs. They both do drugs. Lots of yeah. drugs. But it's what the. There's a rare few that say I'm going here and it paid off my college and just. Uh, that's no, that's only is. fans now. That's not anymore. The, the, yeah, but back in the life. day, that was even rare oh, to hear a gal right. say right. that. You know what I mean? You like, used to oh, I, went, I used you know. to get on John at John Wayne. I used to, in Orange County, nice place. I used to get on a Southwest oh, flight in a row, oh, and that was on a Thursday night. And there would be three hot chicks in the front row. You know what they were doing? They're flying to Vegas to go to the Spearmint Rhino, work four nights, and get three thousand bucks. That's what they were doing, and then come home. Yeah, every come back, Yeah. Well, what happens though, C Mac, is originally they think they're going there to pay off some college debt or get the money for the tuition. Then they meet someone and then uh, they end up dropping out of school. No, I thought you were going to no, say they, they, start, they start getting no, some cash and they're like, oh, them. there's no, amateur I going and buy more there's cocaine. professional going. And uh, once you get to the pros, uh, you can only fuck with the pros at that point, right? The pros, huh? I, I I think there's a huge difference between amateur hoeing and professional hoeing. <laughs> well, yeah, escorts ver- versus just well, a pr- amateur never. But I, not, <laughs> we we fucking, don't need it. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> from the street. To, uh, I shouldn't have brought it fine, up. Fine, hey, the chat's service. loving it though. We're going live up in views, man. Uh, I don't I don't know if it's from one account, two accounts, three accounts, but. Uh, the views are coming in. Shouts to everybody that's joined us. It's almost halftime here for this Heat Sixers watch party. And I will say, man, uh, this game is going by really fucking fast. 51-39, it is halftime. Number should be out in just a minute. Everything's that's locked the up. first half score. That's a WNBA yeah. first half score. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't no shit more. on the WNBA. No the more. WNBA. Yeah, don't is do that. Do that. Don't do that's the number. The first round draft picks have gone underway. And uh, say what you want about Clay Gark, but she was rocking that thing on, on uh, draft night. Her and uh, Cameron Brink, everybody was freaking going crazy on Twitter about Cameron Brink and uh, the uh, Steph Curry. Uh, what is she? Steph Curry's um, god sister or some shit like that. There's, they're related somehow, but everybody was tripping on the Cameron Brink one. Viper MB says, "Stop it, Billy. WMB is unwatchable." <laughs> yeah, but would I rather? Well, it's one of too. the best sports to bet. Sophie Cunningham is the best. only reason you should watch it. Sophie Cunningham. No, I rather watch the. Call me crazy, bro. I'd rather watch the WNBA than watch a fucking baseball game, bro. Mm, fuck no, no. 
you bro, know, every point. time I watch a baseball game, it's like I'd also rather watch a baseball game than a basketball game. I'd rather watch the notebook than watch WNBA. No, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I, I, basketball, baseball? the pace of basketball. I'd rather watch Mean Steelers. Girls too. Stop it. If we did not bet on baseball and we watched those games, bro, I'm telling you, you're going to fall asleep. I've watched baseball my whole life. No. I I don't like watch I'm not I'm not enthralled to watch baseball but I would fucking I'd watch I'd watch I'd stay up for 7 days straight with no help and watch baseball rather than watch like a night of WNBA. Stop it, bro. The WNBA is popping, man. Diana shout out to Diana yeah. Taurasi, man. Diana Taurasi lit it up last year. We had the Diana Taurasi uh 20 plus and Mercury to win. It was like one of the highest odd props I hit last year. Uh, I'm telling you, man, WNBA is lit. You just got to watch the right teams at the right times. You don't want to watch a team like the fucking Seattle Storm or some shit like that. Like, you want to watch like a uh, Vegas, uh, Las Vegas Aces game or something like that, or a uh, Connecticut Sun game or something like that. Those okay, games are good. Sandy, put on the WA, WNBA for background noise or put on Led Zeppelin. Okay. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, I mean, th- you never ever going to tell me that there's any good time to have a WNBA game on. No, I would um, bet on it. I would have it on there for background noise because I got money on it. I, I, you guys I are know. tripping, man. You guys don't watch the I'd oxygen. Put on a Turkish soccer game. There's nothing like the Oxygen Network on Tuesday night, WNBA ladies night, and then oxygen. we got the Twitter night the next, the next day. What other professional sport would you – Click on Twitter and you can watch the full game. What are you guys talking about? It's free about? on Twitter. What does that tell you? Uh, they're trying to get more views. It's a bad product. Network. Have you ever seen the Oxygen Network, Dave? Do you even know what the Oxygen Network is? That's where some of those games stream that on the weekdays, man. WNBA is popping. We've made some good money on the WNBA. And it comes at a time of year where we're sportless. And it's like, do I want to bet? On the WNBA, let's talk about the Twitter marketplace. The okay? You can check this CFL out. Time, Here's yeah. a Twitter marketplace. Okay, on the same marketplace in the sports marketplace on Twitter, you can a watch a WNBA bat. You can you can buy oh. our picks or watch the WNBA. The WNBA is in the same market as us selling our pinchy little fucking sports picks. What is I, that? I like you? the WNBA, but I will say though, uh, the Knicks comment about the CFL. I don't know what it is, bro. I, I can get down with the Canadian, Canadian football. football. I league. love the Canadian football. Like the Canadian football it's so much fun. is I, I like the USFL, man. The XFL, uh, the the UFFL. The XFL is a it is a great product. Like the bet on, I feel like uh, you know. There's there's a, some, I made some good money on the CFL last year. It was great. Here's, it. here's my hot take: If you give me the option, WNBA or Canadian Football League. I'm going back and I'm catching up. I'm watching Sopranos from season episode one. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> That's not an option, Mike. Going on one again. No, I'm telling you what I'm doing. I might so bet it, but I'm not going to watch it. If you had to pick between the WNBA, CFL, and the White Sox baseball game, which White one Sox do you pick? Baseball game. White Sox, White Sox pick baseball game. NBA every time. CFL. And that's no offense to any Canadians in the chat. There's just something about Canadians playing the game of football that's just not American for me. Not American. But not a lot. I mean, a lot of Canadian factor of it. (laughs) It's so fucking. It's just like the way the rules are set up. You're like watching the game. You're like, why is there? It's a unique. It's a unique way of football. And I think I don't know. I, I think the UFL is a unique way of football, even though I lost on my yeah, ticket last Dan, week. Dan Kelly, Dan Kelly says, I love to watch CFL. Bigger field and pre-snap movement is great. I think it it, it adds an, a layer of entertainment. I, I think it does. I think the <laughs> UFFL with the uh, fourth and 12 is absolutely absurd. Uh, Would you rather watch flag football or Canadian football? Canadian. Football. Who's playing flag football? That's what I'm saying. We Girl, Rose. Flag- uh, Girls, uh, like, like hot, like attractive women. I mean, what it doesn't matter. Um, CFL, the chat's asking us, they're pressing us, like they want to know. We're here for some live bets, and they want to see what is the halftime live bet. 
Swing it around the panel. What are you guys thinking? What are you guys looking? What are you guys' first half thoughts besides the heat domination here at half? Angels up 3 1. All right. There you go. First five comes through with the Angels. I'm rolling on Sixers. I got him pregame at five and a half. I'm t- I took him live at plus 215. I'm going Sixers here. I think they come back. I, I, it's not pretty, but it's not like they got a lot of points to come back from. They're down, what, 12? It's 51, yeah. 39, 39. Should, should, I, should I try to middle this? I have I have a Heat, heat uh, plus five. Should we try to middle it? Don't middle it. I, you have the Heat ticket. I, I yeah, I, I have a Heat ticket, so there's no reason for me to bet anything. I just lost a fucking. There, there, the, on, the only way you can look live in this game is Sixers and over. Yeah. And according to my according to my thinking, it's always what the what what line is better if you bet it now than pregame. And so the only way I can look is over and Sixers in this one here. Over in the Sixers. I gotta go to the Sixers here. Yeah, the over at this point seems like it's gotten right to the. I mean, the threshold points in the first half. I I don't understand it. How low can you go? I feel like Mikey, like, damn. Uh, <laughs> like, I still don't think the just... full game over 208 and a half is dead because, I mean, you're asking them to get 100 and what, four points each? We, we got, what, 90 points? So, I mean, it's on pace for 180 or whatever, but like fouls at the end. If this game 17 gets points in the second quarter. What the fuck happened in the second quarter? They have 17 points. Think Look, about that. They put up in my play, Mike, is, uh, Third quarter uh, over team total for the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm trying to odd shop to see if I can best find the best line. Uh, the home total right now, 26 and a half points. I mean, does it scare me a little bit that they didn't put up any fucking points? But uh, I think I might go with the – I need both teams to hit this over. Uh, over third quarter, 49 and a half at minus 140 is where I'm going to go with here as a uh, live bet at halftime. Let me go on some books and start. Typico has got 50 and a half at minus 140. FanDuel's got 49 and a half at minus 140. Do what you want with that. I got some money on Typico. I'm going to throw some money on Typico. I've never heard of whatever that book you just said is. Typico Sportsbook? Uh, is, yeah, um, I, I am not an advocate here for Typico Sportsbook, but I will say Typico Sportsbook – has uh, done me well in some uh, pricing markets. Uh, you know, like the average, uh, you know, you should always bet the best line at the best book when you're betting on something. Well, Tipico and ESPN better, usually the ones that have the best lines for me in uh, the state of New Jersey. Uh, Nasty Nate says he's on the Sixers third quarter minus the three. I took the over third quarter, 49 and a half and 50 and a half here. Um Dave's sitting with the Suns. Oh. He's got the Heat uh, plus five and a half, and they're sitting at minus five and a half at halftime. Yeah, if I was in Dave's position, I probably wouldn't have shit at halftime right now. But we got another man, the myth, the legend. There's not a lot of people on this specific stream yard column that I have up right now that have an intro. But shockingly, Dave and fucking this guy have an intro. What up, fellas? What up? What up? What up? Nice. My guy, Razor Sharp Picks is in the building. Cash it, Razor. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, we gotta, we gotta figure out how do I get one of those hats again? Cause um, I think the last time I went to Papa Palooza two years ago, I ended up getting too drunk, and um, <laughs> I don't know where the hat went. But I know I had my cell phone in my wallet the next day. Yeah, man, you can get them. Uh, you had the cash it hat right on uh, Pub Sports Radio uh, website. Yeah, yeah, I had the I had the uh, original the original one where it would. Uh, yeah, I, I like that shit. The little the gear. I don't know how I ended up buying a bunch of Razor Shark picks gear before anything else at Pub Sports Radio, but I still yeah. had the cookie crumble sometimes. Makes sense. It makes sense. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I had like three razor sharp picks uh, stuff, and then uh, that's when I started getting the other stuff. I, I my favorite shirt is the um, Liverpool ticket one. They're in the locker room. 
and promote Sotsas. They're in the locker room, not trying to explain how to break break the zone defense to Maxi. I don't know what's up with Tyrese Maxi. Uh, he played at Kentucky. They don't see a lot of zone. Yeah, I've, I'm not going to make a halftime bet here, but to me, this game is telling me what to bet in the next game. Every so far, or so far, all the playing games have gone under. Do we just take the under in the next game too? Probably. Probably. But the Atlanta Hawks defense is so bad that they might sneak themselves to an over just off of how bad the Hawks. Like, if the Hawks win the game, I think the game goes way over. If the Bulls win the game, I think it goes dead under 222 and a half. So I think the uh, I think the second game specifically is really like the team that you think is going to win is tied into the total, I feel like. Uh, the Hawks are horrible defensively. Whenever they win games, it's usually very high scoring. Uh, when the Bulls win games, they usually barely crack 100 points for either team. Line's starting to drop now. It's down to 222 and a half, 221.5 at Bet Online. Nasty Nate says Sixers live team total over 92. I actually like that, Nate. That That's a that's a sharp blow angle to hit if, you, if you're <laughs> – own the Sixers pre-flop, I think that would be the way to like kind of like hit your ticket. Let's go! We got ourselves an Islanders goal, boys. Casey <laughs> Zikas. He moved up to the top line. Oh no, he's been on the top line with Horvat and Barzal. It's it's Zikas with Holstrom and uh Horvat tonight. <laughs> We almost had our uh, we almost had our uh, Iskov Iskov goal earlier. They uh, I think it was tipped by Nelson though uh, earlier. So since you guys said that about um, Atlanta's defense is so bad, maybe we take Atlanta's team total under. That in theory that would be the move. Um, Atlanta team total. Actually, call me crazy. Call me what you want. Uh, I think Atlanta's live in that game. Don't man. say it. Don't even say it. Don't I think Atlanta's alive, bro. The Chicago Bulls, the whole entire season, everybody was talking about, oh, they're going to trade Zach Levine. They're going to tank. They're going to, they're not trying to win games. Well, both of these teams were, had some bad losing streaks and found themselves inside the playoffs. And if I start looking at the X's and O's, Shit, I think the uh, Atlanta Hawks have more reliant scores than sh- the Chicago Bulls. Like, you're, with, you're betting on the Chicago Bulls, you kind of need the whole entire team to play well. You need the starters to play well. You need Drummond to come off the bench and rebound. I feel like when you bet the Hawks, you just need either Trey Young or DeJounte Murray to get hot, and then the game changes, I feel like. Uh, the Hawks have kind of figured I, – I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth. Take it with a grain of salt. They have Stop seen it. It, figured it. it out. They figured it out, man. They lost six in a row. What the fuck are you smoking? The John <laughs> Tame Murray and Trey taken. Young. They lost six in a row. Play. There's no way they, they went tonight. They figured it out. How to lose? <laughs> They're figuring I'm it so out. Confused. I've been drinking all day, and this guy's making me sound like a genius <laughs> over here. I appreciate you, Billy. All right, in honor of our guy Razor, we got some Yonkers Raceway. Yonkers race number six. We got the four, the five, and the six. There's the five deadline hall. Tyler Butter, Razor. Let's go, my guy. But yeah, man, I, I think Atlanta's uh they're done, man. They want Trey Young out of there. He's gonna go to the Spurs. Him and uh Wemba, they're gonna snap. I mean, he's gonna head to the Spurs. Trey Young's that would done. Be lit. That would be lit. If Trey Young goes to the San Antonio Spurs, San Antonio Spurs playoffs, book it next year, it's going to be Lob City from Trey Young that won't be the whole entire year. You know how That's sick that would be? That would be sick. I mean, rumors are he, he wants to go to L.A. too, but I don't know. It's so weird because um, DeJounte Murray – yeah, no, the fix is in. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, playoff bets have not been too well. Lost on the Pelicans. Lost on the uh, Warriors. At this point, I feel like I should throw more money on the player props. The player props have been pretty nice for me. <laughs> I went two and one in player props yesterday, 
and uh, one and one so far in this Sixers Heat game so far. Garrison Matthews, though, hey, if you want to tail the fixes in, player props have been better than the sides. Uh, Garrison Matthews over four and a half points, minus 125, over one and a half threes, plus 150, over two and a half threes, plus 400. Uh, gr granted, take that with a grain of salt, though, when you start doing the ladder. You know, those are like sprinkle bets. They're not the real bets, the four and a half points. But it's just like if you're betting the four and a half points on a three point shooter, more than likely, if he goes over his prop, it's probably because he hit the three pointers that he was taking. Uh, Tony Brothers is going to the replay booth here, and I don't know what he's going to say. I'm going to mute myself. Whole world is on the Bulls. What could go wrong? Because of Hawks suck. Yeah, they've lost. They've lost six in a row coming into this game. There's no way they win tonight, right, Razor? There's no way they win tonight. They've lost six in a row. They're figuring it out. They're figuring it out. <laughs> I, I I definitely think that they're somewhat. I, I can't I can't say it without laughing, but I think that the line's fishy, and I think the Hawks are figuring it out. I'm with Drew Teller. Uh, the line does seem a little bit fishy, but I, all the lines seem fishy in the playing games. Uh, I've noticed throughout the years. I was looking at uh, the last couple of years since they've started the playing tournaments. I bet no, the Hornets last year in the play in tournament in the nine technique game. So uh, that's when I started reeling back the Hawk thought. Uh Hawk thoughts there. It was uh I had a uh Hornets 10 ticket last year and uh they got blown the fuck out by at least 30 points. Shouts to Millie Mills. Millie Mills was with uh I was with my guy Millie Mills. Uh I watched the Pick Dogs video and uh I agreed with Mills. Uh Keegan Murray might have the biggest home road splits I've ever seen on a uh, basketball player I've ever seen. Like, uh, damn near 20 points a game at home and barely double digits on the road. Uh, he, some shit must be going on down there in Sacramento where he gets, you know, you get the nice little – when you when you're at home and you're with the lady, he's doing the things for you, she's cooking the food, you're around the city, and uh, home-cooked meals always hit better, right? Londo says the Lakers are fixed to win it. I got my plus 330 ticket. I would start by, if you think the Lakers are live, I would start with the first round series against the Denver Nuggets at plus That's what I think he's talking about. Right? Oh, 33 to 1. Never mind. You said plus yeah, 330. That's, that's what I'm saying. You got to bet the plus 250. They got to beat Denver first, I feel like. I'm thinking about taking props on Denver and four and Denver and five. What have what yeah, have I the Lakers see. done to prove that they can beat the uh, the Nuggets? I, I'm with you, bro. I, I thought the move was the Lakers to play the Oklahoma City Thunder. Kind of like a homer. I'm not a Nuggets fan. That's my brother. Don't you like the? Nuggets I can give a fuck about the NBA. I can give a fuck about the NBA. I, my favorite team is the one I have money on. If there's a Nuggets fan on stream. By the fat heads on the wall, it might be me. I got Allen Iverson as a Denver Nugget. I got Rocky, the team mascot, mask, uh, fucking fat head. Um, I don't know how I have so many Denver Nugget fat heads in this baseball. Weirdo. You know, you know, Rocky, the mascot, makes more money than any WNBA player. Well, not nowadays. Caitlin Clark getting that bag. Caitlin Clark more than more than that. Uh, Rocky's salary is higher than any WNBA salary. No, I, I did see that. Is there um, a problem with that? Who? Who? No, uh, I just thought that was funny. Jonathan uh, Pixon, former North Carolina Tar Heel, got fined for a hundred k. Whatever he got fined for from the NBA for not wearing the Mavericks colors on a national TV game was more money than what Caitlin Clark made getting drafted. Same with w. Rudy Gobert making the money symbols towards the referees. Hey, are we going to talk about, are we going to talk about your, your, your boyfriend's brother getting kicked out of the NBA? Have you, have you noticed? I haven't been a Michael Porter jr. Prop in about five to six plus months. It's been a while, but I, but you, for, for about a year and a half since I've known you, I've had enough of your, uh, yeah, but I actually, but it's like one of these situations though, Dave. All right, you're betting that amount of money on games and shit like that. Where are you getting the intel from? 
it had to be Michael Porter. Well, Jr. well, why? Okay, what? What's his salary? What? What was his salary? Do we know what his salary is? This is how, this is how I feel about ga- a gambling when you're when you're if, if, okay. Ga- I don't care if you gamble on other sports, but if you gamble on your own sport, I think they're and especially if you're doing what he did, and it's definitely kind of obvious he was fucking around. In game oh, parlays. Are you ever going to make as much money gambling as a million dollar a million dollars worth of worth of livelihood and career? That's the stupidest thing in the world. I mean, yeah, when you start doing same game parlays on your own player props, dog, you're you're tripping. You're you're off the deep end there. You know, maybe betting an NFL <laughs> game or something like, like that. To let There's you a lot slide. of sport in that. But if you're doing your own same game parlays of the under on your points, rebounds, and assists as separate bets in a same game parlay at plus 800, bro, you're going to get caught. I have a feeling yeah. that I have a feeling if the, if, if the purge could be real life, <laughs> like if we could actually have a purge, that Mike would Mike would support it. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. What was that movie where they hunted people? Um, there's, I think there's a couple of them. I'm not going to lie to you, though, Dave. If I was in, like, some of the Lions player situations from a couple years ago where they got uh, suspended for betting on March Madness during uh, team facility practices, I would be right there with them, too, bro. I'd probably be betting on the March Madness shit in the fucking locker room, too, and I'd probably give you a All right, we need one more I wouldn't be saying – listen, there's a line you got to draw, right? I'm all for trying to find the edge, but – Let's just make it clear. I think we can unanimously agree. You can't be same game parlaying yourself with unders in any yeah. fucking category. That's, <laughs> that's you exactly you get NBA and an NBA player. That's fine. But there's a line here. Come on. I'm Come with on. Mike, though. There's got to be a line, bro. When you're doing same game parlays of your own player prop, bro, the first thing that book's going to do is be like, how the fuck, who the fuck, and how the fuck do, would this even like, be a thing like who the fuck would even bet on a jante porter only same game parlay like you're just you're just raising the red flag on your account how do you took the over if you took the over in every category then the sport in it would tell me that's fine and if you cashed it there's no problem with it you got the over but the under that that five letter word has a lot of connotation when it comes to betting implications all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna Pull another. I'm gonna pull another. Mike, hero, hero has six assists. Um, and beat us three. They need one more assist for that that play that I put out there. Did anyone take it? Did anyone take it? I put it in the DMs. Did anyone take it? Of course you did. I added. Uh, you know, each his own, right? Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just I saying. I'm hero. just, I just I like funny. Hero, like, I didn't like the Embiid part of it. I didn't. Uh, okay, hey, if I start to a five leg parlay in the DM, you better fucking take. Better it. fucking take it. this. And uh, yeah, here we go. You, you open the fucking door. I'm just coming in to say hi. No, I got you. No, I'm with you. I feel, I feel <laughs> that your pain now. I give a fucking winner, and everyone was uh, a parlay with such low production numbers. Now. I, Ramon, I will agree with you on that. Uh, Mikey kind of Mikey kind of steered me into this direction. He was like, "Dude, you're cashing a lot on the bench player props." Maybe <laughs> not. It was like the nicest way. Maybe you shouldn't bet on the fucking studs. Just bet on the bench guys. The bench guys are going over for you in uh, my notes, and uh, that's what I've been doing. The fucking bench players are pretty. If you want to bet an NBA player prop, bet on somebody coming off the bench or somebody that isn't a big name player. In the in the playoffs, absolutely. I love that. I love that angle. I think that's yeah. it, it's glorious. It's not something you hear about either. You, that's like marketable. And nobody talks about that. That's a great way to do it. At least you Paul know. just got up at three. Let's uh, go, Nick. You're not on the Islanders. Of money. The only bet I have tonight for the NHL, only official bet is the, is the Oats. Oh, I'll give you one. I'll give you. I'll give you all one right now. We got both teams to score in the first period of that Dallas game, plus 165. Great spot for the over. And the first period, we're seeing both teams to score 1.2 to 1.1. The first period over is fine. It's like minus 130, minus 140. But both teams to score, we're seeing a confidence rating with both teams to get one, and it's plus 165. Dallas. First period over, both teams to score. 
What's up with this? Uh, what it, is? Or this game? Is this game not being played at Arizona? Because it's like I uh, saw. I, I forget what it's I saw. Nice. It was like that was nice. yeah. for Edmonton and Arizona, and it looks like one of those spots where, like, when I saw the ticket count on it, the public is just blindly putting in their little Oilers parlay tickets. But the Sharps are fucking slamming the shit out of the Arizona Coyotes. They were the most bet on sharp play of the day, I would say. Uh 91% of the money line bets. It's are- it's their last game in Arizona. Ed- Edmonton should pressure. absolutely stomp the Arizona Coyotes. And then when we look back at it, everyone's going to be like, well, of course they stomped them. Minus one and a half. Well, what about the over, though? But you got to take shot over? at it. Over six and a half? Over. Over six I and a half. Coyotes and I took the Coyotes in the over. I, there's an Edmonton spot specific to this over that's hitting at like 80 percent. So it was a great, it was yeah, a great spot. And we've seen Arizona beat these boys already. Not like they don't know how to do it. What does Edmonton give a shit? They're locked in second in the division. They don't care. They know, yeah, they know who they have to. Actually, they don't know how they have to play. Uh, they will be playing if Vegas beats Anaheim tomorrow. They'll be playing Vegas in the first round. If Anaheim beats Vegas tomorrow. They'll be playing the Kings in the first round. So um, honestly, if I if I'm the uh, if I'm the Oilers, I'm rooting for the uh, the Kings tomorrow or the, the the Ducks tomorrow. I want to play the Kings rather than the uh, the Golden Knights. You're damn right. I'd rather play the Kings than the Golden Knights. Hey Mike, the first Flyers team score the game should be like the. What's that? Oh, sorry. First team is both teams score in the first period plus one seventy. Yeah. Yeah, game yeah, should be like the Jackets like game from last night. Mel, she said then, she's on the you know, Dave, 27. The back bet on that is the uh, over one and a half, but it depends on how juicy the over one and a half is for the first period. Because if, if uh, I mean, it looks like there's going to be two plus goals. If it's only one side and you're going for the home run, you might be able to take a little bit of, I don't want to say insurance, but edge it a little, no, I fuck, guess. I'm not fucking taking, no, I'm not, dude, like, like a puss. I just took it plus one seventy. Yeah, I'm but what is the there. first period over for you? Um, let's take a look. I just closed it. Bill Eagle Flyer says first period over. First period, both teams to score over five and a half. Yeah, I think I get that. I get what you're saying. First period over is uh, one and a half at minus one thirty. It's not terrible. That's not a terrible bet either. But you know, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to leave the nuts hanging out. Okay, I don't care. Let's go plus one seventy. I'm with. You. I like that. Oh, when I'm you not. said, I'm with. Do you. that on your own time if you're going to have your nuts out. Yeah, well, I got them out. <laughs> I'm on the record. I said if I'm going right to play here. these games going into the playoffs, I'm going to take big, big fucking swings and see what happens. So, like it. If I'm going to bet on meaningless hockey, I'm going to fucking. I'm going to go big. Go it's meaningless. Why can't you cash a plus two hundred? Yeah. Exactly. I'll tell you, what, that, you know what? This is my Nick Earl special here. I don't think I've given well, I've given maybe one out all year. How about that Dallas game goes to overtime? Well, look at Nick. Yeah, I wish Nick well, 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 there, there actually, well, there actually week, is a good, good, there actually is a good cap behind that. The Dallas Stars they need one point to clinch home ice advantage throughout the Western Conference playoffs. So there actually is a good explanation behind why a draw could be a good spot because all yeah. Dallas needs is one point. Razor, it's I next Wednesday. I announced that days. earlier, a week from today. You're gonna do it on your channel? Yeah, I'm gonna do my eyebrows. I'm not gonna do my head. The reason why is, is I have. Uh, it's not because I don't want to. I would have done it today, but there's, there's something that needs to be done next Tuesday. That's well, I don't. Want, I'll, I'll explain. Um, my my grandfather has an MRI next Tuesday, and he doesn't want to go. And any little thing that pisses him off, I don't want this to piss him off because I come because I'm taking care of him. If I come in the room and I have no eyebrows, he's going to be pissed. So I want to make sure that he's taken care of, and then I want to drop the bomb and, and be called a fag and all that. So there you go. He's going to call you a fag. No, but in so many words, he will. But uh, oh, okay. uh-oh, here come the Sixers down by six. Ten, nine, eight, seven, sixes, baby. Let's go. I will say though, if you don't believe in this run, damn man, they're throwing the heat. They're throwing the heat line. They're throwing the heat line out. Like they're gonna lose. Next time they're gonna shit on the Sixers. Why don't you mute yourself? I'm not shitting on the Sixers, Mike. I got my Sixers gear on. You're not a Sixers fan. You're a Boston fan. Get that shit out of here. Take that shit off. 
KG sleeps sleeps right above my my head. No homo, no diddy, no diddy on that. Just because I have a KG, anything yeah, right. possible there's some there. on my bed. No diddy does not mean I'm a Boston fan. I'm a Kevin Garnett fan. Uh, you know he's a he's an OG, bro. Who who do you know less that went to prom night and got drafted first overall pick the next night? That's some G shit, man. Always respect Kobe. Kevin Garnett for that, man. Kobe Bryant went to Br- Brandy's prom, didn't he? He went to Brandy's prom, but I'm saying, Dave, can you imagine going to your high school senior prom? And everyone's saying, yo, man, I seen you on fucking television last night, man. You're going number one overall tomorrow? Like, bro, that's crazy, bro. What? You go to senior prom night and you get drafted to the NBA next, next night? Cheers. Let's go. 1990, what was it, 1990s from the 90s when you could do that? Uh, yeah, I think Kevin Garnett or no, 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 LeBron's class was the last class that you can go out of high school. But theoretically, though, Dave, I feel like if you play at OTE, isn't that basically coming out of high school? Yeah, when they do when they do this this that that one place they go or they go overseas for a year, like it's the same fucking thing. Actually, no, no, it, overseas is legit because you you're the overseas market's a little bit different. They don't care if you're number one pick in the NBA draft. You might come off the bench if you're 19, 18 years old. Yeah, I don't know. Like, That's how many not- people have we seen besides Nikolai Jochik? Everybody else, like Perzingis, when he came over and he was a top p- pick in the draft, he came off the bench for that team. No, I'm, um, I'm, I'm for, I'm for, I'm, a, I'm not for, for go, I'm for one and duns or even more because you look at, you look at, I mean, physically, here's a deal: you done growing, whatever. Look at LeBron his first year, and then look at LeBron four or five years in. He was a, he was a different physical uh, specimen then. I, I think. I- and, and, I feel like, though, Dave, not to cut you off, but I end up cutting you off. I feel like basketball is like the style of play. Like a kid like Robert Dillingham going to Kentucky. Put me on the big screen. You're damn right. This is why he's not a Sixers fan. You see this bullshit? You didn't think I was a Larry Bird yeah, this is embarrassing. Look at this guy in his Celtics jersey. I would yeah, say, I'm Razor, that's a good pass. Flat out numbers. yanked the Sixers card. I'll tell you yeah. what, stomp Book on it when you pulled it out. Parker, Parker, that fucking piss on the thing. Well, I, I got to make money. You got to make money, you gotta make money right, Mike? And you don't have to wear the seven. jersey. You're making money wearing the jersey? Is that what you're telling us? What's on stream? They said game seven. Who you got, Boston or your Philadelphia team? And I said, I hate to say it, but I'm betting Boston in game seven. Yeah. You shouldn't have left the fucking house then. If your only option was to wear that jersey or not leave the house, you don't Mike, leave the house. Mike, 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 cut me some slack. A NBA hardware classic legend Larry Bird jersey. Would you wear it? No, it's Larry no, Bird. It's Larry I Bird. Fuck. I don't care. You, you know, you know, Billy. Billy, it's kind of interesting seeing, seeing the person that's zinging you for betting against uh, a Philly team game seven, but yeah, he had a big gambler's first glance uh, on the Diamondbacks game seven. No, see, it's way different because it's the, the real oh, you guys are deep in score out there, man. Jersey you guys are pulling up scorecards. Holy shit. He didn't wear that Boston Celtics jersey until the Sixers lost. It didn't have anything to do with Game Seven. No, okay. just, I'm, I'm just messing around. I, 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 all I'm doing is just stirring the pot. I'm just <laughs> stirring <laughs> the pot. You two, Phil, you three Philadelphia people, uh, stirring listen, the pot. I'll take them right to. The, I'll take. Uh, you've seen me take them all the way down. Once they're in, I'm compromised. Don't listen to me. I will say though, from a Philadelphia like fandom perspective i feel like eagle diehard fans then it trickles down to the sixers then it's the flyers and then the phillies like the phillies are like i feel like the besides the time that we won the world series that's been like you don't see people going around saying oh fighting phils the fighting phils you see people no, the, with- the, the, the phillies it's a great point the phillies fans are diehard they're you know but the the phillies fans are different than the other fans, if that makes sense. They're just 
They love their baseball in the summer. They're fucking at the shore and they're watching games for the Phillies and they're enjoying themselves. And they're diehards. They don't give. It wasn't up. until they don't come out regular season. They're not the last out. few years is usually when you start seeing the Phillies fans, you know, that that coveted after 4th of July, everybody's a Phillies fan again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Memorial Day weekend. That's when everything kind of kicks off down there. The shore, everybody's bumping. They're fucking rolling out there from Philadelphia, enjoying their four-day weekends. And uh, that's when they start going Phillies. But until then, Sixers. Too funny. To Probably the team to report. <laughs> nah, I'm not gonna lie, man. Uh, there was there was a point of last year where um that 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 game seven. Uh, all right, I, I, going into game seven, I already knew we were gonna lose. I had to I had to make money back on it. Um, last year I would say it was a decent playoffs until I got suckered in to losing about. I think it was eight to nine units on the Lakers game three and four in uh, at home versus Denver. Bet them game three and four down 0-2 in the series, and they got swept. Uh, game four is probably up there with uh, the Warriors beating the Oklahoma City Thunder in game seven in Oklahoma City. is most money I ever lost on a basketball game. But shouts to MMA. MMA got me back in the got me back in the plus. Uh, you know. You, you you get you get a couple good MMA lines and you, you bet an even money line. You get a couple props in there, and uh, that that little the little four or five unit loss turns into a fucking up to the three units. Uh, that's why I like MMA betting. Um, it really uh, pays the bills. I would say uh, it covers a lot of my losses in the other organizations. What up, Joe T? Says, what up, bitches? Coming to, from vacation. Here's our guy, Joe T. Hanging down there in Florida with the fam. He says, just had some downtime. Kids are in bed. Hope you're having a good time, Joe T, man. You deserve it. Joe T, let us know. How was the uh, vacation put in the chat? Um, favorite memory from the vacation? Because I remember uh, that was a uh, big talking point. Was that on Dave's stream last yeah. week? Yeah, don't let your kids swim in the fucking ponds in Orlando, okay? Get eaten by alligators. That's what we were talking about, the alligators. That's going to Florida. Yeah, but good for him. Good for Joe. Joe Getting out. He was one of the $50 winners I had to send 50 bucks to for PayPal. Wow. Send a cash around? I can't even get a fucking... Can't even get a hit. Don't follow me on kick. I'm trying to give I don't away even know money. What the fuck, kick is? How about that? Yeah, you know what the fuck it is? Get that God. bullshit out of here. Razor, sh- razor smart though, because I will say, all these streams that we be doing, I don't want to show on YouTube, but all these streams we be doing on YouTube might be on kick in like two years from now. <laughs> talk to him, Billy. Talk to him. <laughs> Ask them. Uh, I've been I've been trying to talk to Jeff, man. I'm trying to convince Jeff, man. I'm telling you, I think the kick might be the wave. I think kick is the wave to give it out contract. Look at eight. What's that shitty platform that that they were doing the the Wednesday night thing on the Dutch with Dutch was using um, that you can swear. Rumble. Remember that fucking thing? rumble, rumble. Oh, oh please, rumble? if kicks anything like that, get rumble? fucked. No, but oh, no. I would rumble. say. Kick is way better yeah. than Rumble. Rumble is like a, uh, uh, I would say like a dollar store version of Kick. Like I would say, like uh, dollar they, store. Kick is get is probably one going to be one of the most popular streaming platforms about a year, or two years from now. Yeah, it's kind of like Twitch, but people are saying it's a lot better. Okay. Way better. It's like Twitch with YouTube comment section, if that makes sense. Like uh, the the Twitch comment section, you gotta be, you gotta have the Amazon Prime account connected to it. You gotta have the sub. It's just like uh, you know the one thing that people like about YouTube. It's very anybody can comment. It's probably the easiest uh, streaming platform to comment on something. Not me. Razor got a wrench, and all of a sudden I can't comment on uh, Pub Sport video fucking streams. Uh, <laughs> Razor, I, don't Razor I don't know, Razor. but you can't say everybody can comment because I put them out here, nothing happens. I go over to Razor Stream, we're good to go. I don't Razor, have a wrench on Razor have, Stream. Uh, Wednesday night party, uh, or no, it was Thursday night. Uh, when I was my senior year in college, Razor had the 
racing with Razor, and we would do the Bellator prediction video after Razor's stream went off, and we'd be going live at like fucking 11, 12 o'clock midnight, breaking down Bellator, and uh, those, check the stats, man, go to Pub Culture Radio, man, we're popping out some views on that, but uh, you know, Bellator got bought out, and we don't do Bellator predictions anymore. I just took a I just took a ten to one shot on this game to go to overtime. Draw. 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 Right Sixty-six. The Sixers are coming back, baby. Let's go. This game's really? gonna go to overtime. We're good. I appreciate you taking that fucking hoodie off. And 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 the Heat are gonna win in overtime. <laughs> you know what it is, Mikey Money. I always say this, but I don't know how much my body can endure of it because. I'm a smoker, man. We got the edibles right here. Like, I'm a smoker. But every TV timeout, taking a shot. And uh, it's been working yeah, at the second that. I appreciate that. I just – I don't want you rooting for the Sixers. Razor, I took your card. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Razor, do you mean? Razor, I'll give Razor credit. That is – I don't. I don't think uh, I will ever be able to pick beat the picture proof of the Stitch Celtics jersey on screen, <laughs> and that's without the volume, bro. The volume was bad. Uh, some it's actually funny. A couple of my buddies that uh, watch the show and shit, um, they, around this time of year, uh, I was smoking with. Uh, I was smoking with them the other day, and they were saying that to me. They were like. You're not a Sixers fan anymore, right? From last year's stream, I was like, ah, oh, man, here it comes, here it comes. Oh yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't wait for this moment. He had receipts yeah. saved. Bookmark go. That's the way to do it, though. If you uh, bookmark your receipts, ah, oh, perfect. There's a lot of videos I wish I had. I got a couple. I got a couple of all sports bets bookmarked. Oh boy, for what? Wait to use them things. Wait to use them things. Wait for the Mets choke again this year. Wait, just wait. Oh, Wait. we already know it's going to happen. Uh, so, can, how do I pull up the video of your brother Tim dancing in the Lula Luge? Oh, that's so. You want to know the sad part about that video? They yeah. muted. They they took the sound off. Wow, I, I peeped that on TikTok. They, like half of my TikTok. Yeah, videos. they muted it on TikTok because it was uh, "Hips Don't Lie" by Shakira. It was great. It was gold, and they, I and they muted it. What's up with TikTok? Uh, uh, have to have, have that video. That fucking yeah. All those classic videos on TikTok are all dead now because they're all muted. It's so weird. Uh, nice work, nasty and eight cash in the third quarter. Cash the third quarter over. Did we get it? Did I get the third quarter over? I gotta look. Landed at 53. What'd you have? Uh, 49 and a half at minus 140 and 50 and a half. Yep, landing 53. Yeah, you could have even took the Sixers team total over in the third quarter. It was 26 and a half. I was that was too much of a pussy. Live to total do. live total is right back up to 193 and a half. We I bet 196 and a half about five minutes into the game when it dropped. So that was 188 and a half to, I believe to start or 190 and a half to start the third quarter. Mike Morrison, kind of like, is 47 nice. over. If you need the second half over, I would find some type of way to get on to the Sixers because the only way this over hits is if the Sixers come back, I feel like. I bet the overtime. That's how the over hits. <laughs> that That as well. That as well. I didn't think about that. Uh, if you bet overtime, that's how you did not over real quick. Oh, yeah, because you – What if you parlay this game to go to overtime with the Islanders game to go to overtime? Or the Dallas uh, game? We got a special guest, and he's coming in from the motherfucking H. The team might make the playoff, but we don't give a fuck about that. We care about his thoughts and his insights in the association. One of the best trend guys. You might have seen him earlier tonight. Pub Sports Radio's the crew, that's a fact. We all about bread, making bank accounts fat. Who the hell is that? LJ from the H, I stack green like Boston. Shout out to Nasty Nate from down south, where we ride on slack. 
Oh, he stacks Jay. green like Boston. So are we? Are we still talking? Uh, Billy knows a little about that. Stacking green with Boston, right? <laughs> I, had to, I had to go in. Uh, LJ, though, my man, how you feeling tonight? Uh, first, how you feeling tonight? How you doing? And why are you shaking your head? This is this is uh, Bro, best time of year. Am I looking at this correct? <laughs> but I know the Rockies did not cover that run line, bro. They did cover the run line. The Rockies. Tell me they did not cover that run line, bro. Are you fucking kidding me? I'll tell you right now. The Phillies bullpen sucks. It was seven to one. Did they cover any run lines against the Rockies? Yesterday. Uh, Yesterday. Nola pitch. Yesterday. Because I remember the first. I think the first game was the extra inning game. It was two one. No, nah, that was the noise. five runs in the eighth inning, bro. Bro, I'm what? telling you, man, watching the Phillies wow. play this year, I've watched way too many Philly games than I really want to admit to. Dude, the Phillies bullpen fucking sucks. It, 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 I think the Phillies are pretty simple. Wait till October to bet them. Wow. No, nah, wait till July. Like Mike said, right around Memorial Day weekend is when the I don't know what happens, but Citizen Bank Park turns into like a fucking party atmosphere. Get a ticket in left field. It's like a freaking party back there, man. It's great. Yeah, school's out. Everyone's partying. That's what it is. That's what it really is, Razor. School's out and kids can, uh, not kids, but parents can go to the ballpark with their kids and stuff. Plus all the college students. There's tons of colleges around. I can't believe they covered that run line. But my apologies. What's going on, guys? Razor, Mike, Billy, my man. Nick. Hey, y'all. I'm, I'm just flabbergasted right now, but it's all good. I'm just. And LJ, it's not I your fault. Talking. It's mine, LJ. I have a general rule. I don't bet the 6 o'clock games because it's a rush, rush, rush to get them done. We move things around. I took the under eight. That got smoked. <laughs> you jumped in there with the. But, you know, it's my fault. That's why we don't. Yeah, we that's don't, why I don't like don't... to bet before 6 p.m. I wait for last call. <laughs> What's last call? Never heard of it. It's when the bartender says, do you want I'll bet those things, I don't want to give them out. I don't know, Mike. I I like heard someone's, got, someone's got the same name as you. You might have to, might have to sus- or, uh, Listen, hit him for a you copyright. Can, you can copy it. You're not gonna do it the same. There's only one original, baby. You guys already know what it is. Wow! Don't make me get in there. So don't it, make me get y'all in there. Y'all sweating, there. The, y'all sweating in the Sixers of uh, Miami game? Uh, no, I got the Sixers money line plus two fifteen. They tied it up. LJ, let's go, baby. Seven you took a draw. Let's get the draw. Let's get this draw. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me ask this question: Is everybody on the Coyotes tonight? Yes. I am. I know. I saw your spiel during the show. Zeke is just Yay, I'm going to the Oilers. Islanders go. <laughs> Islanders go, baby. Let's go. Let's go, LJ. We got them Islanders. Still not our Nick, boy. Uh, oh, I was going to say, Nick, I threw uh-huh. a little sprinkle on it. You know, I, I wouldn't say. No, he was on the good. ice. I think he may have gotten a point on that play, on that goal, but he did not get the goal itself. He was on, and that's one thing with um with Ruslan here. He's he's on power play too. I think that was his first career point because he passed it there. Nope, never mind. Uh, there, oh no, that was off of that went off the that, that one off Jay. So whoever, who was that out there? Yeah, uh, there? if you, I mean, uh, Ruslan point was not available, but that goal is Bulldukes, I believe, which was assisted by uh, our boy Ruslan. We need him to score a goal though at five to one. Londo oh, says, Gary. or I'm sorry, That's Mikey Morris says, everybody got to play before the game starts. What game you want to hear That's about, Mike Morris? Throw it in the chat. We'll talk talking about, about the. Uh, he's talking about the Atlanta Chicago game. My plan is, if this game stays under, uh, in the Sixers Miami game, I'm gonna bet the under in the next game too. Oh, I gave out the same game parlay. I'm on. I'm on the Bulls minus three, and I gave out that same game parlay. Let me see if I can re. Nope. Can't put it back in there. You're going to have to scroll up and go see it. I think it was Kobe White over two and a half three. As a matter of fact, I know what it was. Kobe White over two and a half threes. Kobe White over 19 and a half points. And Vucevic 
10 plus rebounds and it was plus 244 i believe it was 246 there you go look at kevin love what a fucking dumbass he tipped it in and he got all excited he's running down the court with his hand in the air and he's walking all slow with his fist pump and they run by right to him and he then an easy basket for sixers he misses it but he gets fouled What's he clenching his fist for? He tipped it back in. There's still eight minutes left in the fucking quarter. He didn't tip yeah, it to get the lead with two seconds left. I can't What's believe up with Kevin Love? Kevin Love celebrating. What are you, you you should be lucky to be on the court. Uh, what's up with Duncan Robinson, though? Duncan Robinson, they didn't play him at all, man. I got him in all my daily fantasy lineups. I really need the Sixers to win now. Shout out to Ramon yeah. Scott. RSP in the building. Faded 90%. Uh, I made the Hawks over 222. Bro, low key, man. I feel like if you're betting the Hawks over 222, you should be betting on the Hawks. Uh, that's some soft penalties on the Sixers, too. This game is going to be close to total. I just couldn't take it. Yeah. 208. What did he close that? 208. It's too low, right? It's just 207. The live line is 194 and a half. It's not, it's not close at all. The, the live line is what? 194 and a half. We would need overtime for the over to hit. The over ain't hitting. I don't know. That's going to be close. Nah, I think six, LJ's right. Six six overtime. Overtime. Who knows, man? The foul shit at the end. I feel like whoever is down, they're probably gonna be fouling. Hey, this this game is not going to overtime. I'm sorry to say, Philly's gonna cover the minus five and a half. All that no, six, much into so about eight. nothing. Six or seven. Uh, not a platoon. Keep hitting them threes. <laughs> platoon over a half a three pointer. LJ minus one forty. This is really. <laughs> I cashed my Bam rebound over 10 and a half. Bam nice. looks uh, good. He's in foul trouble, though. That's why I'm not going to get the PRA. He didn't, have enough, he didn't have enough time on the court. Sometimes, though, I feel like with the Sixers, man, it's really the crowd that gets them going. Oh, like, where they're like, damn. Oh, JP Easy. All those Benjamin Franklin's making me making the start the show. I'm nervous here. I kind of don't want another TV timeout because that means I got to take another shot. And I don't know how much more my body can take of these shots, man. You streaming for the next show, uh, next game too, Billy? I feel like we we, we have to Fuck at this yeah, he is. Fuck <laughs> yeah, he is. I need some fatal. What are you going to do? Just shut down the 300 we got on fucking Twitter between the accounts and the Sorry. Uh, 80 that we got live? Like, we got uh, nothing you... else to do, but Billy had too many cocktails? No, we're going, Billy. You get yourself in there, man. Let's get a TV. <laughs> hey, and if, if you're the host, we've seen hosts just disappear. We've seen it happen a lot of times. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just disappear, and we don't know where the fuck they went on Thursday night football games. I'm not going to point any fingers, but we've had it happen to <laughs> Those Thursday night football games, the Mike's credit, were wildly long. I don't know why, but they'd be like four or five hours long. You'd be at halftime like, oh, shit. I remember the one oh, stream we were doing shots like every 10 likes. Oh, good God. Well, that speaking was, of that, I think we should have a scary show, bro, and I think it should be legendary. We, What'd like you say? a Saturday show. We should do a live Saturday show. I think we should. There's no UFC this Saturday. So uh, all three major sports are playing. All three. Yeah, we have Saturday. the playoffs starting in the NHL on Saturday. Let's do Gabby's it. Gabby's talking about the 420 show. It's April yeah, 420. I'm going to be locked in here in my man cave all day. I'm not moving. I I'm actually, I think I might. I might have to. Uh, I, I hate to say it, and I and um, the more and more I'm looking into it, um, I gotta hit up Danny to get the round props. But um, I got some information from a uh, book odds maker that their Devin Haney, the Devin Haney line opened up at like plus four hundred for knockout, and it's gone all the way down to even odds throughout the Ryan Garcia bullshit. 
I got to hit up Danny to see what are the round props because I'm not that averse to it. But it, it, you got to be a blind bat not to follow the line movement there. Uh, Devin Haney's probably going to knock out Ryan Garcia Saturday night. You just got to figure out what round it's going to be in. You already know some boxing. Did you? Do you guys have any thoughts on the Ryan Garcia Devin Haney fight? I mean, the kid went crazy about three weeks. Never ago. heard of either of these people. Never. Like, Don't even watch it. <laughs> I'm gonna. I got, I I got, got some to, intel though. on one, but I gotta. I gotta look at it still. So there's a there's a boxing fight I'm involved with, but I, I think it's the Comey. And then uh, we got the PFL on Friday. Oh, and, uh, Butler! With, and you know what, Mike? I was gonna take Jimmy's Butler's two plus deals on the show. I wanted to make it official so bad, but every time I say it on a show, it never hits. But. Man, I wanted to take it. He had five steals. Oh, Jimmy, I was going to take five steals. I wasn't going to take five, but I would have took the two. Definitely. Well, you know Jimmy is going to come to play tonight playing in Philadelphia. You know, yeah, he's, playing against Philly. he's been hurt. Uh, Earl, uh, Nick. He's I always hurt. Nick, he's Nick always was saying that. hurt. Uh, he clearly was grimacing like two minutes into the game, and he's been holding Ooh. his – Knee sent the whole entire game. Tyler Hero Fuck with the, the three. Theatric. If you're hurt, stay home. Don't say that to Joel and B because I don't think he's anywhere close to hey, him. Two for ten yeah. from Joel three. Joel a gamer. There's no question. He wears his heart on his sleeve. Definitely a gamer. He hurt. Yeah. Joel and B's definitely hurt though. Like I, I, Garcia by KO. I think if Ryan Garcia wins, it's probably by decision at like plus nine hundred. Jimmy Butler hurt. But he out there Trap counts. I like Kobe White over two and a half threes, over 19 and a half points. And I took Busevic over 10 plus rebounds, plus two something. Same game parlay. Go get it. I'm like, riding with like uh, Kobe. Oh, shit. My bad, Mikey. I thought you were I like Kobe White over two and a half threes. It's plus money. I don't know what it is now, but you got the Rosen. He's going to draw some defense. That means they're going to be able to kick the ball back to. Our guy that's averaging 40% took seven free seven three attempts the last time they played each other. He's gonna go out there and figure it out. He's gonna get it. 40%. He's getting seven, eight tries. Let's go. I got a question. Do do books allow you to bet sweeps in a in a baseball series? Like you can bet the sweep? Yes. What books? DraftKings. Um... Oh, all the ones I can't do, right? Yeah, well, uh, well, you look at series betting, you can go look at series betting and then take a 4 0. That's a sweep. No, he's talking about baseball. No, I'm talking about baseball. It's three games, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. I can play that book. I think Mike is right, though. I, I think that's what adds, I think that's how you do it. It's not like it's listed as like, does this team sweep? It's usually will this team go 3 0 or 4 0. Okay, so I gotta dig into the, the props. Yeah, I would say yeah. um, Bet Online should have that, man. I'm on Bet Online right now. Let me look through Bet Online. Yeah, you should be Bet able online. to look at series pricing, is where I let's would do, imagine. I, let's do who do you think sweeps? Huh? Who do you think no, sweeps? No, I'm, I'm just talking about like if like I would have bet the Phillies to sweep the uh, Rockies. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I would have bet that yeah. before the series. But I the nice part about it. series betting is you can start middling too. If you have to, if you get to the end of a series where you know it's not going to happen, you can take a price the other way. I was thinking about doing that with uh, the playoffs this year in the NHL, picking the team I think is going to win the series, and then just evaluate it game by game, decide how I want to bet it. That's definitely going to compromise my future betting game. strategy. But what's that? That's a hell of an idea. I, I think that's a hell of an idea. I, from a uh, third-person perspective, I feel like NHL playoff hockey is probably the easiest to bet on out of all the playoff sports. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna, especially in the first round, are you gonna see an upset? And if you do, you think you can figure it out. But if you pick a team to win the series, it feels to me like you should be able to go in there and bet games along the way to try to make it work. I'll give respect to Nick, man screaming that Florida Panther shit, that whole entire Boston series. And uh, I might have cashed on game one, but I did not cash game seven. Uh, 
Shouts to Nick for beating hip to uh, the Florida Panthers. Because everybody was saying uh, they they won the President's Cup. There's no way they're going to beat Boston. And them boys All right. had that game. So, ticket. So who, who is – now the question is who is that series this year? What well, series? the Rangers won the President's Cup. but where, where, where we have the big upset like we had at the Florida Panthers last year over uh, the Boston Bruins. Give me the teams that's playing. Um. I'm, let me let me try to find the big dogs real quick. Let's say there's Vegas there, over Edmonton. That's that's Vegas? not a big dog. No, no. I, I think the only yeah, two that really like qualify. Two versus like, seven, isn't it? No, I'm talking about betting odds wise. Like wow. the the Panthers were like plus two fifty or three hundred to beat the Bruins last year. Is Tampa um, Bay favored over Florida? No. Okay. Um, I. I I, what I'm really looking at are the the big the big big dogs, which is either the Islanders at plus two eighty or the Capitals at plus three forty. I could definitely see the Capitals fuck around and get. Uh, uh, I see I, I see no the Capitals way. pushing it to six. I see the Rangers winning that series, but they push it to six. I think if there's I any it. team, I think if there's any team that's built for the playoffs that that can win at a big number like that, it's the Isles. Capitals would be lucky to win one game that series. Yeah, but I mean, I, we, so we, I, I remember people saying the Panthers would be lucky to win one game against the Bruins last year. Who are the Jets playing? Uh, Colorado, they're dogs. Oh, uh, I don't know. No. Avalanche minus one thirty-five in that series. I don't know, Mel. If there's two teams that I like in hockey that aren't named the Philadelphia Flyers, Colorado Avalanche, Edmonton Oilers, uh, they just score a lot of fucking goals whenever I watch them play. I like Edmonton this year. Uh, I was a big fade on Edmonton, but I saw that uh, McDavid got the 100 assists. I like the way they've changed their game plan. I like what they're doing. I like that they're getting other guys involved in the game. And it's a big role Fucking for McDavid. Zach Hyman has 50, uh, 50 goals. Holy oh, shit, guys. Shit. Just don't even don't even shoot the ball, kid. Just pass it. Jets you guys play. don't take that prop. I send it out. I feel like hey. What's up, Dave? What's up? Yeah, Tyler is. here on Embiid in, in a combined assist. What a crazy find, but how could you not take it? Come on. I didn't even under it. When you sent it to me, I was like, I was thinking in my head, I was like, how do, what, what basically it was Tyler Hero getting six or seven and Embiid getting three or four. That's, that's, that's what I was thinking. You know, that, that's exactly how it happened though. Cause yeah. when you sent it to me, I was like, it's Hero almost like, like, Hero it's over like you do this shit for a living or something, you know? No, Hero over four and a half assists was free money. That, yeah. cause he, he has to play the point guard role. They don't have a backup point guard. Exactly. And Embiid's known he can dish too. I mean, he's well. No Embiid just joker. gets the assist from being double teamed, so it just yeah. ends up being there. This is what's sweat, the play bro? in the next game, LJ? What's the play in the next game? I didn't. I, I, I didn't I, catch I, last call. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't play nothing in that game because I don't like that game. Oh shit! <laughs> the NBA guy doesn't have anything. I guess not. Not that one. I don't like the Hawks. Hawks money line. Hawks money line. Well, like that shit. Let's bet horses. Aussies, let's go. Fuck this game. Oh, my God. But this game was 88 in the fourth quarter. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? What's the team? Mel, you did, Mel's giving out some good stats. I will say that. Uh, Mel, that, that's definitely uh, – So, are you on the Coyotes or Edmonton game, Dave? No, no, I it's meaningless hockey today and tomorrow. But I will say this: I didn't know they're on TV. I went in to, to feed, feed Gramps. I didn't know, and this is deservedly so. No more hockey in the desert. Bye bye. You it's didn't know that? There. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, Utah. Well. You shouldn't have hockey in a place that doesn't rain. No, but Salt Lake City's fire, though, man. We're oh, talking about fine, that yeah. early. Like that's yeah. a fire. Shit, go to Salt the, Lake City. Uh, <laughs> the USA Development League has a hell of a circuit coming out of Arizona, too. The kids that are coming out of Arizona and Southern California are some dominant hockey players that you'll see in probably like 10 years. You're going to see that south southwestern quadrant of the U.S. Is, is, has a lot of hockey talent. Do you want to Do you want to know? Do you want to know? I'm going to tell you this. Being from Southern <laughs> California, being from places around me, not necessarily where I was, but that have money. 
those if, if if there's a sport that can be played, it doesn't matter if it makes sense to be there because hockey's an expensive sport. Those Richies will, and they'll instead of playing football or whatever, they'll go play hockey, and that's what's happening. They're getting some athletes. I'm scared to do this, but I have do to do this. Do it. I don't know how many more I could take, and it's not even like a. Uh, Oh, I'm getting lit and I feel drunk. No, it's more of a uh, brown liquor in the stomach. Just, just not conduce well. But cheers. Every TV timeout. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Last God. Last yes. I can't believe yeah. that Rocky's covered him. Did this guy just <laughs> hold his nose on camera? Did we just witness a whole noser on camera? I don't want to spell it, Brandon. <laughs> really? If I was at the bar, I would have spent a hundred dollars by now. A hold noser. That's so good. We we have we have uh we on this channel we have seen guys that chase their shit. That's a whole nother thing. But hey, I'd rather someone chase their shit than hold their fucking nose. Yeah. <laughs> but Mel, I will say, um, last evening. I was drinking out of spite of the Warriors, and uh, after I got done, I don't know what it was. I ate something, drank some water, and I was up until 7 o'clock in the morning capping games for today. It's called cocaine, like, Billy. Not <laughs> <laughs> that mic is uh, dashed in a very separate spot for the next Conor McGregor fight. I'm just playing. You never say never, right? <laughs> hey, each his own. You gotta do some. <laughs> Angels hit their team total. They need to hold on to win for the full game. Why I had two bets on the Angels, I don't know, but I did. So you follow the Angels, don't you? Yeah, I do. Oh, I do, but I, I also, I also, yeah, yeah. I, but Let me give I you a little a, nugget about yeah. the Angels. Go ahead. Well, it's like Trout, right? Mm -hmm. He hit a home run tonight, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I mentioned this to Mike on his show. He plays very well versus the Rays. Okay. But other than the Rays, when he hits a home run or gets two plus bases, fade him the next game. Oh, wow. That's, That's a, a good game. note. Right? Okay. All right. That but not against fair. the Rays, though. <laughs> because somewhere or another, he loves playing this team. He must have a little... Side piece, John, he got down there. Hey, that I don't know right. what it is, but look, I got it wrote down because I don't have – where's my other – oh, okay, I know it's right here. Uh, let me – let's get this accurate right quick because I tracked this shit the other day. Mel, you're selling me, and um, I haven't I haven't deep-dived into – I, I got to go – I got to go over to my buddy's house and talk to his dad. He's like a super big fucking hockey fan, does not sports bet, but he watches all the fucking hockey games, and he's usually the one that gets my hockey picks right. Uh, so I, I got to talk to I got to talk to my guy. Boom, Tampa yeah. Bay's bullpen, Delphic, is the worst in baseball. It has the highest ERA, and the Angels are averaging over four runs a game, and they also have been hitting right-handed pitching away very well. By the way, there was a 56-minute video that someone said all that that was posted last night. Go find it. 56 <laughs> so seconds. Does, 56 where seconds. Phillies, where does the Phillies rank in that bullpen? Because they I can tell you right now I have it open. Have yeah, it open. please. Please tell me. Dave, you know how to start off your next pick video? You should say. You're all a bunch it's of fucking idiots. It's only a minute idiots. long. I don't care if you're taking a shit. Tenth, or they're 10th. They're, they're good. 3.16. The 3.16 this season. Very – by the way, it's about time to start doing two weeks because there's more than two weeks into the season. Um, Nick yeah, likes a month, mean, whatever. Mean, I like two weeks. Mean, but um, Philly, Philly's above average, top third in the league, top third. Okay. Well, yeah, that number's good. skewed, though. When well, we have, what do you mean? When the game's skewed. close, when the game's really close, and it's like a one, one ball game or some shit like that, we always find a way to fuck it up. But when we have a – hefty lead usually what happened to lj usually doesn't happen like we usually don't give up five runs with like a four or five run lead but um they have a 230, 231 231 oba they've got a like about a 640 or a, i have to do the math but 640 or 650 ops they're they're above average they're above average so far 
How are the Heat running a 3-2 matchup zone in the year 2024? They're going to lose, too. They better fucking cover. Foul. Ooh. And one! Ew. Oh. I don't give a shit who wins. They just better fucking keep it. And shout out to Nasty Nate. Nasty Nate, I don't know why. If you ever meet Nate in person, you would think he would, he's one of the liveliest people ever. Granted, he smokes a lot of weed, but he's one of the liveliest people ever. But he never comes on panel. Shouts to Nasty Nate, man. Team total over 92. Cash it. Third quarter bet over. Cash it. Uh, Nasty Nate, I will say, I can't wait to spark one down with you. No ditty. Um, always love my uh, early morning sessions with the sunrise with my guy Nasty Nate. Wow, like that that was definitely no ditty. No ditty. I said no ditty prior to the statement, man. <laughs> just because you said it doesn't mean you can just keep going on it. <laughs> yeah, I want to fuck him in the ass, no homo. I want to lick lick his wiener, no homo. That doesn't work, okay? <laughs> I I wouldn't go that far. We we're smoking marijuana. And, I'm, uh, I'm making a point here. I'm being hyperbolic I'm for a reason. Yeah. You know, it's, it's this is online. This is online, not in real life. It's online. Have you ever heard that? It's online, online, not in real life. For legal reasons, it's a joke type of thing. Yeah. You haven't seen Ooh. that? Uh, Always sunny in Philadelphia. It's like online, online. That means it's fake. You can say anything you want, but it's online. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, they got the game locked up. You can't take shit. To be not honest even, with you, Nicholas Batum's bitching about the call, but that. Uh, to be honest with you, that call kind of benefited us because Tyler Hero had a clear three-point shot off of that screen. We're down to it, boys. 96-96. Maybe I'm not quite there, but not we're also Tyler looking at overtime go. in this NHL game here. We got ourselves uh, four to four. Oh. Turnover. Ooh. I will say, though, do not let Tyler Hero shoot a three-point shot fading off to his right. That shit's automatic every time. Oh, oh, you look. Oh, he got pushed. He definitely got pushed. And nine was, eight, baby. Don't go to Seven overtime. Sixers. Don't go to overtime. Go. Don't, go to overtime. don't go to overtime. Just end the game. Please go to overtime. Or you have the over I got ten. Game. I got ten to one on overtime. Oh. Uh, I, I wouldn't be mad at overtime just off of the fact that Nick said I'm taking ten to one on overtime and. It's Ooh. Mace. All right, all right. It can go to overtime. The, the, the fuck, Miami, nah. Miami's not going to lose. No, the fuck, fuck. You can't go to overtime. We got the under. We got the under? Okay, well, guess what? Let's all be selfish. Yeah, we don't need call you. I don't care. No overtime. 15 money line. We don't need overtime. Let's go. No. Kelly Oubre, man. Get him off the vet minimum. Get rid of Tobias and put money on Kelly Oubre, man. How is he? A vet minimum player on this basketball team, third in the team in scoring, is ridiculous. Yeah, well, I always bet his points, and he didn't. He's not anywhere near it. Thirteen and a half was was, was always near. Hey, it. One stop, one stop, D. Mel, you're still on the bets. Let's go, let's go, baby. Fuck me, man. TV time. Who was was going to do it under two. Holstrom. It was Holstrom. There's I a way this can go to overtime and hit the under and Miami can cover. No. There's definitely a way. No. no way. If this goes into overtime, the over is definitely. What do you want? Okay, okay, okay. I'll give you I'll give you, I'll give you 100 to 1 odds on a dollar, okay? You have to give me a dollar if if it goes to overtime and all that can happen. I'll give you a 100. Oh, you have to give me 100 if it happens. I'll give you a dollar if it doesn't happen. How about that? Well, we one. can spice it up a little bit, Dave. We'll do we'll do like a – do I have any – Angels, man. Right yes. We can do a shoey bet on it. I'm not. No, drinking out of a shoe is like I'll do a lot of nasty things. I'm not doing a. I'm not drinking out of a shoe. I did it. I back in the day for Pump Sports Fungus Radio. Fungus can grow in your stomach, bro. First, when we first started off, and we did not have Pumble Palooza for March Madness, and we used to have the 24 hour March Madness streams. I did three shoeys for a combination of Razor, K. Reed, and. I think Mel Gibson or something like that. They combined for a fifty dollar dono, and I did three shoeys, Dave. I'm not doing a shoey. I just got my gut biome on track. I'm eating probiotics. I'm fucking getting healthy. I'm not fucking taking a shoey. Then you shouldn't have to. Yeah, don't don't pressure me. You're grown uh, man. It's okay. Yeah, I do what I want. He already has to shave his eyebrows and his head. Don't make it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
I oh, wanted to do it today. Or, or, you should do a shoey while you're shaving your eyebrows. That would be pretty cool. I only have, yeah, I have three arms. I mean, <laughs> I wish I wish I was drunk and be drunk doing it, but I'm not. I'm gonna be completely sober. There's nothing wrong with being sober, man. No, 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 it's fine. Well, yeah, it's boring. No, but, but sometimes, depending well, on if you like, don't drink, just what life you live, live bro, baby. <laughs> I, I, depending I, I on what life you live, a sober's a new high. Like, whenever I wake up and I'm like, that was a sober's the new drunk. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> the over 196 in the half hits. It doesn't make sense, but to <laughs> me right now, it makes a lot of sense. I Shouts to Nick. You got the but, Tyler, Hi, bro, yeah. these cocksuckers aren't going to cover. What the fuck? They're going to cover. They're you know how the bookies do it. The Sixers money line wins, but the fucking Heat cover for the people that yeah, didn't want to pay the juice. I'll take my plus two fifteen. No, they're doing the foul fuckery thing right now. Yeah, let's go. Let's get the five and a half. Why not? Why can't to Nicholas Batum though? Nicholas Batum saved our ass tonight. I never thought those words would come out in a playoff game, but (laughs) (laughs) that's funny. Bro, how many quarter threes has he hit in the second half, man? He's been automatic. He's uh, I don't know when did NBA players start doing this because it used to only be done in college, but when you catch the ball. Uh, it's like the release point. You're catching it here, and you're just shooting. You're not lifting. You're not jumping. You're literally catching, and just ri- it's all in the wrist. And uh, you saw D'Angelo Russell. He's been doing that this year for the Lakers, and he's been shooting way better, just catching and flicking the wrist. Nothing with the legs, no fucking jumping, no fucking do-do-do. <laughs> Just all in the wrist, just catch and shoot at the launch pad, and you can't block it. You literally can't block it. It happens so fast, you can't block it. Flick of the wrist, flick of the wrist. Oh, this is a three slap of the base. Three point basketball game. Oh my god, can we walk out of Philadelphia with a fucking winning ticket today? Well, all I know is the Dallas Stars game, both teams are going to score in the first period. I agree. Yeah, it's going over. I'm on that. Well, I'm not. That's not my play. That's Mike. I tell plus one seventy. That's great. In a meaningless game that the stars aren't going to give a fuck about, and the Blues probably will care a little more. They're going to score in the first period. If, if are there implications at all for the stars with seeding? I don't think they care. Do they? I mean, hockey players don't care. They're just going to go fucking play one. That's the thing. One thing I like about hockey, Mike's right. The, everyone plays 100. percent It's 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 hockey none of the, playoff, the easiest playoff to cap. I'll tell you what you're not, you're not a hockey player that goes on the ice and thinks I don't need this. Like you're trying to produce every single you time. Think the stars the are. Mm, okay. I don't. I don't mean. Okay, that's not what I mean. I mean like um, the game. I'll tell you exactly how. Yeah. It's, no one's sitting well, out then. there going. Eh. I'm a I'm the left winger on the second line, and I'm thinking, oh, it doesn't matter what happens here. No fucking way. We're trying to produce. We're going down there. Maybe we're trying to control the puck a little more, but we want to catch. That's kind of what I mean. With the fucking goal. Less aggressive, I should say. Maybe that's what I mean. Or, or they're less worried. They're less worried um, about making a mistake if they go down, which actually would be the other way. I don't know. My, for, my me, for me, for meaning, me, meaningless hockey means overs. Okay. Tell me what those especially the line saw, and, which pisses me, me off because we saw this in the Toronto game. Me, if you're the, if you're in a playoff the, spot, are you really going to look to block a shot? Tell me the schematic. Tell me what how you would describe the breakdown that says we just don't care this shift. There's only a couple of things they're doing, right? They're trying Not behind the, the net set up for a goal attack the net everybody's dropping on the goal or kind of like an overall cycling type of approach one of three there's no option that says go sit on your ass in the offensive zone there's, it doesn't work like that Hockey's i can't believe i got through. into the playing duncan robinson on my daily fantasy lineup i got the notification no injury uh limit more of no minutes being played <laughs> was really the injury news update they should have gave out. But Kelly Oubre to the free throw line, the the stadium screaming, 
Batum, the whole entire fourth quarter. And Wells Fargo Center is at the liveliest that we have seen it since the debacle of the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> I know one thing. What up, Keith? The Minnesota Twins team total and the White Sox team total unders are like a cash cow right now. Even though it's probably juice, like minus 140. Like, I believe if it's hitting, who gives a fuck about the juice? If it's hitting, I mean, that's just me. Within, within reason, I, I, keep, I keep having somebody in my, my YouTube chat keep commenting every single time the Dodgers go over three and a half batters at minus like 240 in the first inning. I'm like, shut up. I do not care about your minus 240 props. Yeah, that's like, nice. I, I will know. say though, depending <laughs> on how you bet and what organization or league that you bet on, I feel like a lot of the times I end up taking chalkier bets in like NCAA basketball or something like that. And by the end of the week, the ROI evens itself out just off the plus money props that I end up cashing in like MMA. Like it's it's weird how like the math thing works. Like you give out like a Minus one, like the Sixers game, for example, I gave out minus 165 on the opener. Not the ideal line I like to give out for a bet, but, you know, see me Friday, PFL comes up, we'll cash the plus 700, and you can bitch about the minus fucking 165 from earlier the week later on, right? Like, uh, it's a numbers game. I mean, if you bet a certain amount of numbers throughout a week, it evens itself out, shockingly. Goddamn right it is, Billy. Oh, data. <laughs> that's what that's called. Not that ass, though, man. Like, whenever I do, like, the uh, – because I do the ROI after every week, I need to see uh, – it because it depends on, like, what your average line is and what your ROI is. It doesn't matter how many units you made or lost because you can say you made a certain amount of units, but if your ROI is, like, 2%, are you really making money? Like you're for every hundred dollars you're spending, you're only making eight dollars. So it's like when you do it the other way of like, if you can get that ROI up there, shit, man, that shit evens itself out. It evens out the uh, winning percentage thing later on. Like some people have crazy ROIs, but they're they're only maybe thirty percent correct in a week or something like that. But their ROI is like ten percent because everything that they're betting is plus money. I have more respect for people who bet plus money on everything and have a 50% uh, uh, correction thing than people who hit at 58%, but they lay minus 150s. I think it gives or take. You got to be a chameleon in this game is what I learned. Uh, if you're a chameleon and you kind of just move with the motions, uh, don't, the, the worst is when I hear a capper say, yeah, I like this team. I think they're going to win but I don't like the price tag. Do, do you really like it or not? Like, Well, no. The, uh, the, so, the other argument is, yeah, I like this team to win, but not at the percentage chance that the odds are recommending. Like if the team is minus 150, yeah, I like the team to win, but I only maybe like to win them, like them to win 57% of the time, and that's not worth the minus 150 price tag. That's what they're I talking agree. about rather than I, I think they could. Chicago Blackhawks were 0-12 this year. When they were getting three hundred or better, why are they fouling up by five? Because they, they go over, <laughs> and they want Dave to cover. Oh, let's go! Uh, <laughs> if I'm the over. Sixers, I'm fouling too. The last thing you need to have happen is Tyler Hero hit some fucking fadeaway bullshit. Oh, last back. night I didn't realize this because it was winter get out. I've never seen a tied game in hockey pull the goalie. It happened. That's how the Caps won. Yeah, the Caps won. I've hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's the call there, ref? Whoa. That was, was Hero shooting technical free throws. Because they wanted to go over. What happened, though? Like, how did Tyler Hero just magically just start? Batum, Batum oh, looks like a like foul. Like the oh, no fucking way yeah. this game went over by one point. They just hit a three for no fucking reason. Bro, that was <sighs> – Oh, they be active, bro. Like these players, they can. Nah, wow. he did. He did. He he was grabbing on them hips, though. Holy Man, he shit! Do all that, though. Wow. And hero hits the fucking three. Well, I couldn't feel worse. Because they didn't tie it, and we could have gone to overtime. Fuck it. This is the reason. That's why. so bad. That's Sometimes fun. you got to be a chameleon in this game. Dave cashes his plus five and a half. <laughs> 
And I cashed my Sixer money line tickets. It wasn't fucking pretty. It's not something I'm going to root about. But Sixers damn. plus 215, Billy. Let's go, baby. What did you I'm tell about that? Soccer. Let's go. Minus 165, minus 200, and minus 208. 208? Oh, that's <laughs> that's so, so that was so fucking dumb. Duh. They really what do they do? Make it and they don't have they have zero, zero time. Like you should have held the ball or or, or or I guess not. You do. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. That's fucking ridiculous. That is the definition of sports betting. You have to pay to play sometimes. And Bro. damn, if you had that Sixers minus five or my or whatever. Bro, you, all you, line, you sick right now, bro. Yeah, you you would be sick throwing up right now. <laughs> That's why I stayed off, man. That shit was too low. No, I had I had to go money line on it. Let's go. Wow. That that I needed that one. We're, we're getting to the uh That's we're getting stupid. to the book it. We're getting to book it fade trent mode there. Um it was one of those ones <laughs> where that Bill puts up an NBA play back to the other side for the last 24 hours. But uh feels good to be back in the wing column. I fucking needed that. Not the prettiest though. We'll make it up on Friday. Well I got I got the PFL card ready to go. Um, we're just waiting for uh, the domestic books to drop the props. Uh, but shouts to Dave. Dave, I think, was the only person on panel that had the plus five and a half. And uh, I think that's and the best the prop game. that no one took. No one took my prop, you motherfuckers. I couldn't find it. Hit in the third quarter. It was on, it was on FanDuel. Yeah, it was on the popular FanDuel. page. But Dave, when I clicked on FanDuel and I looked for that specific prop, that's how I ended up betting the bullshit fucking Tyrese uh, Maxey to assist Jamal and Pete. Well, that's your fault. <laughs> that's how I ended up getting locked into that one by accident. Not by accident, but thank you, fucking Jesus, the Sixers. All right, well, what? I have no bet in this next game. Zero. We're going to get Is a there- live line. In this game are there any pro- there's not even a prop I, there's not even a what player are you bat like who are you back i got you dave i got you listen to this one here Ooh. so with the injuries that happened with the hawks um they had to sign vitik krejic on a 10-day contract and his and they signed him for a double 10-day contract so he played for the hawks for the last month of the season he was their starting shooting guard he is out which leaves them with uh, Matthews, Bruno, and Kobe Buffon, and AJ Griffin, who will, who would be the backup to Bogdan Bogdanovich. He's their only bench wing player that's actually have seen the floor and has minutes. And the Bulls have allowed the most three points attempted uh, per game and are bottom 10 in catch and shoot three pointers. Garrison Matthews' point prop is at Four and a half at minus one twenty five. His three point prop is one and a half at plus one fifty, and over two and a half threes is plus four hundred. Garrison, how many minutes is he going to play? That's hard to tell. If His point hard. props four and a half. <laughs> Take it. That's like Kyle. Low- <laughs> Kyle Lowry was five and a half. I'm I like, agree, LJ. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Take it. Take it. Somebody who's gets fouled. Who's this it. fucking guy? What's his fucking name? Garrison it's Matthews. Billy, it's Billy Bench Briz, man. This guy comes in with these player props. The who does he back up? Like, who, who ever gets in foul trouble? Who, Bogdanovich. Who he, he's he's Bogdanovich. He's the third string. No, he's second string because you got to remember, LJ, with the injuries to the Sadiq Bay and stuff like that, Bogdanovich is in the starting lineup at small You're forward. Right. You're and right. DeAndre Hunter, who came off the bench damn near the right. whole entire year, is a starting I would take forward. They're I would take dead that. thin. They are dead thin at the forward positions. They have Islanders cash, boys. Islanders. I can't, I can't even get it because I can't open. I can't locate in Fanduel on this fucking offshore book. Because now, what about Vit? Who Rich, has that uh, I I saw it. I had a bet it on BetMGM in Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm not, not. I don't even know if I have money in MGM. Um. It's not a book I use. I don't mind. My what about habit. Vic Kregi for plus over four and a half at plus one forty six? Is he going to get any time at all? He's not on the active roster. Oh, why is he on a pro? Why is he full? Then what the fuck? That's why I said you're, you're I like every the fuck he's on here for. <laughs> no, you're you're he's not on the active roster. What are we talking about? 
I'll send you the uh, picture of the article about how the Hawks uh, couldn't keep Krejcik heading into the postseason. They signed him. They opted not to sign Vic Krejcik on a standard contract, which instead led him on a two-way deal back-to-back games. I mean, not back-to-back games, but back-to-back like contracts. So he's but he, he's there, but he can't sub in. Uh, where the fuck is he on her then? I hate this it's game. It's kind of like the Grizzlies. Like the Grizzlies had that problem. They had uh, the kid from the Mexican G League. He was like their leading scorer on the team the last week of the season. Both of his 10-day contracts ran out. They couldn't do anything. So they had to let him go. They, I think he's on the team, but I don't think he's like. Wait, hey, look. Is anyone on the Bulls? No. No. I got the Is Bulls. Anyone on the half. Hawks? No. I got the Bulls first half minus oh, one and a half. Man. Bulls full game minus three. All, All right, I'm betting. I'm in. betting the Bulls. Hawks plus three. And I like plus three. I did, I'm not fucking betting the Hawks. I like Atlanta, man, a lot, actually. I just okay. – I just after I looked at some of my stats from the last couple of years, though, uh, I'm – I went three straight up betting the 10 seed in the NBA playing tournament, so I need to stay the fuck off of that for a little bit. I bet the Hornets last year. I bet the – um, the fucking Thunder last year as well, and I bet the Warriors, and they're all – that's 0 and 3 off the 10 seed. So I need to stay the fuck off and bet a live line. Um, everything's locked up. I don't like how they're going straight into one game into another. Like, there's no like in between to like, maybe I just won money in my account and now I want to bet the whole Atlanta game. Like, shit. Hey, the Astros played McKenzie Gore on Friday, just so y'all know. Is that a good or a bad thing? I kind of like it. That's a great thing. He's a lefty. You saw what happened today. You saw what happened today, right? Yeah, Astros rip him up. Thank you. I I almost messed it. I was looking at that. You're done. Over one and a half bases versus a lefty. Just take it blindly. I can't to. take your. I've bet Jordan props three times a season so far, but haven't hit any of them. I'm off. Was it versus a lefty? No, but okay, yeah, then. No. that's what I'm telling you. It's specifics day versus a lefty. I'll mush it. I'll, I'll stay off. I'm gonna mush it. I no, Bet it Friday versus Mackenzie Gore. All right, I'm telling you, you're gonna thank me later. All right, we're off and running, ladies and gentlemen. We're off and running. Stars, let's go. Over one and a half. I'd right? almost rather now that I'd almost wa- rather watch that game, this NBA game, to the truth. Now that yeah, I'm not watching that game, Who I kind of want to watch the uh, Arizona Coyotes game. Um, I'm highly interested in uh, getting on that over before this. I'm game trying starts. to get on oh, that. No, the game FanDuel can't locate me. Bet Online has it locked up. You know what? It doesn't want me to bet. I just went two and zero oh in that other. I went two and zero oh in the Angels game. I went two and zero oh in the basketball game. I'm not gonna bet it. I'm just gonna sit on my fucking winnings. There you go. Enjoy your winnings, my friend. Yeah. Enjoy your winnings. Nick, I got a question for you. Am I have an answer? Arizona wins. Do they score a lot of goals, or is it gonna be a bullshit? Right, so over. Would like you- I said, meaning meaningless hockey games usually equal overs, and I'm mad I didn't grab the overs in the Islander game tonight and the Leafs game tonight. Uh, but I do have I, I I my only official play for this game is the Yotes plus 170. I got that last night. It's dropped all the way down like plus 145. Um, so. My question is, do I go team total? I don't care about the juice. I I, 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 I did because, uh, uh, what do you call it? Fanatics get, is giving like five boosts per day during these NBA playoffs. And I used it. I used one of them boosting the team total over three and a half for the um, the Yotes um, for this game, which uh, let me find the odds on that because it was like plus one. I think it was plus 160 before I boosted it. So I think it's like plus 176. I got uh, the team total over three and a half with them with something like that. Is this about to turn into a Arizona Coyotes Edmonton Oilers game that means nothing? 
stream because I, I, I for the oil for the Oilers it means nada. For the Yotes, it means everything. The Oilers yeah, are going to win. Game the stadium. Oh, it's the last man. game in the stadium, though, LJ, bro. They, they, it don't they, matter. They're going to spoil all bro. that shit, bro. They're going to because the reason why I say that Arizona just beat them like a couple games ago. Yeah. Mm. Who cares about all oh, this? Is, now, okay, I can see this happening. I can I can see this happening. Let's Maybe just say the Oilers put up a good effort early, and then the coach be like, "Okay, we're going to pull the starters." And let the second string come in, and maybe Arizona could take care advantage of the second string of the Oilers. But I don't know. I, I'm going to bet the Oilers because everybody's on the Coyotes, and I just want to be different. Wow, it's all the way down to 136 now. I got it 170 last night. Wow. Um, but um, I'm I'm I was I was thinking more if, if there's a team to bet in the first period, maybe under the uh, with all the energy in the building tonight. The the Yotes jump out early and they jump out to a, 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 a goal or two lead early, and then um and then Edmonton with their firepower takes over late. Uh, could be could a way you to see look a draw. I could very well see a draw. No three, way! Three. No way! Three three. That means the over doesn't hit. <laughs> yes it does. Yes it does. The over three plus three equals three plus three equals seven. Yes. It's six and a half. Yes. Because if it's 3-3 three, three going into overtime, somebody has to win. Yeah, that's the beauty of sports betting is 3 plus 3 equals 7. <laughs> so I got a question, though. So I'm thinking about the full game total over 6.5, but I also feel yeah. like the over 6.5, if that cashes, that probably means the Arizona Coyotes team total went over. So it's like yes. a yin yes, and a yes. yang. It's like a yin and a yang. Sorry, then I don't want to wait for the first period to be over because I could definitely see first goal goes in the back of the net in the first period and the line goes to fucking something ridiculous where you can't where the only bet would be the under. I cannot believe the Rockies covered the red line. I'm not gonna get over that. Like for real. You want to know something, LJ? If this makes you feel better, I bet a UFC prop last week. I skipped the money line yeah. and bet. Max Holloway by knockout in rounds two, three, or four. All right. But three, four, or five was the same exact odds at 12 to one odds. And he ends up knocking out Justin Gaethje with one second left. <laughs> that was, I, I, I actually, that was one of the first fights I watched in a very long time. <laughs> and and I, when I saw that, I'm like, like, I was gone. The inside the distance I had Holloway. Close. I had Holloway in that fight. So I was like, I'm, awesome. I was pissed. I had Holloway as, you know, like when you send out the picks and everyone says, hey, what do you have for every fight? Send out the picks. Max Holloway. People texted me. I like Justin Gaethje. I said, no, don't bet Justin Gaethje. Bet Max Holloway. And what did Billy's dumbass do? Oh, I didn't get the opening number of Max Holloway inside a distance. So let me get cute and bet a fucking knockout prop of rounds two, three, or four. And, of course, the fucking knockout happens with one second. One of the, that is the one, That's probably the worst loss beat. That I taken since last Saturday, I was like, "All right, we're gonna make this money back in uh, USFL." They were up by thirteen points with sixty seconds left. The Arlington Renegades were up by thir- uh, were up by thirteen points with sixty seconds left, and because of the fourth and twelve rule, uh, the fucking Houston. I forget what the uh, – not Houston. Uh, D.C. defenders scored a touchdown, hit the three-point conversion, got the fourth and 12, hit the three-point conversion, and won the football game. Uh, Down 13 uh, with fucking 50 seconds left, and they, they win the football game. Bullshit. I had Arlington money line at minus 125. Biggest bullshit I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> I, t- I, t- I put a small bet on this just to fuck around because we were talking about the over. We were talking about Arizona. So here's a small little same gamer with the first period over, full game over, Arizona money line and team total over. Keith put it in the chat. Knicks opened up minus three versus Philly. Um, and around this time of year, besides the playing games, I really bet series markets more than the actual games itself. Um, Philly versus the Knicks to win the series, wherever the fuck that number is, is probably going to be the one big bet I have on any of the series. Uh, for the NBA this season, um, Why? that's gonna be a that's gonna be a big boy bet. 
I do think the I do think the Sixers are alive in this series. I don't think the Sixers make it. To How the is Sixers. that the best bet? That that's shaky. Oh, the Knicks, bro. Who the who? who are like they putting in the series? Who the fuck are they putting on Joel and B, bro? Joel. The whole point is Joel and B crumbles in the playoffs. Doesn't it's not. On. It's not the point. The Knicks, bro, have no front court depth. They have no Julius Randle. They have Isaiah Hartenstein and Mitchell Robinson. Well, I'm they saying would, they probably win the series, but how is that like a confident, like a super confident bet? I don't know. That's it's plus money. It's plus. It's going to be plus money. Uh, You're not favored to win. The Knicks are favored to win the series. Oh, uh, like, I, I, I would. I don't. I see. I don't even know. I could. Here's the deal. I go game by game, but I still think. I'm wow. okay I still think Fine. I still think the Celtics come out of the East. Oh yeah, the Celtics are. Wow, that's a bold take. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, like, I think there's a better chance the Nuggets don't go to the to the to the finals than the Celtics don't go. Yeah. Statistically speaking, odds wise, that that checks out. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's that's not an obvious play. People are. I, I guarantee you, there are people out there. The it's pick one team that's for sure. To, that if you had to put all your money on it to go, they pick the fucking Nuggets. I pick the Celtics to go the, be the one team to go to the finals. Yeah, I would agree with you, bro. I, I would. I would think. I would be more shocked at anybody else winning the. I'm saying the NBA championship. If the Celtics yeah. don't win the NBA championship, I'd be shocked. I don't, and this is another thing. And this, I, I am from Southern California. I'm a Lakers fan, but you all know that I bet against them. I think the Lakers match up against the Nuggets uh, better than most teams. Oh, I disagree. Completely. I disagree completely. Right? Anthony Davis is probably. I can explain it. I mean, here's deal. the deal: no, not many teams can handle that. How many good players are on the court with the Nuggets? I think that there there are less holes with the Lakers. Than there are with other 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 players, and it all revolves around AD. Hmm. It all revolves around. Not I LeBron. agree. I agree. Uh, I yeah. actually think, really, real quick, real quick. When did the play-in tournament start? When when did they start doing that? Last year. Like, I don't Three, know. Like, no, it, it's yeah, been know, four years no, ago. No, no. <laughs> I, I graduated college in 2021, and that was the first year that they did it. We're in 23 years. Okay. Because my senior year of college was the first year that they did it, and the Pacers were in the playing tournament, and I lost a boatload of money. So, on so 20, 2021? Yep, 2021. Right after COVID? Yep, right after COVID. Because they got to make up that money that they lost during COVID. That's why they're having these extra games. And I'm not – there's no argument that the Nuggets are, almost, are, are really hard to beat. I'm saying you look at a roster – and you say every player is going to play to their 100% potential. The Lakers have a roster that matches up better than most teams against the Nuggets. D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell is the X factor. How and many other teams have a big with the, with, the, with, the, with the one of the with the very with the top tier? Anthony Davis at 100% is still a top tier post defender. And it's D'Angelo LeBron, Russell though. Okay, and LeBron James can guard anyone, including Joker. He can guard but, a super guard and he can guard a big. Jamal Murray can't average 20 plus points in a playoff series, and your counterintuitive can't even close the game. He's only averaging four points. Like Denver is too deep. Denver has too much. Uh, 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 I mean, think about it. You've got Joe. Okay, you got Joker. Okay, you're gonna put someone on Joker, right? Let's say LeBron chooses Gordon. Right? That's who we think he's gonna guard, right? Okay, Gordon. Then you have Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray. Who the fuck's gonna guard both of them? I Austin mean, Reeves was on. Okay, Michael and then you, and then you, let, let's the say that AD's top. out. You double team Joker, right? I mean, like AD. Oh, you know, Rui's in there now. Rui's in the starting lineup. He was coming okay. off the bench last year. I watched Jackson. What's his face? Um, what's Is? his last name? Yeah, yeah. I I see him he does not guard with a lick. He sits back and he lets. He's like this. Hey, he can score. You know, he can get you your 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 point prop, right? But he doesn't guard anyone. He's a good alley. You just throw them alley oops. Alley -oops, alley -oops yes. predict, Dave, what would you predict the series would be like? I I think I think it could easily go. I, I I'm gonna say this. I think it go. I think it goes six games and the Nuggets win. But I wouldn't be surprised if it goes all seven games. I think it goes five max. Mm -hmm. I agree with Dave. Nuggets and six is probably the spot on number. Yeah. You get everybody. And that's probably the that's probably the, the the most juiced bet. But I think it could go seven. Uh, I mean. 
here's the thing. People want to hate on the Lakers. And again, like I said, I am a fan, but I'm also realistic. I bet against them more this season than on them. The Lakers do the same thing every year. Also did a video about this, by the way, picks from Dave. The Lakers do the same thing. They they don't they play this they play that the the they feign the injury thing it's it's time it's time for AD and and LeBron to get their minutes sitting on the bench they don't give a fuck they squeak into the playoffs and then all of a sudden they win the first round you know they win the first round or they're in the fucking Western Conference Finals or they win the whole thing that's what they do every year I agree with you bro that, that, that like you're definitely speaking now the advantage the that they do have in my opinion. Is that they're getting the Nuggets early? Last year they got them in the Western Conference. When they're Finals. rolling, I said that to Billy. Billy was like, "They're going to lose because the winner no, of this game plays I the Nuggets." Said, and they're go play the- it would be yeah. an easier matchup to play the Oklahoma City Thunder, a team that you dominated okay. in the last two seasons. But my point was LJ's point. Do you oh, want to no. get the Nuggets right away, or do you want them when they're rolling? Yeah, I'm with you. That's the, that's what I would rip say. The Band-Aid off. Let's go, Darv. You know, Darvinham said. Uh, we ain't ducking no smoke, so uh, God bless you, bro. Not ducking smoke is going to get your ass a first-round exit this year. I mean, either way, they would have. I think Oklahoma City could have beat them. So no, the bro, the bro. Anthony Davis's matchup against Chet Holgram is way too. Chet Holgram cannot guard Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis's splits versus the Thunder. I'm with you. Year. I'm with you for sure on that. Um, anyone in the chat want to look up the odds of Nuggets and six? Just curious. Or Nuggets and five. Right nuggets and five. Nuggets and five? Or five nuggets to what? <laughs> can anyone find series to go? As I don't know if those are out yet in what book, but you've seen it. Series to go in their games. Like each, each yeah, they got them. Look, 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 the, yeah. nuggets, the Nuggets spread, Dave. Um not the spread, but series exact order. No. Um, what are we looking for? Score total games. I might be. I, I'm tempted to take bets in the chat, exact but games. we all know all, every time I do that, people welch. So the Nuggets to plus go two fifty is plus one ninety five, and six is plus what's plus two fifty? C Mac. What? Is- yeah, I got five to go. Fu- to, to end in five. Mm-hmm. Nuggets and focus five. line though. Circus is always going to give you a good series price. Or not yeah. Circus, but Vegas is always going to give you a good series price. Who on here is on the – likes the Suns? Against, who said that earlier? Was I like it you? Them. I like, you I like them. them. Why, why, is a six seed, why is a six seed favored over a three seed to win the series? It's true. I think they think – I mean, I just don't think defensively they're better um, – I'm going to ride the T-Wolves. I'm going to ride, I, you know, the better team overall. I mean, obviously you have Booker and Durant. I just think they're worn down. I don't buy them. And maybe they get them. But I think the price. I like Minnesota. I have to take the T-Wolves. I like game one for Minnesota pretty heavily. They're a pretty good uh, home team. Yeah. I'm on them. I don't buy the Suns late. Late uh, season, kind of getting together. I didn't see him play well all year, for the most part. Put you know a game together, four quarters, um, at all. So I don't buy it. If I lose that, I'm fine with it. I got to be on the T Wolves. Better be better to me. I gotta be. I'm on it. I'm on it, baby. I feel you. What? Uh. You can, that is crazy though, C Mac, that you do say that uh plus one ten on mm-hmm. the higher seed. It's usually like the other. And uh, um that's the I think that's the heart that in the Clippers Mavericks are the two hardest series to cap, in my opinion. If the Clippers win too, because I you go after the games with these series, Clippers win, I'm gonna be on the Mavs. You know they're they're the favorite in that series. It's minus one twenty five, uh, bait around there to start two, kind of the same thing. I think the Clippers so, get swept. They might, yeah. I mean, I like the Mavs. I'd love to see though the Clippers win game one, then I'll jump on them. You know the Mavs to get plus money. I'm just saying if the Mavs lose, I'll take them to I win the series. Yeah, I get you from a betting yeah. as, as the matchup. I love the Mavs. That's what I mean. I'm just if they lose game one, that's yeah, all. If they do, but yeah, I know. I I think it's the Mavs as well. Yeah, I, I, the I, I feel like if the if the, you had to give one X on the Mavs, 
it's their wing it's their wing slash perimeter defending exactly. yeah. going against Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. It's the all if these plan older is, guys are going. The no, game plan that every team should have with Luca is to blitz him. Double yes. team him. Get the ball out of his hands. Make somebody else do something. But how yep. long can you do that though? <laughs> That's the question. Because obviously Jason Kidd is going to have to figure something out for to you know free him up somehow. But I think that should be the initial plan. Double team yeah. him. Get it out of his hands because he, he he's going to light you up, man. He's he's proven it many of times. Yeah, he's just so good. He'll find <laughs> he's a way. Hard two point zero to me. The only thing different is he's not athletic. If Luca was athletic, he would just be another LeBron. Yeah, he's not a but he's athletic. But compared to LeBron, I get what you're saying. Yeah, that's a boy. He's kind of the white like, athletic. Yeah, I mean, he's still very boy. very good, but. But the vision, Freak on the, court, the vision on the court is just oh, yeah. incredible, man. It's crazy. For sure. Hey, we sweating this over over here in this Dallas Puck game. drop in Arizona. Puck drop in Arizona. I haven't, I haven't heard Mel ever say that. She's got Let's go Oilers. Nuggets. Let's go Oilers. Shock the world. Make Arizona cry. Did you did you bet the puck? Shock the world is a minus two hundred favorite. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> no, I par I parlayed with the uh, Dallas money line. Dallas money line, Edmonton's money line, plus two ten. I just want to be different. That's all. You wanted to be special. The Bulls up here. This is a suggestion to y'all. The Brewers play the Cardinals coming up this weekend, bro. The Brewers on the road versus their division is 18 and 11 in their last 29 road games, man. And not only that, if the Brewers lose in that series, take them the next game because they're the best team coming off a division loss. The Brewers, I'm telling you. Attract the Cardinals shit. are tough. I know they're horrible though, and they're horrible early in series. They're maybe they'll break out. They're due. The bats are just that's a that's a bad Cardinals team. That I you know for five hundred I think is just about max for them. Like if they were better than five hundred, I mean that'd be that'd be big for them because I they're rough right now. Goldschmidt's getting older. Arenado, they're just yeah, and they don't have the pitching either. <laughs> That's really it, though, Connor. Their pitching staff is uh, a <laughs> when you got Mikolas is one of the guys that you're really relying on. Could be a long season. Yeah, I like the Brew Crew this year a little bit from that. I like their offensive prospects that they uh, got. Uh, I think the kid's name is Chur Churio. Yeah. yeah, lead off batter. Yeah, yeah, that kid's fucking True. electric, man. And then they have the kid. I'm jacking up these names. Monstoro from last year. You got called up late in the season, like the last month of the career in the season. Christian Yelich has find his way back to swinging a bat effectively in a Brewers uniform, and uh, everybody else is. Yeah, they got Hoskins. They still have Adamas. You know, Contreras behind the dish. I wasn't too fond on them getting rid of Corbin Burns right really? before this started, but yeah. but they got rid of Corbin Burns and they've been better. <laughs> it seemed like it didn't matter. It's like they already knew what was up. But Baltimore is like, fuck yeah, Corbin Burns, best guy ever. And O's he, are stacked, dude. They're they are stacked. The O's are stacked offensively, but they're pitching. They play the Royals this weekend. Question mark. Yeah, that should be good. That should be a good series. Series. Okay. But yeah, I like the Orioles too. On the road, the Orioles, they're they money on the road, especially as a dog. You can't fuck with them. That lineup's just really good now. I mean, with these young guys and the guys that they have already. Yeah. You know, like Mount Castle, Sinter, Mullins, he had to walk off today. But Henderson, Rutschman. Go! And Holiday struggling. We got a goal. Arizona All right. Goal. Arizona goal. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Let's go. They're going to get four more, baby. Well, I don't know. Oilers are going to score a bunch, too. So, over is good. Oh, 
Let's go. Uh, that's a by number 38, Liam O'Brien. He shot the shit out of Did him. Austin Matthews get his uh, 70 goals? <laughs> no, he shot it at like 12 times. It's on goal, too. He was he fired from all over. <laughs> he finished with 69. Uh, boo, bummer. I, sh- I should have known better. DK gave me a boost for plus 125 for Matthews to score when he was minus 150 everywhere else. <laughs> Yeah, the, the DraftKings and FanDuel odds boost for like, <laughs> for just like death sentences. I've only made money on like two of them, and it was like a Sean O'Malley knockout, and it was like plus two hundred, and Bo Nickel by sub when he made his UFC debut. Those are the only times I've ever made money on those fucking odds boosts. <sighs> All right, I'm done with my notes. Yeah, you guys were hitting the NBA real quick is so, I think, open because you were talking about, Billy, we were yesterday. It's a little bit the change on the guard. LJ, you can handle everybody. So what are the older teams? I mean, the Mavs haven't got there yet and have it in the playoffs. And we have a team like the Suns and the Clippers with these older stars. And then we have the young teams like the T-Wolves that I'm going to and the Thunder. So – I love the West. I think. I mean, anything can happen. A little look, bit. Look, it's look at the Golden State Warriors. Which, that's what we're talking about. It's, I mean, yeah, they're, they're yeah, yeah. When we were going, yeah, for sure. Because believe it or not, Denver's wounded. Jamal Murray's not healthy. So yeah. if he can't finish the playoffs, you know, they're going to be down one man. So they're wounded. So if a team could take advantage of that in a matchup, you never yeah. know. I think Dallas can go, bro. If everything works out for them, I think they can go to the Western Conference Finals. I love the moves they made and the defensive schemes they've started. It. Exactly. Like we got to start playing this playoff. We can't just it can't be games in the one thirties like it yeah. was, you know first half of the year, and that was the first half of the year. But they need to get. I'm glad they started playing this style of basketball towards the end here, the last you know month, month and a half, because they're going to need to, you know, exactly. in crunch time. And we yeah, already know Luke's going to play with defense, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> you got to rely on other players. You see what I'm saying? To defend because he ain't playing. Kyrie yeah. ain't playing much defense either because they use all their energy on the offensive side. Mm-hmm. Yo, the Bulls are blowing these motherfuckers I was going to say, this game is as stupid as advertised. <laughs> it should be. I'm glad, I'm I'm glad I didn't bet it. I'm going to mark the fucking Hawks a loser. That was a stupid bet. No, Watch I'm the, just saying, man, that was the end of it. Watch they come back. All the playing games. That was not yeah, going to be What are they bet. live right now? Let me look at them live right now. What are Don't do terrible it. bet. No, nope, it's over. <laughs> Fucking 18 point game. Don't do it. I, I wonder why the NBA for me stands for no betting allowed. Actually, think about this, guys. They're plus 13 in, in a in a um no playoff. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's they over. get blown it's up at 20. They blow out, it's over. I'm with Nick, bro. The way this shit looks, bro. How are you pushing a, I think the value's on Chicago minus 12 and a half at that number. Like, what? No, I will never have a kid for that one. I'm saying, like, they're down by 20. I, I, I would need at least 15 plus points, and even then, maybe Atlanta. They, they did not come uh, up. Fuck this. I'm not betting it. That's what I say. LJ, you're down there in uh, Houston. Um, Do you have the. Uh, you're in Houston. The Red Owl tomorrow. The what? The Red Owl. Um, the team combat league. Uh, it's a fight no. card. No, I don't. I don't know. It ain't on my radar. <laughs> no. San Antonio Snipers versus the Houston Hitmen. What is that? Uh, it's like a. Uh, how do I even explain it? Like a <laughs> fight, like fighting teams and. Certain oh, is it the team fighting where it's like you get like a five on five MMA. Like, oh, uh, yeah, I've seen that before. Once, once you're down to one person, though, you're fucked. Uh, I, I, the only reason why I'm aware of it, there's uh, a crazy handle. Andre Yule is actually on the fight card tomorrow. Uh, is that like these YouTubes that I see from Russia where you have like a 500 pound guy fighting two little people? Like, no. Have you it's seen like that five on five fighting where you get squared up against one person? If you knock him out, you move over to the next person, you start. That sounds awful. Person. What, what are we until doing? eventually there's no more on one team left? I'd rather watch the WNBA. It's awesome, it's so good. 
Y'all oh, want to yeah. hear something crazy? What's up? Another story of my wife and that the wonderful days of being a principal at elementary school. Oh, here we go. I like this. So <laughs> one of the, some girls were staying after school and in the <laughs> bathroom having a fight club. And they were filming it on their phone. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, bro. I'm like, man, I cannot Shit's have your job. Huh? You got That's your dope that they filmed it. Because I remember when I was in middle school, that was like a huge thing. Uh like in gym class. World star. It, uh, it, people would go into the bathrooms <laughs> and no, they like, still do it. They they'd be scrapping. Like I'm uh, that was the first school fight I've ever gotten into. Uh Buddy, buddy got hit, and I, I stepped up for him, and I, I, I don't know how the fuck I came out of victorious in that one, but I feel like uh, usually if you're taking a fight, you should be taking the fight only because you know you're going to win. If you cannot win, you should talk yourself out of the fight. That's that's <laughs> a good strategy. Like, you should never take a fight that you're not 110% confident that you're about to knock this motherfucker out. But nowadays, bro, people know jiu-jitsu and shit like that. That nerdy dude might be a fucking black belt in jiu-jitsu for all the fuck you know. So I, I, I pick and choose my battles nowadays. Uh, I, I don't try to get in bar fights. Bar fights are the worst. The last thing I need to do is be caught drunk swinging fucking punches with somebody. <laughs> like, Right? It's too bad. I feel like I got a better chance of just choking somebody the fuck out drunk than actually swinging. <laughs> right. <laughs> Both like, y'all pass out. <laughs> yeah, rear naked choke. I'm like, squeeze. <laughs> just jump. I, I think about that shit sometimes. I'm like, man, if I ever get into one of these coveted bar fights, fuck the bullshit. I'm just going to go boom and get towards the back and just fucking choke until somebody says stop or I get bit. <laughs> Fix oh, wow. in, talk my way out of it. Hell, I'm gonna run my way out of it. Ah, I, I can run, but I can't. Um, I'm fast. It's just the, uh, the, the with the smoking and the and, and all the nicotine and the weed. Uh, my distance, I probably can't run more than two miles straight. Yeah, how I get winded walking up the stairs, so. There's the I first used to run over three miles. Ties it up. Twenty minutes. Edmonton ties it up. Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Why is he shaking his head? That's why I was confused. Why is he shaking his head like he's disappointed of scoring? Let's go. Two goals, baby. Yeah, there's the first period over. That's the first leg. We had the first period over. The full game over. Arizona team total over and Arizona money line. One for that league. team gamer. Who would ever think that the hockey game that means nothing in Arizona is way more entertaining? Oh, did that not that may not have gone in. I don't think it went in, bro. Because he was no, that was bar. That was bar. That's no goal. That's why he shook his head. No goal. He was shaking his head like what the fuck the whole entire time. That's why. That's why I was confused when you said there was a goal. I was like, what? I thought it was for a second. No goal. They waved it off. Nah, never mind. No first period over yet. We kind of need Edmonton to score because let's say if Arizona goes up by a certain amount of goals, like are they gonna care? Yes. Absolutely, Arizona cares. That's no, I'm saying them. I'm saying Edmonton. Like, let's say at, at the end of the second period, the score is three to one. Like the Oilers are probably just gonna chalk that shit up, right? They might. And that might lead to a 5-1 game or a 5-2 game, something like that. I'm nervous. I hate, I hate having an over bet and the fucking goal gets called back. Like, ah, that is like. Yeah, yeah. Well, you want you, yeah. I had that the other day um, uh, where I had the over six in that Nashville-Pittsburgh game. And not one but two goals were called back for Pittsburgh in the total pushed. Oh, what are we gonna bet in this stupid bet? What am I gonna bet for the rest of the night? I fucking I feel like I'm just throwing good money at bad. I want one every yeah, we're, we're, we're watching the most important game of the night. It's uh Arizona. 
and they're in Edmonton. <laughs> Fuck the NBA. Well, I mean, well, I'm just saying, like NBA, MLB, whatever. But, I mean, what do I want to take? Well, I have like five units. How, how about how about a live over four and a half? St. Louis and Dallas. No. Uh, I'm, that's the game I'm looking to attack. By the way, Mike, where are you? No goals in the first fucking period. It's abomination. Barney, the, the Hopkins Oilers. goal was taken back. That goal was taken back. What about the Oilers? What about the Oilers? LJ. Right? LJ? LJ. Plus. Hold on. He's the one that has to be there for. Yeah, the Coyotes care because it's their last game in Arizona and blibbity, blibbity, whatever the fuck. Arizona? Yeah. It's, it's a sellout crowd. Energy. Sellout? Yeah, sellout? all 3,000 3, seats. 5,000, yeah. <coughs> Sold Look. out crowd in Tempe, or uh, in, uh, not Tempe. All right, Tempe? Uh, wherever Arizona State Arizona is. Coyotes fans are just like Jacksonville Jaguar fans. They're not a thing. They're not real. They're like unicorns. They're like fucking Sasquatch. They're not real. No one cares. Don't disrespect the Jags and w- one of our uh, beloved chat members, Jacksonville. They're Zell. like Seahawk. They're like Seahawks fans before 2010. The they greatest didn't exist. Live, the, gra- the greatest live betting we've ever had in a single game that Jacksonville Jaguars had. Like, oh, LA it's the, LJ was games. here. He's like, I'm gonna fucking hit the wall, and he left, and then we all won. <laughs> Four interceptions. Yeah, we shouldn't bring it up. Four interceptions and a half. Four. That's just to show you right there. Sorry, Ramon. That just shows you the Chargers are one of the worst sports organizations in in, in sports history. Did you see? Did you see uh, fucking Harbro? He pulled a good one on him. He Rebecca. said, "I know these sanctions are coming. Let me get the fuck on out of here to Los Angeles." My man got an upgrade in a job and got paid more money, and now Michigan has the fucking sanctions for uh, something with the recruiting shit that they did. And the film that they were stealing, and um, they're they're taking a big hit of a suspension for a university for their football program. These he knew that was coming. He knew that. He knew that shit was coming. He got the fuck up on out of there, bro. Hell yeah! Same thing Pete Carroll did with USC. Yep. Pistol Pete. <laughs> Pistol Pete said, "I'm taking myself and these guns, and let me get the hell on out of here." The Hawks came back. We can think of a lot more coaches if we really dissected that. The Hawks came back. This is a nine-point basketball. I mean, granted, nine-point basketball game. They're on a nine-zero run to start off this quarter. No, it's still over. The game's still over. You don't know that. The three-point shot has made twenty-point leads evaporate. (laughs) You're definitely right, LJ. But I'm keeping an eye on that total. That total sitting at two thirty and a half. That's why I didn't want to crush that game. I, I thought the win total was connected towards who you think it was going to win, but if we can get like two thirty-five, I might bet the under. Bro, I cannot wait for Saturday, bro. I wish I could just wake up tomorrow and it'd be Saturday. Edmonton it's on the be power one of those play, weeks. bro. Saturday's going to be epic. Like I'm not going nowhere. I got my weed already. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to go nowhere. I'm going to be locked in here watching games all day. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that, LJ. I should definitely get That's why we need to do a, a set show. We should do a live set show, like two hours. Everybody come on. You know what I'm saying? Like I, that that's a good idea though, LJ. Like the uh Saturday, like maybe like like a little early afternoon pup John, have a little preview of all the games and strains. Yeah, I I'm gonna, I'm gonna be up already. I'm gonna be. I gotta do J Money show. I gotta do another show. So I'm already gonna be up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ready to go. Locked in. Not to gas you up. I love when you go on J Money show because it's a great dynamic of like you know we're getting the deep dive on the props and we're getting yeah. The- That's why he brought me on there because you yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I, I feel like the other people that he brings on, you know, not disrespecting their great captures in themselves, but you know the other prop guys are like. They give out shit that I can't bet right then and there. It'd be like, yeah, you know, I bet <laughs> one and a half threes at minus one twenty five. It's minus one sixty right now, but I still take it. Like it's just like, yeah, wow. 
<laughs> like, what am I, what am I going to do with that now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I hate that shit, though. Right? But hey, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, you know. The, but I, I feel like when you're when you're on a when you're on a picture, you gotta at least give out like you could note what line you got, but you gotta at least give out the current line so you know the people can bet it like justice for the service. <laughs> G Martinez. <laughs> You feel me though? Like, how many times have you seen that shit, bro? I see that shit in uh, MMA all the time, bro. People be like, uh, oh, we just got to update. Jimmy Butler expects to undergo an MRI on his knee. His bro, he hurt. He hurt. He's hurt, hurt. Or Chicago? Is, she, is Chicago or the Hawks make it to the playoffs? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I'm betting on another team. I'm betting the I'm betting the fucking Celtics 4-0 sweep at chalk money. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Watch. Hawks come back and win this game. They beat the Heat and they win in seven against Boston. I don't know about the seven, but that nah, if the Hawks get I don't think I want to bet the under anymore. It's 238 and a half. Because we've seen the Hawks beat the Celtics twice already. I kind of want to bet Atlanta, man. Like I, 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 I didn't think that they had a shot of coming back, but Dejounte Murray is playing amazing. He's got twenty-one points already. It's not even fucking way through the second quarter, and he's got ten points in this quarter already. And this is all why Trey Young's been on the bench for like the last two minutes. That's like, where he needs to be, bro. He needs to be on the bench. You, but you can't though with the depth issues that they have right now. I get that. You're right. The injuries. I get it. But he doesn't fit that team. He definitely doesn't fit. DeJounte as the starting point guard should, in theory, be better. But it wasn't like they were winning a whole lot of fucking games without him. So it's like, you know, the from a front office standpoint, you're like, everybody wants everybody wants you to be a starting point guard. I know one thing. One of them are not going to be there next year. They cannot play together. I'm telling you. One of them is going to be gone. Trey's gone. If Trey's smart, he should be gone gone out that door regardless of how you know regardless of what Atlanta does in the next couple of seasons Trey Young has better upside granted in the Western Conference he could be a third option in the West I agree 100% like even if he went you know we talked about San Antonio but even if he went to a team like I'm trying to think who who would have the money for Trey Young though. I gotta look at the West. Who would have the money to Trey Young if you went to the team like Utah? <laughs> you imagine <laughs> not ever. Uh, nah, Keontae Keontae is lock and loaded as their uh, point guard of the future. But if Trey could go to a team like Houston, no, we don't need him. Bro, Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet no. is not it. Fred Van Vliet is not we it. We don't need him. No, we good. We good with what we got. Freddie is not it, man. Freddie does not get buckets. Yes, he is, bro. We good with what we got, bro. We we but we probably need one more season vet, not necessarily a star, but a more seasoned vet. You know, that's been there, been around the league. But we straight, bro. Duh, Billy. I keep telling my friend about Cam Whitmore. Whitmore, bro. that's my noble boy. He is a monster, bro. Like, I've seen him live, bro. Like, he does not care who's guarding him. You could be the super, you could be the best superstar in the world. He's going to go at you, bro. You know he who it reminds me of, LJ? When uh, T-Mac played in Toronto, and you would see, like, man, yeah. this kid's got a lot of untapped potential. It's just... When it all comes together, man, he's gonna be on a roll, man. I, 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 I'm a big Nova guy. Nova is my favorite basketball team for college. That's where he went. Yeah, he, he played at Nova. Cam Whitmore, Cam Whitmore, okay. the kid. Like he, he, he's the definition of I could put the ball in the back of the basket. It doesn't matter no. who the fuck is guarding me. No, Whitmore is a dog. Like he's coming at you. He reminds me of Amari Stoudemire when Stoudemire first came in the league. He didn't care. Like, he'd dunk on anybody. Tim Duncan, you know, he didn't care. This is what Whitmore does, bro. He's coming to the lane and literally one. try to dunk on you. The guy the first, there's the first period over. 1-1 one, one now. 
They tied it? Yep. There we go. I had to turn the game off after that. <laughs> Who are we talking after about? Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Ended up betting the uh, over six and a half uh, reluctantly. Holy smokes. This is a lot. Of... Are we going wire to wire tomorrow for the Kings? I hate to say it. What's tomorrow? No, oh, Pelly's. Uh, I, I was, I, I, man. It could just be a fade the public spot. I got to I got to sleep on that a little. Is Zion hurt? Yeah, Zion's fucked up. Yeah, he they ain't winning. I yeah, I I Yeah, no Zion, there's no way they win. That's Friday though. You said tomorrow. Oh, that is Friday. It's oh. 19. You are correct. I was I was like, yeah, I'm taking a day off tomorrow. I knew I knew it was no game. But yeah, I don't think they can win without Zion. Yeah, the Kings Zion win put that up game. A 40 clip and they still lost. So the Kings get the A seed. They play who has the number one seed? Okay, see, uh, yeah, okay, okay see, right? Okay, yeah. C got the number one seed. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. I, didn't know that. That's why I said, I, I, I thought the Lakers slide in there, a team that you whooped their ass the last fucking yeah, two they do three that years. Number one seed. Anthony oh, Davis yeah. absolutely dominates the Oklahoma City Thunder. That would have that would have been a Lakers in six spot. Honestly, yeah. yeah I'm, I mean, honestly, if I'm Denver, I'm happy I got the Lakers. They own the Lakers. But, you know, being yeah. a competitive person, dog, you're not going to lose just to have a better advantage. You're going to win every – try to win every game. You can say yeah. that, man, but I don't know. <laughs> Especially if you're getting paid for it. like Yeah, but Darvingham sitting in the locker room last night with, you know, hands in his fucking pocket saying, we ain't ducking no smoke. Screams like the Lakers are about to get fucking smoked. No, nah, they could get one or two games versus Denver. They ain't gonna beat I, them though. I hope because I have never lost more money on. Basketball. Just take LeBron's assists, bro. That's all you need to do. Just take his nine plus assists and be done. <laughs> it's a I, I think thing. really that D'Angelo Russell factor. He can't have four points like he did last year. If he can score fifteen, that's true. Points in the series, that's a seven game ball. That's a seven game ball series right there. But it's asking for a lot. <laughs> All right, I'm out, man. My wife says bedtime, so I'm about to call it right. a night. Go Appreciate y'all. Us. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, man, let's do this Saturday thing, Billy. Get the gang together, bro. For okay, real. I'm gonna, hit up. I'm gonna hit up everyone and uh, give Jeff the notice. I actually didn't even give Jeff a notice today. I met the text him when I, when I got the shower. And uh, there you go, boom. Make it happen, bro. So we can be live at five on Saturday, bro. It's gonna be a beautiful thing, for real. But uh, I'll holler at y'all, man. Y'all be good. Yes, sir. LJ, catch him Saturday on what is it? NBA Talk with J Money. I think that's his YouTube channel. LJ would be on there Saturday. The public fix is in. Says Pelicans, um, Gerard Hernandez. He live bet the under three and a half on the Yotes team total. I don't know, man. The way in the game, it's it's very free flowing, right, Nick? Yeah. Like nobody's really playing defense. Everyone's kind of kind of around. All right, we need another goal in this Coyotes uh, game. I accidentally I thought it was period two. It's period one over two and a half goals, a plus one forty something. Um, we got five minutes to get another goal, so I misclicked. All right. Let's go. What? Yeah. Thought it was second second period, but you know what I missed though, Dave? Some big what? West basketball around this time. Yeah, and I miss sports basketball. We used to fucking just be betting on these uh, well, to me they're random, but I don't live on the West Coast. These random ass big West schools and end up UC being, Irvine's and the yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I see like, UC, Irvine versus UC Riverside right now. And you knew, and you knew that half the season that there would be on a Friday or Saturday night, there'd be there'd be basketball past midnight because you'd have Hawaii yeah. games. <laughs> how many fucking Hawaii games have we watched this year? Football and basketball. I can't tell you how many. I can't. T- there was a Saturday night where I'm I'm gonna uh, I won't say who, but there are two people that we know. What went all day long 
into the evening, watched the Hawaii game, then then played blackjack with each other over StreamYard until seven in the morning East Coast time. I, Hard I, pass. It's happened multiple times. Yeah. And that was that was just fueled by alcohol only. There wasn't anything, no funny business. I wish. Uh, when does when does the one of them come back from vacation? That's the one. That was the one that. Uh, uh, it's his honeymoon. It's like two weeks or something. A week. I don't know. Damn, man. Two weeks in like real life is really fast, but two weeks in like the streaming world feel like forever. Bro, life's going by too fast. I don't know. What do you mean? It's only really? April. <laughs> April 17th. March Madness just ended. I know. Actually, I'm 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 happy as a hog and shit. I, MLB is something I understand. MLB is something that that I make money at MLB. I mean, people people say NFL this, NBA that. I mean, go yeah, sure, go do that. Uh, and there's so much money to be made in MLB if you take your time. So much. Just like college yeah, basketball. But the MLB is like a never ending solving puzzle. Like you, you, uh, you, pick, you pick your niche. You pick your niche. You pick your teams. It's so you know. People say that in other sports, it's 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 more important in baseball than it is in any sport. You be a first five guy. You be sharp. Look at Sharpie. Be a Sharpie. Um, I don't do a lot of totals. I do. I pick certain teams. I stay away. Like the Brewers, I don't bet the Brewers. But um, I have my things, and I go. I I go in streaks. There's Nick remembers there was a streak last year where I did teams first five totals one and a half the shitty teams remember I pick all the shitty teams and I streak that I do team full game team totals which I'm on right now um, it, it's a streaky deal but you find your niche and you go with it. In See, I've I've been well, my because well, there's not a lot in the beginning of the season like the first few weeks or whatever there's not much statistics to go off of. I've been basing basically all my plays off the market right now. I'm up 22.26 units to start the year in baseball. Yeah, like, I've, I've been, I've been just following the market for most of these games, and it's been steering me in the right direction. That's crazy. Up 22 units this early in the season. Damn, and even though there was that amount of baseball being played. Uh, well, I, mean, I, I will say that. Yeah, 98, 98, 83, and 12, up 22.26 units. Baseball's been really good to me this year, I would say. Uh, I've had a couple hiccups in the last couple days, but other than that, man, you know how it is, bro. The first two weeks of the season, a bunch of big favorites end up cashing. So it's like – or I shouldn't say big favorites, like minus 130, minus 140s, minus 150s. Those are like the sweet spots in like the first two weeks. But now we're getting into like Sunday night baseball, Sunday dog day. There's nothing like betting a bunch of fucking dogs on a Sunday in baseball. See, the thing that has gotten me at least, I think, half the profit so far this year has been something I've been betting since the first game of the year, just fading the Marlins every game. I came into the season saying they were going to be a last-place baseball team. I've bet against them every single game. And the Dodger fade is actually, I think, up almost four units now. The Dodgers fade's working because they they're – they have really good hitters, but their pitching staff is still uh, – Their pitching is not good. They're, like, they're, they're like the Atlanta Braves. They're going to win games because of their hitting, not their pitching. Yeah, and this time of year right now is not really the type of time of year to really rely on your hitting depending on, like, weather situations and shit like that. Not a lot of places are good environments for hitting weather. It's like uh, ballpark – what is it called? Ballpark uh, – what's that website called? Ballpark. Pal. Park, pal, it shows you all like the weather and what it means they for have the total. To, you have to have like an account for it now. That costs money. Ballpark, that's pal. crazy. They, they they finally. I used it all last year for weather and stuff like that. I don't use it anymore because well, I can't. I'm not going to pay for it. How much is it? I don't know. I didn't even look because it just in order for me to sign up for make an account, I had to put in my credit card information. I'm like, I'm good. Oh uh, yeah, I don't, when once I have to start putting the credit card information, it's like, uh, why can't you just take it out of my PayPal? I'll I'll, I'll rip out some money out of my PayPal account. Fuck it, because I uh, I keep my bank account separate from my sports betting, but my PayPal account is really my sports betting account. I would say, if that makes sense. Like whenever I withdraw on a sports book, I just withdraw it to my PayPal. 
I have it set up. I have my sports book set up to my legal sports book set up to uh, my bank account. It's been so easy to pull money. The one thing I didn't like was um, something happened with me and DraftKings like five, six years ago. And back in the day, this is when you can put your credit card on sports books. And uh, you're telling a fucking kid you can put a credit card on a sports book. I'm going to run it up. And yeah, uh, I, I think something. See, that's something that's was, that's the one thing I didn't do because I, I knew that was a problem back when I would when I first started with Bovada is I put my credit card in with Bovada and then you run up your credit card and shit like that. I put it for my my debit or my, my uh, debit card. So I can't I can only put in so much. Um and the way I do it is actually I have a spreadsheet of how much each book has because I have seven different books now and it got legal. And I will have it so where if I put money into one book, I pull from another. Smart. So, oh, let's just say today ESPN bet has a lot better odds than FanDuel does. I'll pull money from FanDuel and put it in the ESPN bet to make bets. Stuff it's like usually that. the promos, though. Like I got an email from ESPN bet today. They were doing – Tell me, isn't this fucking crazy, Dave? Cash back for uh, bets on the NBA tonight. I was like, damn, I, I wish I could cash out these fucking fan All back. these books are trying hard. So I I opened up a 365 account because they can't. I'm going slow. Like, I'm going slow. But um, the next one's ESPN bet. They've got the bet five bucks, get 150. Um, yeah. Uh, free well, they, $200. They also got a, uh, yeah, they also had a promo for me when they first signed up. It was a 200% um, deposit match. And, and when you make bets, it would give you like cash back type of thing. The other one's Fanatics. They do $100. Fanatics free. is awesome. I love that's Fanatics. Cool. So that's next for me too because it's $100 a day for 10 days. Yes. Also, with, yeah, I, I ran and, – and for me, that was all through March Madness. And yeah. one thing that was really cool with Fanatics – and I, and makes me want to bet on fanatics more, which apparently their 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 product is working. Then is every bet you make, you get you get credits, which you can use for the fanatics website. So I can make bets, yeah, and then I get credits. Oh, there's a really cool hat. There's a really cool jersey. Yeah. Flip does that, man. Flip. That's how I got fucking hooked on. Flip. What? Um, I'm kicking you myself. Bet. I didn't take one thirty total over in this game i was looking at it and take it but um for the fanatics can you can you do that bet is that any bet can you do that on parlays and, and all that because i'm thinking about doing if you have a hundred dollar risk-free bet for 10 days take 10 big shots of parlays i mean why wouldn't you do that and then it's risk-free i was doing that bet. a lot with uh with yeah during march madness yeah wow i did that the other day uh they gave me a ten dollar free bet on FanDuel, and i threw a seven leg parlay together and I turned ten, the ten dollar free bet into eight hundred and twelve dollars. Damn. Well, yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was the other day. The final leg was the Padres against the Dodgers on Sunday Night Baseball. Well, even if you didn't go that crazy, even if you took, um, if you if you took two dogs, two did, did they not? Oh, oh, time don't expired. Do that, Nick. No time don't expired. That, they Nick. scored. All right. Well, that was a misclick. That's real nice, Dave. Idiot. I think he scored, but it was after the, the period ended. The book showing it. All right, so. Yeah, he scored, but it, uh, the period already ended. The period yeah. two total, yeah. two and a half plus money. Are they going to score three goals in the second this period? This game was a dead no. fucking over, bro. 67 to 73 at halftime. I feel like just off the total alone, man, Atlanta might be live, bro, to, to win this shit outright, bro. I, I Ah, I don't want to do it because as soon as I do it, they'll start getting blown out. But the fact that Atlanta's down by six and there's almost damn near as many points that were scored in the first game already in the first half, that I think that game style really benefits Atlanta more than it does Chicago. Chicago's a dog shit three point shooting team this year. Can this Oilers Coyotes game have three goals in the second period? Yes, I can. You need a lot of shit to happen, though. Gun, gun, gun near, gun near your head. You have to choose whether it goes under or over. Three goals. What do you choose? Over. Two and a half or three. 
Two and a half. Yeah. No, well, yeah, two and a half over under. I like the over for this game, so I'm gonna say the over. Yeah. Okay. Well, here we go. That that that. If this period was a, a second and a half longer, it'd be two one yards right now. Well, then Dave wouldn't have made a mistake, wouldn't you? Two fifty and a half total. Oh my god. How many points is too many points? Like, damn, bro, two fifty is a lot of fun. It's oh, well. a basketball game, man. All right, Mel. I took it. I already took it. So whether I mean, I, your opinion Was matters. Even like, odds or plus money? Plus one twenty-eight. Yeah, I think that's a good risk at plus one twenty-eight. That's what I think so too. That's the only reason why I looked at it. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't take that and would lay juice for that. What is both teams to score in the second period? I don't have so here's the problem. I'm on I'm on the I'm on a river on the border of Nevada and Arizona, so it's I can't geolocate for any of those books. I have to use offshore books here because Nevada doesn't have FanDuel, and that's where it's picking up my fo- my fucking phone from. So um, I don't have that bet on the book that I have open. Let's take a look. When I go down the street, which is literally like 800 yards on the street where I live, it's uh, it's fine. I'm not Mel. Mel, fine, great. I, care about I don't bet future. Guess what? The people that bet futures go bet them. Keep reloading your bankroll. Do all that. I worry about today, and that's done me just fine for almost ten years. I like playoff futures though. If I can bet a future, I, I, I like I like series props. Those are yeah. those are. It's a seven day future. I like, bet that wins, Mel. I bet that wins. I'm not betting that. I bet that wins. That's a good. Point. I like the futures that don't last long, and I don't have to fucking look at it in my active bet account. Like a, a week is a week to two weeks is about a max I can really wait on a future, unless it's like. Mm, I can't handle it. I can't handle ten days. I can't even handle betting a golf on Thursday and waiting until Sunday. Second period, both teams to score even money. See, my bet's better. <laughs> Why? Because it's more plus monies. Yeah, plus but this could, be, this could be 1-1 one, one and mine's a winner, yours is a loser. Yeah, it, it could be 3-0 oh and mine's a winner and yours is a loser. Very well. Neener, 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 cat's got your wiener, okay? That is very true. You guys do make uh, very compelling cases. We, yeah. <laughs> we should both be lawyers. Over two goals at minus one fifty-five and under two and a half at minus one. Yeah, I don't want to lay the. Ju- I want. I want some plus money. So I, I'm already up to not taking some chances. Let's go. Let's go. It's been a good night so far. You know your Instagram algorithm is right when your feed is one of two things. Sports and big boobs. You know you're doing things that's right. Well, that's my algorithm. We're and in- occasionally there's a there's a mumble wrapper in there, but I tend not to click on those because then you know I get too many of those suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan Kelly has definitely never click on a pregnant pictures. Really. You want advice from Dave? Last night, it's all you young people, lower your standards. Tonight, here's a life ha- a life hack. On social media, do not click on any sort of Instagram or anything um, that is or YouTube that is pregnant women. You want to know why? Your feed will be loaded with gross shit. Do not do it because it can't, it, it thinks that you're a pregnant woman. And it'll be all it'll be all just gr- just fucking babies with crust on them because they just came out. Like, don't do it. Where'd he go? Uh, pregnant women. Uh, that's not yeah. something. I'm I, grabbing uh, a snack real quick. Oh, <laughs> I like the word snack. <laughs> uh, Dejounte Murray over live, buddy gave it out. I don't blame you. I'm sweating this Garrison Matthew prop at four and a half points. He hit one three pointer in the first half, so um, theoretically he's halfway there. Because if he hits another three pointer, we cash the one and a half threes and the right point prop. There. Oh, 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 we're living on a pair. 
I, do do I start pouring up the alcohol for the hockey thing, or is that? Uh, not- I don't, I'm a bad person to ask right now in my life. I'm, I, but I'm saying like the. Yeah, I say do whatever you want to do. That's why I say. I just, uh, but I did just eat an edible, so maybe I should. You're all, you're, you're whatever. Oh, that's another thing. I'm considering starting to smoke again, but um, but the problem is, it's not because I don't want to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that I don't want to. It's that I um, it affects me weirdly. So I've been looking into like the terpenes and stuff that are good for what I have the issue and not, and. I ran into this guy that's it's a small, very small dispensary, but a good one. I heard they're giving out five thousand dollars in some sort of raffle or something on four twenty, and there's not many people that go, so I might just go for that and check it out. Like, Dave, uh, if I'm not to be mistaken, did, did I feel like Indica would be your Indica is the better one. It's a better choice, and also um, lin, 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 linalneal or linalol or something. It's in basil and stuff. It's it's basically it's for people when they smoke they get panic attacks, which happens. I would used to smoke a ton back in the day, but also this was 15 years ago, so um, it's scientific now and stronger. So every, every bud tender I've gone to doesn't know what they're talking about, but I, I got, I got keyed in on a Reddit, um, subreddit that I, I've been reading that's legitimate and these guys know what they're talking about. And so I think I'm going to try the one hitter thing is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, I would go one hitter. The one hitters no. are, uh, shit. Yeah. But, uh, we'll see. But anyway, it's five. I think it's a sign. Cause I ran into this guy at circle cam. Like, Oh, I saw, I was, I was just, um, looking at your place and he's like yeah we're we're giving out five thousand dollars on 420 i said well fuck, that's on saturday i might as well go all right <laughs> yeah and they're running deals i mean by the way what's crazy to me was i was looking at prices and this is because i don't know back in the day uh, for, for like this is like when california just got its cards um if you wanted street stuff like it was fifty dollars an eighth now you can get twenty dollar eights or more like 3.5 grams for 20 bucks. That's cheap as fuck. And it's better weed. Yeah, man. And it's better weed. I can't even believe that. Back in the day, it was a lot. I mean, we were selling, we were selling joints of shake, which you don't even know. I'm not even sure you know what shake is. Shake was the leaves and stems that was in the bottom and the key from the bottom of the bag. We'd put it in grinders and grind it into dust and roll joints and sell them to uh freshmen for ten dollars a joint. And we paid eighty dollars for the ounce of shake. We made fucking Anyway, ounce of shake that I, I know that I, you know yeah. the uh, you know like the people that grow weed and shit like that they yeah. sell trim as shake yeah, yeah. but this Great. guy didn't sift out the keef that's that's the stuff and then we make butter and make this ridiculous fucking baked goods anyway that was old Dave Dave doesn't done that one but I I want it you know what I want it is because at night I can chill out and I don't have to like have a cocktail I can have a fucking puff and just fucking. Chihuahua. And I, I think though, I think this uh, the actual rolling, not, not rolling it, but I love rolling joints, bro. I love it. I used better to than I don't like fucking edibles, bro. I just got a really good deal on that. Edibles I, fuck I, edibles me up. Are, I don't like edibles. Uh, my metabolism's really low, so edibles just fucking like I ate maybe this much of the edible. Yeah. And fucked up this morning bro i had to go i had to go back to sleep man i woke up at like 11 30 but granted i went to sleep at like 7 a.m you know what i heard is you know how like weed like all the uppers like meth and coke and all those they're out of your system in a day or two or like three days but we can stay in your system for weeks i heard that people because it's 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 fat insoluble it sticks to your fat the people that lose weight or skinny people will take will pop longer than fat people um, because it, it, it stays in your fat. It doesn't come out in the piss. So if you're fatter, that's what I heard someone told me, but that makes no, sense. That seems about right. Cause when, yeah. um, when I, uh, a long, long time ago when I was an athlete and, you know, drug test shit comes up or something yeah. like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really have to detox. I would just not have to smoke for that weekend and just keep on doing what I was doing. I, I do agree with the the fatter you are, the more it probably does stay in your system because, like, I feel like athletes and shit like that. They no, what I'm that- saying is it doesn't piss out. It stays in your body. It doesn't come out in your piss. Skinnier people are the ones that p- take longer. to. It's, it's, it's counterintuitive. But anyway, I don't know if that's true. Some guy told me. <laughs> I would think he wouldn't tell you if it wasn't true. 
Well, th- this guy. Well, everything you read on this the internet. This guy's a very medium. I read that on the internet. <laughs> no, I wasn't doing read on the internet, dude. <laughs> everything you read on the internet, it's got to be true, right? It was from Google. I read it on the internet. <laughs> It's like the news, man. I, I don't know how you guys are with the news, but um, I believe only about 30% of the news shit that I see. It's like they pick no and- goals in this Blues Blues Stars game. Are we going to eventually pop the – we should we thinking about popping the over in that one too? Pass. Yeah. Pass. Mr. Over. Over three and a half? Nah, that is a pass. We're gonna we're gonna hope uh, Connor McDavid scores fucking fourteen goals in the second second. Uh, actually, no, the other one. Who's a who's a fucking Vamelka? Why is that the? That's only Coyote. I know who's their fucking who's their yeah they, they're their fucking guy that's always on. He's always on the TV because they play Coyotes games here. Not anymore. Coy- Coyotes games won't be blacked out. Not that I care. But the night. I mean, it's kind of lit that they're going to Salt. Like city, I feel like anytime that a hockey team has an expansion team, it brings a lot more uh, energy and life. It to makes sense to be in a Rocky Mountain state where it's cold. Here's the deal: you should not have. I don't think you should. Arizona's have a being a team again in like five years. You know that, right? That was part of the agreement with Barry. No, I didn't uh, know that. Barry Barry the, the Coyotes will be returning in about five to seven years. Are they? What are yeah, they they'll... calling the team in Utah? The Coyotes? They have Coyotes nope. in Utah. Nope. Um, the Utah team. We don't know the name yet, but. We know it won't be Utah. I bet it has to do with something with bees or something because they have beehives on They're all. They're gonna of let their the city pick, land. right? That, that's what so. they usually do. They usually let like the people of the city pick. They usually give them like three options, uh, unless you're. Get, hey, if it gets this joke, get this joke. It should be the Utah City Soakers. Look up soaking. Look up soaking. Soaking. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be something I don't want to look at. No, no, no! Look up Mormon soaking. They're gonna. It's gonna be the Utah City, the uh, Utah City, the Salt Lake City soakers. That would be perfect. Mormon soaking. This yeah. seems like I should not be. What the fuck? The church it's a, doing it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a round. It's a it's a roundabout way of of being able to do something without doing something because you're not doing a certain motion. Well, it oh, says BYU. I'm reading an article. It says BYU students are soaking it up loopholes at the Scarlet. In other yep, words, it's a loophole is when blah 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 chills in the blah 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 without yep. any movement, without no thrusting, movement, no without thrusting, thrusting. and yep. no orgasms, as stated. And here's the- even creepier: there are people that it's it's legal. It's it's this is the loophole too to have someone behind you moving your hips for you as long as you're not doing it isn't that weird so you're soaking right you're sitting there the the fucking the the pole is in the pond right or the lines in the pond the bait is the beta you know the fucking and and then there's someone behind you moving you that's a thing or sh- moving the bed i think that's, i've heard of that before that to me is crazier than actually having sex that's crazy that's insane to me like at that point, bro, uh, that, that's the type of shit where religion goes too far. People okay, think they're so Salt Lake City soakers. Isn't that a good? That's a pretty good one. Come on, I, 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 I think that I think that is a good one. Like yeah. it's, it's catchy. You wouldn't know it unless you really know. No, what would be the emblem? Or what would be the, the logo? It has to just be like SLC. It can't be like a. Like, It'd have to be like a mascot of a wave, with like it could be like a fa- a ball a ball that's like more of like a phallic symbol because it's stretched out because it's speeding going into a fucking hoop. I don't know. I thought Mormons, Mormons can have uh, the beach. beehole. Yeah. yeah. It, I don't know, man. I'm not Mormon. I don't know. I just heard about it. I, I, I'm i I'm not Mormon. Hey, hey, I'm not. I'm, I, you know what? I shouldn't be doing that. This is, pre- this is prejudice. For all our Mormon fans out there, I'm sorry. I'm just having a good time. You can make fun of Catholics or whatever else. I'm, um, I wonder what it's going to be. The seagulls, because you know gulls are the state bird, so maybe it's the seagulls. I bet you it's the seagull or the gulls. Just the I, gulls. I, I, I kind, I kind of want it to be like the Salt Lake City Yetis or something like that. That'd be cool. The, the, the yeah, the Yetis, the Yetis, that, the, the that rivalry is. between the Yetis and the Kraken, the Sasquatches, or when the Coyotes come back, the, the Yetis versus the Yotes. 
Yeah, and, and and when they come back, it will be the Arizona Coyotes again. Really? Yeah, that's that was part of the agreement in Salt Lake City is not going to be the Coyotes because that's still the owner of uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Wow, the Hawks are within three points. Game's over. I think the Damn. Hawks might win. What are you saying? Don't that? give me any hope, please. But I don't need any hope. I remember I said pre-flop, I think the total's connected towards the win condition. If this, if the Bulls win, it should go way under. If the Hawks yeah. win, it should go way over. And right now, the total's telling me it's way over. So, yeah, yeah. the Hawks are going to win. Like, I, it was not my uh, first period after the first. Maybe that first quarter line was correct. Plus 12 and a half looked like free money. Minus 105 plus 12 and a half. And... I didn't take it. I, I I've been I've been having a hard time. I would say this last month of the season, really gauging out live lines for NBA because of how we were doing it in college basketball. And, you know, like we we're making so much money on live lines in college basketball that when the NBA season kind of really took realm of being the main focus i haven't adjusted well um so i haven't really been betting too many live totals unless it's like an eye test like something like the sixers game where they can't hit a shot in the first half and their third quarter total is like below 30 points like that's just an eye testing i've been doing pretty well with nba totals what live yeah recently um, I should have taken – I was staring at 129 and a half forever when I was off screen coming back on for that – for this game for the first half, and it soared over. Um, I was st- fucking looking at it and looking at it, and I'm like, 130, that's that's a lot for one. But uh, totally I was crazy. actually – originally in like the first quarter, I was thinking 235 would be the threshold where I would start leaning towards an under and then – as I was watching it, I was like, yeah, this ain't no, this ain't no fucking under game. Like uh, these boys are, you know, putting their heart out on the line. Uh, I think all the playing games besides <laughs> the Colton state warriors have been really entertaining. Yeah. 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 I, I'd say so too. Um, team total. Oh, the hot, let's see. That's the thing. That's the bet. Team total on the Hawks. Team total 121 and a half. It's juiced to all high hell. But what is that? It's 50 more, 50 more points in in 20 minutes, 21 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's 122 and a half. I kind of like the fourth quarter over, uh, depending on how the third goes. Like maybe they slow down a little bit. Both teams are going to be competitive in the fourth. Maybe you get a couple. Because I feel like that Heat Sixers game was a dead fucking under and then. Because the Sixers came back, that fourth quarter went way over the third and the fourth. 122 and a half. When I, is this going to go down? I think I'm going to take it right now. Take it. No, it went up to 123. Nope, 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 nope. FanDuel's got 122 and a half for the Hawks. I can't, I can't geolocate on FanDuel. It's killing me. Um, it's, it's, I'm it's right on the board. Liter, liter, literally, Billy, I am on the, I am, I could throw, I'm in, I could throw a baseball over the river into another state right now. So um, that's that's the can't geolocate me. Even on Wi-Fi, I can't. I don't know what the deal is. I was going to say, FanDuel's got one of the uh, – I would say the one thing about FanDuel, they have the best priority of market pricing and a really good live betting market. That would be the biggest – W, I would say, fan. I started. I started betting live betting with them more. I love, um, and I like bet online because I. The more you bet, the, they give you. They just give you money. money uh, it's, yeah. it's appears, but but FanDuel, the even though I don't like the, these boosts and only let me bet twenty five dollars and stuff, but they they do have their live their live betting is my favorite. It is is my favorite. The worst might be bet three sixty five, bro. That should be bet three sixty five sucks Hard live. Bet online just too. One twenty four. Go down. The fuck? All right, the this is gonna be the down. smallest of smidge edge of a alcoholic shot because we need a goal in Edmonton and Arizona right now. Yeah, we sure uh, as fuck do. I know the period just started, but 
you know, it really should be two to one right now, Edmonton. That uh one shot like barely snipped the top of the fucking crossbar, but it hit it. Or did they call that the crossbar in hockey? Yeah. I, I was gonna say that's usually a soccer term. The post and the crossbar, don't they? Aren't they hockey people? Well, post is definitely a hockey word. Yeah. Crossbar is definitely a soccer word. I think, what do they call the top of the fucking net in, in hockey? They have to call it a crossbar, right? Uh, uh, Mel, yes? Yeah. She said now they know. grade out the team totals. These fucking bastards. All right, whatever. Bro, they know what's up, man. They don't... Uh, the bookies have, I feel like, have gotten hit harder on live betting than they have pre-flop betting nowadays. Like, you have the jabronis that want to just fucking start slamming fucking four units on a live line or some shit like that. I I, I haven't really dug into it because I don't really bet that much live unless, like, I see it or I'm trying to make my money back. But I wonder, what are the live betting limits on like certain books like 20 i see sometimes i see it depends on the bet sometimes they limit me to a hundred dollars on some and sometimes it's like 10 grand it's just depends on what the bet is the one bet i couldn't do was um what was the bet i had to keep, keep doing 25 dollars it was a um i don't remember keith what's the Keith is trying to do the series betting. Uh, FanDuel has all that shit. They have like damn near 15 different markets for just the series alone. Like you could bet how the series is going to go, who's going to win the game. Like if you like Minnesota game one, you can bet them game one. You Like if the combination, anything that you can think of, you can damn near bet it on that fucking app. Uh, so God bless them. Uh, not a sponsor of the channel though. <laughs> Bet online is though. Shouts to bet online. Because I was actually looking at that, Keith, when C Mac was talking about the Suns and Timberwolves. Is this really gonna be one both teams in the 120s? That's what it looks like, though, bro. Like I I 77 to 81, like uh, that I would have been under. <laughs> like this shit's good. This is this is the over of overs. This is like uh, remember, I think it was second month of the season. The NBA it was like two. Every game was going over. They started doing like two fifties and two forties and shit like that. Oh, delayed penalty. They're fighting. They're fighting um, in Arizona. I think this third quarter goes under. Actually. I think the third. I, I think the third quarter goes under, meaning I think the fourth quarter goes over fifty three. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bet I'm gonna slam this third quarter on minus one thirty nine. It was a minus one twenty. Fuck it, I'll take it. Fifty six. That means they got to score for five points a minute. They go over. If they don't do five points a minute. They won't. Would you get fifty six? I didn't. I didn't bet it yet. Um, Fanduel's got. 55 at minus 140 juice towards the over. I have 56 juice. Like, man, I can't I fucking hate betting this. This I wish I was on Fandle. Um, 56 at 116. So now, now I can take it. Um, I still let, remember the first round was five games with Tumbo upsetting the Sonics, the Super Sonics. That that's a franchise that should they should bring back. I, I fucked with the Seattle Super Sonics. That was a lit franchise. Basketball in that area hits differently. Did they give me what I wanted? Maybe I should turn off this hockey game real quick and then go. Yeah, they did. I'm under 56 and a half minus 114. I got it in right when it – oh, I actually got a good – oh, okay. All right. Let's watch that die and burn like this fucking hockey bet. Does someone have a power play in that game? Somebody, I believe, does have a power play because there is the penalty that they were about to start fighting. Uh, Edmonton has a power play. Yeah. <laughs> Let's score. Uh, I need to go on points bet here. Uh, that sucks because in New Jersey, 
Fanatics is still called points bet because they haven't about, switched no, over. No, yet. no, 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 no. Remember those I'm going games? in. I'm going, I'm going in on this. I, I think uh, I think I'm going to get a live bet on this NBA game. What do you get going in it? What are you going in? Ah, do I do it? Atlanta. All right, fine. Uh, just, uh, but it's one of those ones where I think I have like 30 bucks in bonus bets. Like, you know, like the reward bullshit that they give you. Yeah. For like betting across. Nah, I'm going to chill out on it. I shouldn't do it. I shouldn't do it. Live bet Dallas and or draw. They need one point to clinch the West. Where's Dallas? I would at? say bet. I would I I would say bet Mel's bets. I just mush them all. Mm. I'm nervous. I don't like betting third periods unless I'm taking the minus one and a half at plus money. Um but you're right though, Mel. Under three and a half, minus 172. The plus one and a half and they don't really want you to bet the Dallas Stars. <laughs> yeah, no, but Dave, you're right though. This Edmonton, Arizona game scaring me a little bit. Um uh it was a little it looked very free flowing, but it ain't as free flowing as it once was. I, I hate those third periods where you need like three to four goals in the fourth in the third period, and you're like, ah, and you're hoping for an empty net and shit. What are you guys thinking about live here on this basketball game? Because um, I have an itch for one more bet. I got an itch for one more bet, and they just fell 1-0. They must get one point. But what happens if they don't get one point? Do they not make the playoffs? You got to, like, edge I'm, I'm uh, Dallas, I, I'm, I'm not. Oh, no, 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 no. They make the playoffs regardless, but they get some seed, some fucking seed, different seed or whatever. I walk 500 miles to give you my seed. Oh, that's lit. I didn't know uh, FanDuel has a ESPN Plus deal with the hockey. I can watch the hockey game on my sports book. I have, was, ESPN, I have ESPN Plus, so we can. I have ESPN Plus, but I got this basketball game on the screen. They lose the number one seed. They lose the number one seed. Who would they? Uh, they got too many questions and not enough answers. They got a lot of questions. Did is it set up where they they're ducking the smoke, or it doesn't really not matter who the fuck they play? They're probably going to beat them. I'm I'm not I'm not I'm the wrong person to ask. I'm also the wrong person to bet no goals in fucking eight minutes. This is stupid. Ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. The over has gone down to five and a half, juice towards the over. I'm just glad I, I, I can't complain too much. It's like if you're going to bet something wrong, at least it's better odds than betting a minus from 52. Yeah, I'm just giving the money back, though. Um, we might as well. Now it's up to 59 and a half. Great. Great. We're just giving money back. Just give it back. Let's win one of these. We're going to win one of them. That's all All you need is uh, All you need is one. Love. I don't get the numbers. 38, don't 20. That's really not correct. Yeah, I'm fucked. I shouldn't have taken that bet under 56 and a half. Why, why would I think that it was going to slow down? Why would I think that the Oilers and Coyotes in a game where they don't give a fuck about wouldn't go over? Looks like we're all going to need to get one goal in the second period. Not you, you damn fucking right, bro. I, I, I don't know what. I don't know what happened though. Like it looks so. Watching yeah. the first eight minutes of the first period, nobody was playing any fucking defense. And then watching the second period, 
it feels like nobody really wants to be there. Yeah. What a fucking joke. Quarters on market. The other option was the Hawks over one. Where are they at now? 124 and a half. It was 122 and a half. And that was 128 and a half for the Bulls. Juice to the under. Where's we'll see. Number? What which number? Um the live one right now. I know what number you got. For what? The third quarter? It's gone. It's gone now. 59 and a half. Uh, they got they got there's got to be no scoring for like 45 seconds for me to even have a chance and in the next whatever home team 131 we got to get three goals in 10 minutes 12 minutes fixes in we're we're in trouble no sweat goals will come best of luck fellas thank you fixing i i need that little positive energy mel says she's got the plus 227 on arizona minus one took a shot yeah it, it it kind of felt like it was one of those ones where, like, if you're going to bet something, like, I, I, I end up doing this in baseball a lot, actually, um, with, like, an underdog. A lot of the times that I bet an underdog in baseball in the money line, I usually take them on the run line, too, like, minus one and a half or some shit like that for a sprinkle. Because if I'm going to win, I'm probably going to, like, one of those ones. Like, if it's going to win, it's probably going to win, win. Like, if I'm going to lose, I'm probably going to lose, lose. Like it's not I even thought we had time. NBA tomorrow. We don't have NBA tomorrow. Ooh. We don't have NBA tomorrow. We have nothing on the slate tomorrow besides a bunch of fucking baseball games, which I'm not complaining about at yeah. all. Get me wrong. I guess we're not streaming tomorrow then. I thought there was – oh, there's not even a bunch of baseball games. One, two, three, four, five games. Yeah, it's a uh, dead slate tomorrow. Tomorrow is a uh, get, your, get your life together for the weekend. And there's, meaning, and there's meaningless hockey too, I think, tomorrow. In my opinion, bro, the most interesting games on the slate tomorrow is the fucking uh, Europe uh, with it, the Champions League Cup and soccer. Like, eh, all those lines are damn near pickums. What do we got? Who's pitching tomorrow? Canning is a fade. Come to my ear. I'm not. I'm not. Night, Madidi. Thank you for joining us. I'm sorry for jacking up your name. Um, Carrasco. Who? Uh, is Puke really pitching tomorrow, or is he just yeah, scheduled? Puke is, well, it's uh, it's as probable on ESPN. I, I'm not looking at Roto Wire or anywhere. Um, uh, I feel like the Cubs at minus one forty eight is. Uh, yeah, it's a little juicy, but I I mean that's that's I would I mean I love that bet. The fucking Cubs are five and one at home, and Puke sucks. Um. And you would probably take a, uh, the minus one line or whatever if you wanted to get even on each his own. Yeah, um, I'd I can I'd 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 even run line. I'd run line. I'd that's something I think I think that's what I'm going to do is run line that one. Cookie Carrasco's ERA is low, but I want to fucking fade him. I like favorites tomorrow. I like the Red Sox. I like the Cubs. I like the Giants. It's Logan Webb at home. Um, Problem is the price is horrible, and I don't bet. I like Arizona. Rarely do I ever bet run lines with the Giants. They're not a team that blows teams out. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. I kind of like Arizona, and I like Tampa Bay tomorrow too. Even though I bet the Angels, I mean, I really like all favorites tomorrow. So, that. Well, what about the uh, first game, one o'clock game, Pepio versus Canning? That's a. Uh, I I would fade Canning. Canning's one of the worst pitchers this year. It sucks. I was gonna say like, um. I'm shocked he's not already bullpen or some shit like that. Like Griffin Canning has looked like dog shit. Pepio, Pepio is like the people that are fans of the Rays are telling me that he's good. They didn't score in the past minute. I said it. It's down to fifty six and a half. Sorry to interrupt you. Anyway, Pep, here's Pep, 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 Pepio. Yeah, I have a sip of Diet Coke. Um. Uh. What was I going to say? Pepiet was whatever with the Dodgers, but Canning has just been so bad this year. And I know it's a small sample size, but – and and this there are better games to bet because that one's minus 155, I think I saw. I can open it again. But uh, um, I'm actually interested in the over eight and a half. It's in Tampa. Um, 
totals for the games tomorrow. I don't know if the totals open. Um, yeah, but that's wild though. Eight and a half in the, in the trop. It's not like it's some type of weather condition. Uh, Tampa Bay none, has been... none of the totals stand out to me. I could I could do some team totals, but none of the totals. I mean, none of these pitching. I mean, one over in five straight games. Yeah, well, here's another thing too. The Rays bullpen sucks. So, um, in the Rays bullpen sucks. All man. all last five games in the trap have gone way over, like not even close. And that's got to be like the only dome stadium on the slate tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't. None of the not a talk to the Oh shit! Hold on, I gotta answer this. I'm with you, Dave. I'm not really a total guy. Uh, Mel says two very important games tomorrow with Vegas and L.A. That will decide the three seed and who stays in the Pacific bracket, not meaningless hockey. Uh, is that a night game? L.A. Yeah, and Vegas. Both of those games are at night. All right, I'm back. Um. Yeah, I just don't like, you like parlay it. You know me, I love me a hockey. I'm not team. doing no. I'm not doing. I didn't realize there's no NBA tomorrow. I'm not doing a stream tomorrow. There's five bas- There's five baseball games. As much as you want to, I mean, I don't think that the games are very meaningful. The NHL. There's there's seed jockeying, but it's not it's not a day I want to stream. If I if I don't have to stream when there's when there's nothing important going on, I'm not going to. Now I'm going to stream the fuck out of Friday. Man, we made some good money last Friday with the PFL yeah. going on during the sports, bro. We were it was like uh celebration video. I'm gonna stream over at my, my place tomorrow, but I don't know if I can. We'll, we'll see what or on Friday, not tomorrow. Um the bracket. Uh yeah, well, can we do the can oh we, yeah, the bracket is the is the is there fuck. By the way, Mike was drunk when he said that, and he he's going to set it up, but I knew that I'd have to do it. There's nothing – oh, we'll do it on Friday. There's no there's no hockey on Friday. We'll do it on Friday. Friday. Yep, Friday. We'll do it. I don't know. I, I'm not planning for it. I'll, it'll be between – it'll be between 645 and midnight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Picks from Dave Channel, YouTube. I agree with you, Gerardo. That's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow is uh, really, really putting my foot down into uh, some research and grinding out some uh, last little film. Um, but uh, Gerardo, did you see that video I sent you? Uh, the plays I was looking at was, um, you yeah, know, since you guys are fam here at Pup Sports Radio, I was looking at Bubba Jenkins on the Shit. money line. That line's kind of got away. Um, Tyler Diamond, I was looking at as an underdog at plus 145. And then I was looking at a three leg parlay of uh, Ramazan, um, Brandon Lofnane, and Thad Jean. That's so crazy. They don't score, they don't score a point in one minute, then they score 12 points in two minutes. That's crazy. Dude, the three pointers in this game have been. It's ridiculous. insane. That's what they're just. It's bam, 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 and, and fucking. They didn't score nothing in one minute and then fucking six points a minute for two minutes. So we got to get – we're fucked. We're I'll fucked. give credit to the Bulls, bro. It's the best – this is the best shooting performance I've seen from the fucking Bulls all season, bro. 103 points in the third quarter for the Chicago Bulls. What is life? If the Bulls are hitting shots like this, I might be betting Chicago in Miami. Especially if Jimmy Butler is getting an et- – depending on what this Jimmy Butler MRI news comes out tomorrow afternoon when he comes back from the doctors, I, it's crazy that the whole entire world is waiting for MRI news. But um, if Jimmy Butler is not ready to go and he looked like he was fucked up in that basketball game, hence why the Sixers came back, um, whoever wins this game – I'm gonna be probably betting against the Heat. I I don't think this Miami shit's the same anymore, bro. Like them being like, you know, I think it's a changing of the guard type of thing. Like Miami has a lot of injuries that they haven't been able to overcome, bro. Delon Wright was their backup point guard tonight, bro. Like the fuck out of here, bro. Delon Wright hasn't played.
playing be- meaningful basketball since like fucking college. Do they not want to shoot the fucking puck? There's only been 23 shots. This is supposed to be crazy game. The Oilers have only taken 14 shots. And the Coyotes on 11. This is stupid. Boo. I <laughs> know, right? Boo. How does this game how does this game slow down and then they make 15 fucking threes in the next last two minutes? All right. Well. Do we keep betting? I don't know what we keep doing. We're up. We're stumbling up a bunch. And my live units are nothing compared a fraction of my other units. But but that's the way you should do it, though. You should yeah, use people, live betting as a help. not. A and change. they just fouled him shooting a three, which stops the clock and lets him score. The fuck. The absolute what the fuck. All right. Now I'm angry. Now I'm going to bet angry. This fucking pisses me off. There's no, nothing worse than angry, me. Dave. That's not, that's not conducive. No, it's been good in my life. I'm going to do it. Fuck them, that's why. Fucking assholes. Stupid motherfucking assholes. Three free points and stops the clock, which kills my bet. There has to be no more scoring for a minute, and that's not going to happen. This game's unbettable, though, because the, the Hawks aren't coming back. Ah, yeah, but... I think we're going to be able to maybe squeeze out something on the total. Shouts to Gerardo, though. He said team total under three and a half for the Yotes, and that looks like free money right now. Yeah, that was the way everyone's saying that was an over. I was hyped when we got uh, – the well, the one goal got called back, but it was like two goals in like two minutes. It was like, all right, bet. We're on the right side. Like, And now it's like, eh, I should have learned when Dave Portnight and them – uh, for hockey con, they all bet the fucking over in the Arizona game, and they all lost money. I don't know, that was the lesson learned there. You just don't bet overs in Arizona. I'm glad that fucking. I'm glad that team is moving out, bro. Fuck Arizona Coyotes. That is That's never bad. It makes me stupid. Let me see. One ninety-seven. Let's see. There's gonna be no reason. This is the thing. I know it seems crazy. So, like, they're only going to need – they're going to need less than 60 points to hit their t- the live total over. Um, and that's, doesn't see, that seems – like they've, that's 62, 78, and right now it's 57. They're going to be over 60. But when you're down 20 points – You're going to shoot a lot of threes. Well, they are, but that just means they can miss them too. That's the whole thing. Um, yeah. The the yin and the yang to it. I think we if we don't get a goal within the last six minutes, that bet is dead. <laughs> no, the bet's already the bet's way dead. It's my, my bet. There's Matthews though over four and a half. He's got the layup. We're rolling. We're rolling. Garrison Matthew made the two free throws and we're rolling, baby. Over four and a half points. He only needed nine minutes, but he got the job done. Bro, the, the Hawks just don't have enough wing depth. Uh they yeah, Krejci, Krejci can't play. So you go from a guy that was in your starting lineup playing 25-plus minutes for the last month of the season, and now he's not in the playoff team. Um, shouts to Garrison Matthews. More tattoos than jump shots. <laughs> I can't believe they were saying Billy Donovan was even entertaining the Kentucky job. Bro, why the fuck would you ever leave? NBA to go back to college. When, that, yeah, when does yeah. that ever work out? Not, not, yeah, that's not not football. Football, they do that shit. Well, football. Yeah, now football, you're right. That does work in uh, football. Oh, Garrison Matthews for three. Over one and a half threes. Come on. Jeez. It nailing it. We need one more three from Garrison Matthews to hit the plus 400 for over two and a half threes. What a stupid – do I even want to – I might just shut this Eight down. Eight-point game here, and I don't 
think the live line is correct. Or, no, this is not an eight-point game. What am I saying? Uh, plus 15? That was the number I said that would bait me in the bet in the fucking Hawks. Do I take the 15? No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Uh, Benfica and Milan first half draw tomorrow. What's the uh first half draw or what's the first half under goals in that one? Yeah, you know how Milan likes to play. Milan's not really a uh go out there and let's go score a bunch of fucking goals anymore. That's not really Milan's game anymore. I was looking at some of the games. Um, I was looking at Leverkusen over West Ham at minus 115 at 3 o'clock. And I was looking at Atlanta versus Liverpool over two and a half goals, both teams to score as a parlay. Um, I bet Atlanta – when did I bet Atlanta? I bet Atlanta minus one at minus 150. Talk about worst beats ever. Uh, this was – Tuesday or Monday? Uh, Tuesday, I believe. Or no, it was Monday. They were up at 2 0 at halftime against a bottom three Serie A league that's probably going to get delegated. And they end up drawing in the second half, two to two. And, and it was the biggest bullshit ever. I'll say one thing of watching Atlanta play their defense is dog shit. And Liverpool is in a position where they're going to need to uh, score a certain amount of goals to advance. So um, both teams to score over two and a half. It's probably chalk to the fucking gazelles, but I'm taking it. Uh, let me look. Yeah. What B they scored? It gives a fuck. There's not enough time to hit the bet. Congratulations, all you people that took the Yotes. 2-1 Yotes? Yeah, there's got there's got to be two more goals. We have four minutes and fifty five seconds. Well, I got the anything first. can happen, but in fact, let's should we bet the the star? I don't know. Are we just throwing throwing money, good money, and bad? No, 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 no. Well, actually, I can't say no because we don't have shit to bet on tomorrow. So I do. I bet a lot of baseball tomorrow. Um, I'm probably gonna bet one baseball game tomorrow. One of uh, I'm eyeing up the over in in the trap, and I'm eyeing up fading AJ Puke. Yeah. Um, you know what? Fuck it. No, maybe not. Maybe so. Let's see. Let's do this. Burp, 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 burp. Let's go here. Let's go here. Corners over ten and a half. Uh, Philly Eagle Flyer, is there like a uh, – I've always wanted to research this a little bit more. Is there like a website or maybe a podcast or a Twitter account or something, an Instagram account that have like good information on like uh, corners for the season? Because that's one stat that I can't find in soccer too much is uh, what a team – Mel, you think the stars win, Mel? Mel thinks the stars win. Wasn't she saying that? She said the stars and the kings both have to win tomorrow for something. And I asked her. Well, there's how much time's left in the in that game? Seventeen minutes. Am I seeing that right? That's and the that's stars are right. plus. The stars are plus one fifty two. That's the bet. Stars, money line, plus 152. Let's go. The under three and a half is at minus 250. That's nutty. 
Yeah. It's two to one favorite. So I would have to. So in a way, I'm rooting for the over. So I need Edmonton to score in the beginning of the third period. But an empty netter. I don't think I don't even think a couple empty netters would even help us out. Yeah, we need Edmonton to score. Well, what do you, what's what do you what you have what total do you, what do you have? Over six and a half in that. Uh, yeah, you need um, a miracle. Yeah, the Yotes team. It's, it's gone. It's gone so slow. I mean, there could there could be four goals in the third third period, but it's just. I mean, I don't know. They're not. They're supposed to go out and shoot the fucking lights out. I mean, there's been. I guess there's been more shots recently, but 15 shots to 17. That's not crazy. That's not what this game was supposed to be. It was supposed to be, from what I heard, supposed to be. Oh, the 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 coyote, coyotes are angry that they're not going to be there, and the fans are here, and blah blah. They don't give a fuck about that. They're they're going to. You're going to place the Arizona Coyote games. I mean, it was sold out though tonight. But I animal- bet the stars, Mel. I just bet them. Plus 152. Keith said Hawks plus 17 and a half, minus 102. Good. Uh, Go for it. I, yeah, that's about that's about the threshold number I would be looking for. Um I might be gambling here, but I kind of want like within 20 points, like 19 and a half, 20 and a half would be like if I had to pick a number that I feel comfortable with. Yeah, they're not going to do that though. Plus eighteen and a half is already minus one seventy eight. They're not doing that. I would need like a quick couple threes here from the Bulls, but I can't believe the Sixers came back and won that game, though, man. Jimmy Butler must really be hurt. I could turn this game on. I think. Do I do, do I have it? I know I have that channel. I just don't know that it's on TNT, the hockey game. Where is TNT on this? I know where it is on my fucking channel. It's not here. This fucking piece of shit. Um, where are you, TNT? Right. Uh, uh, she said the game's on True TV. TNT and True TV have like a have like I I didn't know that till this year with the with the basket with the March Madness, but they have like a thing where they air the same. Super air. weird, right? Yeah, they air was, the same. Man, I just don't know. I mean, he, I know he gets True TV. I just don't know what fucking channel it is on this on Dish because I have I have different cable at my place. Um, can't get Fando here. Can't get True TV. Life is messed up. Um, yeah, whatever city that is in Arizona doesn't sound like it's stuff. messed up. And my my internet's messed. Up. It's just it's just fucked, bro. That's why I'm getting a fire stick. Um, yeah, but the okay. fire sticks are like a blessing and a curse. Yeah, you get every game, but you're gonna be behind. Way behind, I know. But I don't have to pay three hundred dollars a month. Yeah, you could just pay three hundred. Well, less than three hundred dollars once. Oh, True TV, here we go. And TNT. I heard YouTube TV was um a pretty good product. Yeah, but the like, Fire Stick has the Fire Stick has everything. I mean, every fu- fucking movies, it has PFL. I mean, it has a uh, pride or not pride. What's the fucking one? Um, I know uh, you mean boxing. LFA. Dazzin. Star scored? No way. Star scored. <laughs> ah ah. Star scored. Ah, yeah. You can get back That's... all of my we go. What's that? Now we're on the game we care about. Blues and the Stars. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? NBA basketball. Fucking. The playoff basketball. And we're, we're watching the a team. Well, I guess the, she says they win the West or whatever, whatever it was. But let's score another one. Let's just fucking drown them. 
I, I like guess. the stars. I like. The, I've always liked the star. I, I mean, t- since I've been watching hockey again and, and capping it, I like the stars. I like the way they play. They're exciting. Oh yeah, that's lit. I think we're gonna get a we're gonna get some life here in the uh, fourth quarter ending here. Uh, just got a text from the man, the myth, the legend. Get out the water if you ain't looking for a shark. <laughs> what? Oh, Sharky's coming back. Yeah, he just he just hit me up. Said he uh, he just got back to the crib from dinner. Sharky's a cool guy. I like him. I like Sharpies. Uh, I mean, I said Sharpies. I like Sharky's um how do I explain it? Like the uh philosophy. He's a smart guy too. He's Ivy, he's Ivy League educated. He's smart, real smart guy. You know, like a lot and of people- you want to know you want to know where I found out about Sharky before I even was PSR. Before the reason why I did so with Sharky is Sharky came on or went backstage with me and Cab when we were doing the animated mic. So I spent some late nights drinking and talking with him. But before that, you know where I found out about him? And this is before his tiff with whoever the hell and all that. Um, was him talking about, I'm not going to talk about the guy. There's just one guy that's annoying. He's a fade guy. And now he's um, prize picks commercial. And yeah, I, yeah, that guy, yeah, yeah. He went on. I saw Sharky talking about how he, he went openly and challenged. Because Sharky's big, but this guy is big, big. He's as big as... He's not- He's big, big. Like he's as big Europe, in Twitter gambling as anywhere. He's he's on fucking network. He, he's health. right. Okay, so here's like here's like here's like people like um the people that do that ESPN betting show. There's those people. There's like there's like Kelly from Vegas. He's as big as Kelly from Vegas. This guy I'm talking about. He's just maybe bigger than her. Um, but Sharky took him on and said he is the worst thing for. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but basically he's not good for what we do and blah, blah, blah. And I saw that and I said, Sharky and I are cut from the same cloth because I don't like that guy either. <laughs> uh, fades to step back, Jay. Uh, yeah. I, if you know I what I'm talking like about, you know. Fade, you say the word fade in sports betting, it very narrows it down to a very small amount of like. It's a guy that it's a guy that that's his whole thing. Like it's his whole. If you don't know who, pri- I'll give the respect people. though, Dave. The the consistently put out picks for free. Respect. No, this guy's an idiot. But um, whatever. Anyway, that's when I found out Sharky was we were kindred spirits. Yeah, I'm not going to give him any more shine. He can go. Whatever. All right, stars. Let's do it. Win me back this the, the stupid uh Hawks game that I should have put no money on. What am I doing betting that? I put two bets on that. What did I what did I have on that? Not only bet one, I bet the third period. Uh that's what I get though, man. For being too much of a pussy at betting Arizona on the money line at plus one seventy, I end up betting a minus one twenty eight fucking over six and a half. But it, in reality, I should have just bet Arizona on the money line. That was the fucking move. Should have tailed Nick on over one and a half first period and Arizona on the money line. Mel minus one plus two twenty seven. I could have, I could have made a lot of money on this game. But it was also one of those ones where I should have, I should have actually capped it before we went on live. Like I kind of was just spitballing by market by the market that I was reading. Like that was really a market cap. You know how you have like. I would say various amount of caps in like sports, but sometimes you got to just market cap something. I just yeah. capped the market on that one, and the market led me wrong. Plus one fifty two to minus one seventy nine. One fail swoop. Don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this up. Don't Did the Yotes win? No, no Dale Flick, but I I would feel a lot better with a Yotes plus one seventy ticket in my pocket. Than me betting a chalk minus one twenty eight at six and a half, and I'm rooting for the oil. I like that better, Billy. I like Dale Flick better, Flick than Fick. Dale Flick. Well, I only say Dale Fick because uh, Dale Flick because uh, friend friend of the show here at Pub Sports Radio. When uh, the Gina Manzani thing happened, Dave, I forgot about this story. When the Gina Manzani thing happened, uh, I was on a live stream. And um, Tim Elliott was fighting that week. And Jimmy Flick said, Bill, I got you. 
I'll ride for you because they actually really are in the same exact weight class in the UFC. He said, I'll fuck that dude up because he doesn't like Tim Elliott either. So uh, Jimmy Flick, friend of the show, always and forever. We're glad that you finally got your win back in the UFC because um, he got signed off the Dana White Contender Series, got paid a bunch of money, um, and just went into a layoff because he had to retire because his wife at the time – said she didn't like watching him get in getting in fights and because he would just get his ass beat and basically just do submissions. Uh so he retired, they got a divorce and he came back. Um she's got a man ass. I mean, oh that doesn't work the same. <laughs> I was gonna say. Um I I like me some Gina Manzani. What can I say? The each is oh, own. Yeah. If I walked, if I saw her in the club, if I saw Gina Manzani in the bar, I might be the only guy, but I would bag it. Put a million. Uh, probably in real life we're talking about, but that picture is is complete man ass. I'm sorry. Well, it's kind of like a semi joke, like uh, you I know, get, like I, get I like my uh, I would say. I like my busted looking MMA girls. Gina Manzani. We're, we're on the Kayla Harrison train now. Look at those fucking muscles. Muscles. Is, Kayla Harrison's muscles are the size of my fucking forehead. Her bicep. She's definitely on PEDs though. Uh, I don't know how she passed it. I don't know how she passed a drug test to fight in the UFC. Uh, she fought historically her whole entire career at 145, a division that doesn't even exist. And she ends up making 135. But the man, the myth, the legend back from a nice little hump day session. But now we're flipping on the Thursday. And uh, get out the water unless you there see the shot. There it what? is. What's up? I haven't seen you not wear a hat in a minute. Like, damn, the hair got done up nice. <laughs> I got a lot of hats. I'll tell you this. I, I bought this one. This is for all of us, just the posterity of the beauty of the hats here. Tigers have, but I'll leave this one off. Let the hair ride on a suddenly not so casual Wednesday. Yo, Bill and, and Dave, I got to say, Dave and I had four hour chats to the middle of the morning. We're entering the morning here. So this is where the good times roll. So I told, I told you. Oh, I know. I know. Cheers, guys. I got a full glass here. Billy? Not a boy. Cheers to us. Love you yeah, guys. I'm on the wagon, but cheers. Let's go. Love you guys so much. Big dogs. Thank you. This has got to be like at least shot number eight or nine. I'm shocked I'm not way more drunk. You're an athlete. You got tolerance. Come on. Tolerance. No, I ate it. I ate some of an edible. So that's kind of balanced it out. Yeah. Uh, fucking around with Dave last night, I ended up. Going to sleep at like seven a.m. in the morning, capping games for the next day. Well, I wasn't on that late. I was. I got off early. <laughs> yeah, but the panel and then the Lakers, not the Lakers, the yeah. Warriors game that pissed me off so much. I had to like. It wasn't. It was stupid because I, I stayed up because I was going to hedge. You know, like not hedge, but try to make some of the money back. But all the markets were just not conducive, and I ended up missing out on a plus five hundred on the. Diamondbacks, I think, in the ninth inning. They're oh, ah, yeah. it was just ridiculous, man. But, uh, you know, we're flipping onto the page because we're looking at the slate for tomorrow before this third period starts. Ain't really popping off on the slate. It's a travel day in baseball. There's only five games. The book is probably going to get Champions League bets is probably the most – uh, desired market from betters like those champion league games are probably going to get bet the shit out of over i think there's some good uh baseball bets tomorrow but they're all favorites um that's what i like yeah. tomorrow there's some definite fade spots but it, it's just it's just whether you like slim pickings or not like i if i i don't hate if people like to take juice i don't like i'm not going to do that but the rays are a spot you fade canning um i always Cookie Carrasco is always a fade. AJ Puke's going to win 100% be a fade. I'm betting hey, the Cubs. Definitely a fade. Definitely Logan, fade. Logan Webb at home. Logan Webb, Logan Webb at home is a thing, is a real deal. His career. Me, man. I, I, like, I like Arizona. 
that that was what? actually the only spot I was looking at tomorrow. I, I didn't look at it in terms of any sort of quality, but yeah. whenever you see Logan Webb at home, you got to take notice. But take Billy's a look. Not, it, the, it's Chris 170, Curry. so yeah. Anyways, Did Bill just say he likes Arizona with uh, the man Ryan Nelson on the road? Is that the the dog yeah. or what's going I, on? There? I I kind of like um, it, it's it's hard because when you're fading San Francisco. You have to be really niche on how you're going to fade them because their bullpen is really good. So it'd have to be like a first five for Arizona or something like that. But if you told me that game's like two to two going into the fifth inning or three to two going into the fifth inning or something like that, I wouldn't be too shocked. Like Nelson's probably going to give up two, but it's can Logan Webb stay around his ERA? If he has a good day, he probably lets up maybe two or three himself. But if he has a bad day, I mean, I've seen some bad Logan Webb days, but the bookies have his uh, outs prop as the highest out prop at any pitcher tomorrow. So uh, he might be gone some innings. Yeah, I think they – I'm looking at the the general statistics here, both these pitchers. Webb is sitting on a one three five whip, 17 to 4K to walk. So he's a little inflated. Like, he should improve. That's probably why you're getting this, this It's still above prop. average, but – yeah, actually, that's right at average. But, yeah, it is inflated. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and I'm saying like just versus his K to walk. This guy usually has good control, and Ryan Nelson is definitely. I think I'm not looking at the, the details here; just looking at small box scores. He's, I believe, he's very, very case specific road to home in the division. I think he's like better on the road, terrible at home. I could be totally wrong on that. No, I think you're right. I think you're right, though. Yeah, so I think he's uh, perfect. Yeah, and I think for some reason, like bizarrely, I remember capping this last year. Like you, you somehow find a better version of him on the road, which would lead you to this ridiculous under of seven and a half for these pitchers, you know. And like that's where I think, like what you're saying, the outcrop is like an over, and these unders. I think this is probably going to be a reversal of what you've seen. You know, both teams play about twenty games. You know, you're you're just getting in the you know the journey of these teams. That these pitchers are going to find themselves, and I think they're going to find themselves probably where they function pretty well, which is Webb at home and Nelson on the road. So I think, I, you know, unders in baseball are so tedious. I think most betters have no patience for it at all. You know, the chat's popping off. They want a bang or they want, you know, get lit on a fucking big-time bet. But, you know, an under on the West Coast in baseball might be the best bet tomorrow. I like sure. the under two, so there are a couple of like things to add. Both of these teams versus right-handers are well below average at run creation. That's one. Both of these bullpens are, are above average. Uh, both of these, at least, I'd even say Ryan Nelson isn't a bad pitcher, too. Um, and it's a Giants game, which Giants always scream under to me. I think the under is a, the play for the total, for sure. I'm with you, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was going through the board. I mean, small board tomorrow. We got, what, five games, five daytime games, something like that? Yeah. Two, or only three daytime, two, so five total. And, uh, you know, you go through the games very briefly, just in terms of baseball. You know, you got uh, Maeda here with the Tigers. He's been horrible early. But first, you know, first run with this group, totally different environment. You know, you go to the Angels game. You got this kid, uh, Pepio. I'm unfamiliar. I will say that. but I, He was on the sure. Dodgers last year. Yeah. Pepio's okay. supposed to be good. And but, but just 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 in terms of like on record with this team, not a lot at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, that's two for two. You, all of a sudden, you go to the Cleveland side. You know, Carrasco comes back home after years. You know, effectively with mm -hmm. the team, the whole thing. You know, I will say this. You know, the Marlins at at plus like one. What is it? One fifteen here, something like that. With AJ, as uh, Dave said, puke. Yeah. I mean, Tyone first start. If you guys don't know Tyone, Tyone is sketchy. Tyone's, yeah, he's definitely sketchy. He's definitely a ride the wave type of pitcher. Like he's either really hot or really cold. <laughs> but it's yeah. Wrigley Field unders though. Uh, Wrigley Field unders. Um, when the wind speeds from five to twenty one miles per hour, going from left to right, uh, in like since two thousand and five, is hitting at like a sixty. Tyone's rate. Tyone's career whip. This is the thing. His ERA is four, but his career rip is 122. Are you are, AJ Puke isn't anywhere near that. I, I mean, I I know the line. That line actually looks fishy. Why are the Cubs only minus 150 at home versus that's, a shitty team? But that's you know what? what? I, I think sometimes they're just wrong. And I think the line 
might not be accurate because it's a first start. Yeah. That's my favorite game, actually, is the run also, line. That's Dave, just me. Also, no, Dave, I don't disagree. I will say this. Uh, I'm pretty sure this kid, Puck, was a reliever his entire career until this season. So they, we have they, they, extremely yeah. limited data. And I think he did improve in his last start. He got hammered two starts in a row, and he came back reasonable in the third one. So well, I think he was like, supposed to start like damn near three different times this week. I feel like, yeah. Uh, and if you just look at the log here, he, he got at, he got his ass kicked at home against Pittsburgh, and then he was sort of you know laborious, if you will, at home again. He pitched at the Yankees when everybody thought he was terrible, and he pitched well at the Yankees. So I think you're seeing a little bit of a small juxtaposition here. He's better on the road now. He's coming home. Uh, he's still on the road, I should say. So he might continue this. I, I think Chicago this is Chicago like, Cubs the past two weeks, which is most of the season, are the number one hitting team against left handers. Boom, number yes. one. I was gonna say the Cubs. I knew there was something to it, uh, but the only thing that scares me, though, Dave, is the the Wrigley Field. My brother lives in Chicago, right over by Wrigley Field. I'm telling you, man, those Wrigley Field unders in the early first two months of the season. That shit's a real thing, man. Like uh, it, it, these pitching environments for these East Coast teams in the first two months of the season is just dead fucking under. So which the way the wind's blowing? Which way is the wind blowing? Everyone, bro, yeah. Are they gonna hit the ball? And on a summer day, what would be a home run? Is that just gonna be a warning track catch? Like, I... yeah, yeah. No, Davy was talking about that yesterday. He had the uh, over on Seager. Uh, bases and he hit a warning track shot in, in uh, I believe it was uh, Detroit and it was like literally caught just over the wall like not you know not a historical catch but just like slightly over the wall especially a short wall in Detroit and the whole thing and it's the win it's early season win you know this is this is baseball in a nutshell you know it's it's going to be variant and then the weather there's no way around it and our guys in the chat, Joseph Alvarado talking about the weather cold as fuck 54 degrees 100 percent hundred percent. And you're not wrong. And, you know, you know, we love the conversation really. And it's just so interesting to see what happens. And, you know, even tomorrow night at Wrigley, you know, 7 40 PM here uh, on the East coast, 6 40 central. Oh shit. What, it's you know, blowing. What it's blowing in 16, 17 miles an hour. So it's an under five, one Cubs. Yeah. Unders. Yeah. Five and one also, Cubs. And also think about Tyone. He's a fly ball pitcher. Yeah. That's, that's a huge under for him. Yeah. And I think, not knowing Puck really in any detail, but I will say when you see a kid like this just struggling with control and the whole thing, but I think maybe come back to the center a little bit, the unders are extremely contrarian play and probably brutal to root for. You got to just like take your dog for a walk for two and a half hours and come back and be like, all right, we cashed it five to two or something like that. But that's you have to maybe narrate it in for it's just like the one time that I feel like I bet a fucking Marlins team total under is the day that they would. Win the game three to zero. Like I could definitely see some bullshit happening. Like it was oh, really yeah. the games or sack flies or damn near equivalents to home runs in those type of fucking. Yeah, you know, and it's 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 such a it's such a sick thing with betting in general. Like especially with baseball, like where you can't like make the, these like pocket bets. Like you have to like stay the course. Like you have to be like I'm gonna bet this every single day for the next twenty days, and I'll probably profit because my idea is right, but I cannot get too emotional if it just wins or loses and i was actually saying that before i was getting tilted myself this afternoon and i was like i'm just not i'm not immersed enough in the sample like i like to get yeah. into the sample like i like this sample more than the middle of the season because then it becomes too stat oriented this one this part of the season you can like kind of gamble on like who you think is good and not good like uh nick earl was talking about earlier He's up 22 units this year. Uh, more than like 18 of those units are just betting against the Marlins in every game so far this year. Interesting, interesting, interesting. You know, see, I'm like I'm a very numerical better, so I like I like data. But I will say this: I, I 100% understand it because you can find total outliers early season where folks have no fucking clue what's going on at all. Dodgers but, team total over for the first 10 games. The fuck were they doing? Yeah. You know, they took them forever to get to to link to. It was minus 125, minus 130. It took them 10 games to bump it up to five and a half. You know what I mean? I'm with you guys. Completely. Oh, sure. And, you know, I will say this just whatever you want to say, the Astros, they're going to figure it out at some point yeah. this year. 
and you're going to be able to bet them blindly every game and show immense profit. Like one of the best bets for those of you guys in the chat who are, you know, hockey betters or NBA betters more specifically is just in this 162 gauntlet. There are certain teams that are just going to be terrible and all of a sudden you're going to be able to ride them and they're going to win like, you know, yeah. 80% the of the Mets, game. the Mets, the Mets started off the year. Oh, and nine. And if you bet the Mets in the, I would say specifically last week, if you bet the Mets in every game last week, you made money. There the are Mets better choices, money. really, to, to, to hang your hat than the Mets. I, I think the Astros look is a really good – I think the Astros are too good of a team to be playing this poorly. Um, yeah, but their pitching exactly, sucks, bro. Exactly. They, they don't – like – But their offense has been the problem a lot of the time. It's not even their and, pitching. And they, also have a new coach. they have a new coach, which I think yeah, could I be gotcha. problematic. But, again, like the thing with the new coach, it's, it's like – you know, particularly with X championship teams like this, they might not execute to the championship level going forward in six months. They're going to figure it out because as players, they're top professionals. Yeah. And, you know, winning a title is a very unique thing so many months down the road. But just winning ball games in April and May going forward, you just have to buy this team, like, blindly, really. Like, they're sitting, what, eight games under 500. they They're one of the worst teams in the sport right now. Their run differential, I think, is, like, fairly mediocre. They lost a couple of tight games, got blown out a couple of times. But they're going to figure it out. I, just, I trust those guys. I mean, I really do. And I think also you guys mentioned the pitching staff. Pitching staff is gutted right now. Verlander, of course, can't bank on a 40-year-old. But, you know, Luis Garcia is hurt. McCullers seems to be always hurt. Uh, I think he – it's hard to bank on him necessarily because he has been injured most of his career on and off. But certain guys are going to come back and they're going to improve without question. And, you know, I, I look at myself in the mirror numerous times and I say to myself, like, don't overthink baseball. Like, like, Facts. They just, Facts. like just buy teams that have to win games because the sample is so gigantic. And I think that's just a great access point for us. I, and I think too. So like, so like a lot of the times when you have bets, right? You got the you got the bets that you write down, and the ones that make the list, and they're scratch offs and stuff. I think, and people say, well, why don't you just bet all of your liens, you, you, your 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 big your bets you really like for sure, and then your and then you ones you have to go back and look bet your liens. I think if there's any sport where you bet your liens because there's so much stuff to look at is baseball. baseball. Lower your unit size and bet more bets in baseball. It's going to work out for you because it's such a long season. It's such a long game that if you're good, the the length of time is going to take out anomalies, and it's basically going to there's there's more of a statistical timeline than there is in a short football season and all that. So, bet your lanes is what I'm saying. Jose Alvarado uh, has to he posted the opening line. I didn't even get a chance to look at that. Uh, Bulls plus three versus Miami. I I don't like betting late at night because I, it's like I've smoked a certain amount of joints and had a certain amount of shots. Maybe that isn't the best time to pay, place a big bet. But, hey, man, if this MRI comes out, granted, that line won't be the same. But if I wake up tomorrow and I have any inclinations from a heat beat reporter that Jimmy's MRI is negative like it was for Zion, I am not going to let the opportunity miss me twice. Because watching that Zion shit last night, and then they said he was going to do the MRI today, that line flipped four points damn near, like, immediately. If Jimmy Butler does not play on Friday and that game's in Miami, they're going to have to put it out of pick them. And if Chicago's shooting offensively like they did today, that's been the Achilles heels of a Chicago the whole entire year. The three-point shooting is dog shit in a three-point shooting league. But that whatever they did – I can't believe you say Javante Green being in the lineup or some shit like that. And, hey, keep Io DeSumo fucking injured the way they look tonight. Um, I, I, I like the Bulls. Momentum, momentum's big around this time of year. And um, Chicago's got a lot of momentum going into Miami on Friday. I, I, if you can get a dog odds on them, it might not be there if Jimmy Butler doesn't play. couple points, guys. Yeah. Chicago, since the turn of the new year, is an excellent road team actually far better than they are at home. Excellent road team. They were covering, I believe, 70% of road games out of their last 30 in the new year. So they, they travel incredibly well. And I, I made this comment before, and I think this is very real in terms of the reversal of outcomes and the outlierish nature of what Miami did last year. 
to come from the play in tournament and go to the finals is so obscenely ridiculous in terms of energy and expectation. It's very possible in terms of the law of averages. Last year was the effective 100. This year could be the effective zero to neutralize them on the mean, which would mean they would lose at home outright to the Bulls. And I think it's very possible the line is short. Uh, and as I said, Chicago performs great on the road since since uh, Jan 1, 2024. So keep that I in mind. I kind of agree with your take today when you're saying, uh, I get it, Eric Spolster historically has been really good, but maybe that Miami shit ain't the same anymore. They've dealt with a lot of fucking injuries. Terry Rozier was supposed to be a big trade that they got out of the trade deadline. And um, his neck is like actually really fucked up. Like he's, mm-hmm. I, I think it's something with the nerve nerve system in his neck. Oh. Um, Arizona scored three to one. The Thunder's not dead yet. Let's go. Let's the Stars go. had a Thunder. great chance to score, and the fucking Bennington snagged it out of space. Hockey's still going on, apparently. I didn't realize. That. Yeah, it's it's meaningless hockey. Why well, call it meaningless? But I bet I bet this fucking game. I don't know. Most why. Meaningless hockey. I think I've ever. I've bet four hockey bets this whole entire year. This is the fourth one. And man, that's how bad the it's not meaningless, but all the teams are in the playoffs, they're seeding. But and I don't know, I mean, some seeds matters. I think seeding matters to me for my uh, and, and I'm a, a hockey novice compared to Mel. Seeding matters the least in the playoffs. Um, in hockey, Rod. yeah, after yeah. what the Florida Panthers did last year, uh, Nick was all over that, man. And I don't know how the fuck he knew, but he was all of that. Usually Nick's always on big dogs, but that was one actually that I kind of was like, uh, maybe I should reel back this Boston Bruin shit. Yeah, betting on the Hurricanes in that series drained me. I mean, I, I mean, it was, was bad, bro. I bet the Hurricanes the next series too. I, it wasn't bad, bad. It, it wasn't fucking Denver Nuggets, LA Lakers game three or four, Crypto Act. Dot com arena bad. Oh, but, uh, oh, that's what I wanted to ask Sharky because uh, you know, obviously he's great capper overall, but I know he knows his NBA. Um, I said, now I don't think I think the Nuggets can beat any team in five or six games. Okay, they're just they're just they're they're starting. We're talking about depth. They're starting five is so deep, meaning like you have to you have you have to have def- how do you defend how do you defend Joker Murray. Um, Billy's boyfriend Gordon. How do you? How do you? That's Michael. That's Porter Jr. Uh, how do you? How do you guard them all? I think on paper, on paper, the Lakers are one of the better teams that match up to to be able to defend them. What For do you real, think? D'Angelo Russell, if he can fucking hit jump shots and not score. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, like I've been on the bull market with the Lakers all year, but here's the thing: like in the NBA playoffs, it's the gladiators versus the gladiators. Somebody's yeah. gonna lose. Yeah. And it's not so much that the Lakers are anything other than very above average. I just think, and that's why I put the hat on, because I haven't go to the finals at plus 240, mm-hmm. officially dropped prior. I think that this is the team of this generation. As much as people don't want to acknowledge it, because they want this older guard, LeBron, of course, Steph, no longer in the conversation in, the, in this yeah. playoff race. <laughs> people want them to be involved. They really do. They're just emotional. Like, we've seen them win. We, we want them to be involved, you know? We're, we're as human beings, like we're not ready to move on to the next guys. You know, it's yeah. like a relationship. Like, even though it's wrong, you still want it. And it's like, yeah. we got to move on. This is the new group. And they're better. They're stronger. They're faster. They're better coached. Their motivation is real. And, you know, as I said before, like, OKC is way too young at the one. They definitely yeah. took advantage of a weak regular season NBA. And I think Minnesota is also too young and I think not coached well enough, really. I, I think that coach is, you know, not championship quality. I, I think Denver's going to the finals. I really do. And I think that Lakers kind of got themselves in a bit of a, a squeeze here in the first round because they're getting the most fresh version of the Nuggets in the playoffs. If they what do you think the game – what do you think the, the – the what game – obviously the Nuggets win, how many games? I think – How many games do you think it takes? You know, it, it's, it's a tough conversation because obviously winning game six on the road is incredibly difficult. So then you say to yourself, five or seven. Okay. Five. Seven is usually a mortal lock, I would say, for the home team. Uh, I would never bet against them in seven. I think you see a lot of times the patterns in these playoff series, which are, you know, to the average person, sort of bizarre, where a, a, a team could actually play with three, a three, three point, which seems close. And then game seven, one off, home gym, Nuggets blow them out by fucking 35. 
yeah. going like, back in altitude. Just they blow them out. And it's like, how did that where, where did that come from? And it's like these teams, it's kind of like the NBA regular season where teams just coast 82 games. And you're like, who are these teams? And then they get to this ultimate moment and they're a totally different thing. And I think that you could see this in this series where, like, Dave, just to answer your question, I'm not yeah. betting on it, but I think you could see seven, but I think you could see a legitimate blowout in game seven in Denver where yeah. people are just like, I thought this was a close series and draws right back to this conversation. It's like they're, they know they're going to lose in L.A. They know they're going to do this, and they yeah. reserve energy. And I think that's also a key point. Dave, I'll throw it back to you in a quick second, but I think it's a really yeah, key point. Like, super key point. A lot of times in seven game series, teams know they're not going to sweep. So if they're going to lose on the road, they don't even try. So they kind of look like ass, but they're just conserving energy. So then when they get to the final moment, they can hammer down in that one off. And that's a key point, I think, psychologically for people that are watching. When you see teams moving back and forth over seven, sometimes it's not weak mentality. It's intentional mentality. We're not going to waste energy in this game. Let them beat us. We'll come back. But I, it could be one of those ones where the bookies could just try to throw a hook line. Because from an average public perspective, knowing what the situation was with the Lakers and the Nuggets this year and what happened last year, they have to do something to draw in Laker bets. It could be – Something like they win game one or game two or something like that. Whenever that cliff comes where the bookies are going to start taking a bunch of Laker bets and the lines back towards a pick them in game three or whatever at crypto.com, like there's going to be a lot of cheese trap lines. I feel like in that one where like yeah. they're going to want you to bet the Lakers. Definitely. Definitely. You're going to see, you're, you're going to see early lines. Denver is going to be favored. I didn't look at the lines. Uh, I think like five and a half, six and a half, somewhere around there at home. And then they're going to come back Lakers somewhere in like a one and a half, two and a half ranges of favor. It's going to be pretty big gaps actually, because books will weight home field, home court advantage gigantically in this series as they will most series. I think Denver is going to be a tough bet at home. So I think there's going to be a couple points where it's going to be very sharp. I will say this, they have covered a lot of home games in the playoffs it's not necessarily what they do in the regular season, which is always first quarter bets. They come out like renegades. They've actually been more effective second half in the playoffs. They kind of let you do what you're going to do, and then they take care of you in the fourth quarter. So I, I would just advise people that are going to bet Denver early in the playoffs at home. It's actually been an opposite dynamic there. Um, but I do think – they could steal one on the road. I think they're probably going to win both at home, maybe not cover. I think the game, I think the entire series is actually very difficult to bet in terms of the ATS because I think it's a little bit over adjusted on both sides. I think the best access, which I've been talking about this for a long period of time, and I love putting it on record with you guys. I think the best bets in terms of any series are games five, six, and seven. People lose a lot of money in the early, the early four games. They over-sensationalize home court advantage in game one and two. Then they over-sensationalize the bounce back and home court advantage in games three and four. Desperation doesn't set in until five, six, and seven. And people want to say the playoffs are where you – I heard a great quote, the playoffs are the payoffs. I love that. But they're not the payoffs until five, six, and seven. Keep that in mind, guys. I, I kind of think the two best bets, Shark, is um... – the series to end in five or seven. Uh, the series to end in five is a little bit shorter of an odds, but it's still plus 195. Um, and then for the series to go seven games, uh, let me check the number on that. For the series to go seven games, where is that? At? Fuck, where I just had the exact order? No. Dude, they have too many FanDuel market lines for these series. Like, you could bet damn near to the correct – the way the games are going to go. Every in this game. Game. Yeah, every game. They're, they're like 35 of them every game. But uh, so plus 280 for the series to go seven games. Like, wow. That, uh, you know, comparative to like other series like Minnesota versus uh, Phoenix, that's plus 230 to go seven games. Um, The Denver Nuggets plus 280. I mean, damn near three to one odds for a seven game series. <laughs> All right, scored. Sorry, it's a shootout. 
We oh, I was gonna say, Dave, don't get me going hey, here. Okay, okay. At, here's here's the thing. I'm watching the different game. Fucking, fucking Bennington made a save. The Stars are gonna win, and then Oninger made a save. This meaning this game went to a shootout. So, so now we're, we're gonna get a goal every five seconds. Yeah. Well, now we need we need a big save here by Ottinger, and then we, we have the. What's up with that? Uh, anybody watching this Arizona game? What the fuck is up with the coach? He's all pouty face. <laughs> like, all right. what, what are you pouty face and bitching for? Your team's already in the playoffs. You're playing Arizona. Like, it we'll must get back be- to this Lakers Nuggets thing in a second. I'm about to win a bet. Come on. No, we'll, we'll, let it ride, bro. You the met. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll stay. I'm, I'm just drinking. I got my guy Sammy in the house here. Sammy Calmer, legendary, yes. legendary big dog. Cheers to you, Sammy the man. We love you. Cheers to you. Facts, though. Um, I'm with you, Sam. I like the Timberwolves in seven in that series. Um, is that a home game? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Uh, let me check. Yeah, yeah, Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota's at home in game seven. Um, but yeah. that that uh the one that I didn't like is the uh the Knicks and the Mavs. I think the books are gonna get too much Mavs tickets on the series. Derek Lively's mom, RIP to a great young lady. Uh, she just passed away from cancer. Um, there, that, that's gonna that's gonna sway the public a little bit. I feel like, and I like the Sixers um, to win that series. I thought it was gonna be plus money. It's damn near a pick 'em, but um, instead of betting each game individually and having to do it like that and really nail what game they're gonna win, I think the Sixers beat the fucking Knicks in that series. Um, not, I'm not high on the. Uh, I'm high on the Knicks, but I'm not high on the Knicks for that matchup. That's a horrible matchup for them. Yeah, I mean, I, bro, it's a. I think it's a great conversation. I mean, we could definitely go on here for a minute on this one. This is going to be a great series. I mean, this is like, you know, the NBA wants a good product. This is your good product right here. Seven game series. Absolutely, and it's first round. It's regional. It's top dogs. It's competitive guys. Did you hit your bet? I got it. We got it. They won the shootout. Plus right. one fifty two. Let's go. All right, let's go. Well, I'm ready. I'm in the. I'm in the conversation. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Dave, we're generally getting hockey on the last couple days of the season. Meaningless hockey. Like this. These teams are one is going to the playoffs. The other one isn't. Okay, but back to what we're talking about. Let's go. Okay, so Bill's got the 76ers jacket on, and I love it. I have. I own four different 76ers hats. I just don't have in the room. And I have five Knicks hats. I have all the hats. But I will say this. That is precisely the stalemate of this playoff series, my hat game. Because I own both big-time hat games because it's going to be so tight. But this is what the league wants. And this is, forget the league. This is what the fans want. This is what we, we want. And the Knicks are going to compete. Jalen Brunson is a legendary dog. He might be the most competitive Nick. I mean – Honestly, since maybe Mello. ever, ever. It's Mello. Mello. Mello used to Mello 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 used all those games be by himself. Know, that, that, that John Starks Ewing early 90s deal right. was kind of. I know. I, Dave, I was going to say John Starks, but John Starks was not like Brunson. Like he, he was a He's secondary really fiddle. Good. Like Ewing owned the Jalen team. Jalen Brunson is a chip on his shoulder guy for sure. I'm 100%. Yeah, I'm like Mello didn't have that. He was a one pick out of Q's. Like, I mean, I know he wasn't number one, but like he was like that 1A type of dude, yeah. like over recruited the whole thing. Like Brunson, like real talk, in my opinion, like I think Brunson might be the biggest grinder the Knicks have had since, I mean, like Bernard King, perhaps. <laughs> I can't help but laugh. No, Max. I mean, it's, like it's, but that's why the Knicks have sucked for so long because they haven't had these real type of dudes. And like, if you actually think about who Julie or who, uh, you know, Jalen Brunson is, his dad is still coaching the fucking roster. Like, his dad talks shit to him in the huddle. And I got to give a lot of credit to Jalen because he like takes it. And he's like, yeah, you're right. Like, that's some sick dynamic between father and son. And like, Tibbs also like gives them that rope. And they're like amazing within it. And it's like if you if you guys remember um, Brunson, Rick Brunson back on the Knicks, back in the uh, John Wallace, you know, '90s days with the Charles Sprewell and those guys, he was just a role player, and he coached his kid to be this like elite level mental assassin more than anything. Like the guy is not super talented, 
You know, you look at a guy like LeBron James, talk about the chosen one, get tat on your back in high school, one A talent, Gloria James hanging the fuck out. That's it. This is the polar opposite. This is a grinder. This is an undersized guy that can score the ball. He's got great footwork, great mentality. That's what the Knicks are about. But that's that's what Tibbs always wanted. And think about the craziness of this. I'll, I'll end this right in a minute. But Tibbs always wanted Derrick Rose to be that guy in Chicago. So Derrick Rose didn't have the physicality. His body didn't hold up. He was tearing up his knees. Mm-hmm. And he was also a Memphis product on John, Car- John Calipari. Think about John Calipari. He's been moving fucking products you know, for the last 15 years, UMass, Kentucky, Memphis, now Arkansas, Diva, money, product. And I'm not going to say that about D Rose. D Rose got God's son tattooed on his neck. So the guy is slightly meditative, not John Calipari. But this kid Brunson is ridiculous. He's absolutely ridiculous. And you can't bet against this kid. I think he's like capable of taking the Celtics to game seven in the, in the Eastern Conference Finals. I really do. I, but- I really do. This might be the part of the year where the Julius Randle injury all catches back up to him. When Julius Randle's on the court, he's been historically a sixer killer because we would have to put another big out on the court with Embiid. And, you know, Tobias playing the four isn't really conducive when you're playing the post on defense. But the Joel Embiid difference on uh, maybe not a 100% Mitchell Robinson who's coming off the bench, so he's definitely not healthy, and Isaiah Hartenstein. That's the series for me right there. If Joel Embiid's going to go out there and average fucking 30 points like it's a walk in a park, I, I the, the Brunson, the Maxi trade-off isn't as big from Hartenstein, Precious, and Mitchell to Embiid. Embiid's got to stay healthy as always, but – um. I, I just don't see how the Knicks are going to handle the Sixers down low. The points in the paint difference between those games are just going to be ridiculous. I feel go Arizona go. But Sammy, points in the paint. Sammy heard. <laughs> oh man, we just need one. I don't know how, but we're gonna need <laughs> maybe a little a little IDO goal or something like that. I should have bet the fucking team total. The team total was the best bet on this one, but. Now I'm here to generally bet him for a fucking goal. Um, Bill, let me Bill, let me jump. This is a great conversation. Yeah. So I think, well, Dave, Dave, go off if you want. No, no, I no, I'm 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 zoning out. Go, sorry, go. Okay, okay. No, I was gonna say with the next this this series, I think like like I'm not gonna take anything away from the Sixers at all, but I do think what you saw tonight, if you watch that game against Miami, Tyrese Maxey was not his regular season self tonight. And I think the physicality of the playoffs are going to be something he needs to adjust to. And I, he was honestly, like, in my opinion, unimpressive. Tobias Harris was useful, and Batum actually went oh. off in the fourth quarter. But Batum has been around for 12 years, going back to the old school Damian Lillard Blazers with Wesley Matthews and these guys. So you got to remember, that game tonight was won by Joel Embiid, Nicholas Batum, and Kelly. the other guys. So Kelly. your best player all year was Tyrese Maxey when Joel Embiid was not there. And your best player outside of Joel Embiid when he was there was still Tyrese Maxey. So now if we bring in this really serious level of basketball, which is physical and totally ref-oriented, I don't know if Tyrese is going to be that guy at least this year until he adjusts his physicality and ball, ball a little bit. And, but here's the key point. Here's the key point. Miami plays a very similar style of ball to the Knicks. Miami lost by one point in Philadelphia tonight. That's one game. Philadelphia has to play the Knicks seven games without home court advantage. Yeah, if but that's, we, a, that's a 30-minute drive, damn near. Not the point. I'm talking about the intensity of the arena. And if we bring this idea that Tyrese is not going to be the regular season Tyrese because of the physicality and the refereeing, it's Joel, it's it's Batum, and it's a couple other guys that are veterans. And the Knicks can suck the life out of the game and bring that physicality that Tibbs wants and this team wants. And I'm telling you, like, bro, I was living in Allentown last year. I love, I love Philly. I really do. I think it's a great city. I have multiple hats. As I said, I, I went to a couple of games. I 
I root for the Sixers. I, I actually love their group. I like the Knicks as well. I'm just being super objective here. I think the Knicks in a seven-game series, when you look at that Miami game tonight, 105-104, of course, late three by Hero to, you know, fuck everybody that bet minus four. Great little back door there. But uh, I, I think that the Knicks just have that soul behind them a little bit. Like, you talk about, like, like, like some of the other things. Last year, though, that – the way the playoffs broke out last year and they played a Cavalier team, highly unproven, no playoff experience besides Donovan Mitchell, who I'm not really high on. You can't be a 6'2 shooting guard in the NBA in the year 2024. That just doesn't work. Yeah, they yeah. broke out right. The next series, they play Milwaukee. Giannis ends up getting hurt. They end up having a good match. It was like everything perfect that could happen for the Knicks happened for the Knicks last year it's not it hasn't been the theme this year they've had a I will give them credit they have faced a lot of adversity but just I don't know man I, I the, the Knicks the Knicks give me fraud alert um them and well, the, no, 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 let me ask you a question let me ask you a question are you a Sixers fan yes but no like, okay so yeah yes but no what's the no He's from South uh, Jersey, of course. He's yes, a yes, Sixers because fan. I mean, like when you're when you're live in America, this is an American thing. I don't know how in America, when you're born in a specific region, that region you gravitate towards those teams. You know, right. I grew up watching Allen Iverson and shit like that. Yeah, I'm a, somewhat of a Knicks fan, but if I had to say a fan of a team that I'm like, yeah, let's go courtside for. Can you get me some tickets? Is the Spurs? I'm a big Spurs. You hit your over, I think. Spurs, really? Yeah. Uh, shouts to Jeff down here, Pump Sports Radio, in good old San Antonio. Um, Spurs are. You hit your over. I already said. No, I just said that, and he fucking this guy. Let's go! Let's go! go. Jeff bet hockey. Go he Jeff it. bet hockey. Open netter. We get the fucking over, Dave. I had to see it to believe it. I, okay. You know, last time Nick I said like, that the shit, there was a goal, like and then the shit got called back. But yes, I don't know how we did it. Arizona, adios to your franchise. You guys will be back. It was nice seeing you guys. Thank you for putting some money in our pockets. We live in That's Arizona. No one cares about that team. I don't care what they say. Yeah, but shouts to them, bro. The, 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 who the fuck? Is a national hockey team that plays in a college fucking They're, arena. Well, they play on Mill Ave, and if you've ever been to Mill Ave at ASU, then you know that they're blessed. They're shit. They're they're, they're not the greatest team. Uh, if I was a, like a fourth a fourth line guy on on the Coyotes, and I was in my fucking late twenties, I would go down to Mill Ave and slay every piece of rich girl that couldn't get into Stanford and SC that had to settle for ASU. I would go slay them, absolutely destroy them. Yeah, but that would be like the Detroit. They play on Mill Ave. Mill Ave is like, I think like the Detroit Pistons playing in Michigan's fucking gymnasium for an NBA nah, basketball. No, 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 no. Michigan, D Detroit, Detroit, Detroit doesn't have ASU 10s, ASU 11s. All right, I'll, I'll give you that, Dave. Crop. Arizona State girls talking about Newport Beach. Girl, girls, girls that got a three point two, and we're begging, we're begging to get into USC, and they couldn't, no matter, no matter how many tits or coke that they snorted. They went to ASU, and that's, and, and I'm telling you right now, if I was a Coyotes hockey player, I would be. If you're married, if you're, if you're under thirty, here we talk. I'm giving advice again to the young guys. Okay, here's advice. If you are a hockey player, good enough. To, well, now you can't do it. Anyway, if you were thirty two or under, you better not be married because. That is the holy grail for a sports athlete is Mill Millap. Holy grail. <laughs> I can only imagine, man. I've I've heard stories. Um hey dude, whatever whenever you got money in your pocket, the, the women end up flying to you and the okay. year the generation we live in now, all you gotta do is swipe up on your Instagram DMs and boom, pussy. Let me settle on this. Not even settle this bet. Let me throw a curveball in with this whole Knicks seventy sixers thing. When I look at yes, yeah, uh, there's no Mill Ave and SLC at there. Like I said, we'll talk about the soaking in a minute. 
Um, when I look at the New York Knicks starting five, it reminds me of Miami and how they've been for years. And here's what I mean by that. You have a borderline superstar, not a star. Jimmy, but uh, not a, a, a star, not a superstar. Jimmy Butler's not a superstar. Superstars top five to seven. He's not. Jalen Brunson, Jalen Brunson is a star, not a superstar, but they have guys that fit roles. And all they need for Embiid is you're not going to stop Embiid, okay? If he wants to, Embiid stops himself. That's the problem. I think he's weak. Yeah. That's okay. But all you need to do is Mitchell Robinson or Hartenstein just needs to stand in front of him, at least just a blo- just be a, be, be a body in front of him. You don't have to – with those two guys, you don't have to double-team him. And then you let Jalen Brunson or DiVincenzo, who goes off once in a while, you let the bat- – so the scoring battle is going to be Embiid versus whoever on the Knicks is going to do it. And that's how Miami and Spolstra always went to the fucking Eastern Conference Finals. They didn't have the best team, but their team was a good fit. Look, look at that starting five. That's a solid role play. Everyone fits their role well, very well. Half, half the fucking team already played 100 games together when they were all in college. So, yeah. I mean, Anyway, I, that's my two cents on that. If, if there was know. ever a definition of Tibbs guys, if he could pick between, hey, Tibbs, can you pick any uh, NBA player that you would want? It would be the three of Jalen Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, and Josh Hart. They all don't give a fuck about how many minutes they play. They will play the whole entire game. Bro, Josh Hart will will Josh Hart because uh, you know I'm a big Villanova guy. Josh yeah. Hart is a guy throughout the summer that probably doesn't even pick up a fucking basketball. But when the season goes and he's rolling. He will fucking play his little ass heart out. To, he's got to be the only guy at that height and at that skill level to get triple doubles like it's nothing. Like, it's ridiculous. He was, bro, he was playing 48 minutes a game. He, like, Tibbs had him logged every single minute in the game. It was back like a month. Uh, three, I think three out of the five Knicks starters, and granted the other two have been in and out of the lineup the whole entire year, three out of the Knicks' five starters right. were top five highest played in minutes this year yeah and he he didn't he had actually logged full game 48 minutes didn't check out at any point and it's like you you know you say it, it's like it is that villanova mentality like go back to jay Wright, old school oh, villanova. Right. it's it's there's no bullshit i mean the guys on the ncaa broadcast talking about it like and look at villanova since he came off the record to a certain degree like they have been weak, boys you know still live we're still Bro, alive. Cutter. We're DJ oh. hockey. That doesn't even matter. Also, oh, no, yo, it's it over. Get <laughs> out of here, cash, baby. See, Mac, Angels with it. the win in the night. Thank you, Lord. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I'm I love it. I was like, damn, these guys are still alive. I gotta fucking get on. Yeah, I gotta I'm get on. Especially, yeah, let's fucking go, gentlemen. The, the people on the channel, though, they kind of want to get a quick preview, though. Friday games, and this is perfect time for C-Mac to come in. Both of the lines are up, and both of the lines are uh, very cognizant of an MRI for both teams. Uh, Chicago opens up as plus two and a half versus Miami, and Sacramento is now the favorite at minus one and a half in the good old smoothie.com arena. Thoughts and opinions on these games, though, man. These these, these are these are the two hardest games I've seen in the playoffs so far. You're on the Kings, right, C-Mac? Kings. Yeah, this is their best. Yeah, but I I gotta get into it a little bit more. I, Pelicans at home. I mean Zion's so big, and I don't know how how healthy Ingram is. Is Ingram that, isn't healthy. Well, what is this? Well, that's what I mean. Pelicans beat him every game this season. They, they, well, they did. That's I was talking about that last night. When you know, according when we were going, they slapped him all around. But the, it's just, it's lined up for the Kings here. To get, yeah. get you know they beat the Warriors they got past it and then can do it I just this team is so inconsistent but I love the players they got Bill you were hitting on a ton so have I since he's been gone no monk I thought would hurt them down the line but they could still win this game I mean I just I, think I, so going hard forward to the, the Kings because I bet against them so much since the trade deadline yeah. Oh yeah, Sammy Calmer, what's going on, Mel? RVD four twenty. Hello, man. <laughs> I've seen you in a minute. Hell yeah, four twenties coming up here. There's gonna be a live stream, by the way. Oh yeah. Uh, Saturday. Yeah, four twenty. Be there if you guys uh want to smoke a bunch of weed, 
and get paid because uh, everything will be going on on Saturday. No UFC on Saturday, but we are not. Oh, there is? And there's no UFC? Saturday? No UFC. Mm -hmm. Okay, that works okay. out fucking. Okay. Well, so, Perfect. Full so disclosure, because the fans are absolutely pulsating in the chat. Where did you go in the break? <laughs> I just ran to the store. I had a few things to do. Just went down to the grocery store, Smith. A few things to take care of. And uh dollars doing fucking beer walks to the most mundane, stupid place in the world. I appreciate you. People want to know about it. Go to the, the, the dog shit places, drink beers, be an asshole. Let's fucking turn on. Get the fucking vodka. Mm -hmm. Dave's over there. He's like, Shark, what are you doing? I'm talking about it. Let's go. <laughs> What's going on? Well, where? how was your Caraba meal you were uh, okay, talking so about? Great, great, great question. I, I love it. Yeah. It was slightly mediocre, I will say. <laughs> yeah, said, who said that in the chat? Just, the, chat the chat nailed it. Nine out of nine out of ten, maybe nine point five out of ten. You know, chicken parm was a little bit underbreaded. It was a little bit overcooked. Aww. But I was sitting at the bar. I was watching the Philadelphia game. They were down. They came back. I had a great conversation with a girl at the bar who was not cute. But that's okay. Not, good conversation. Not non non cute. Slightly above <laughs> average. Lower the standards. Sometimes you have to have a conversation. Had a couple of drinks, a couple of cocktails. I had the house cocktail with some bizarre pear spritz with Prosecco and some nonsense. I did it to actually help them out. So I thought, you know, be nice to get nice. Wasn't very good, but I was very nice. Good good brownie points for life there. And then I, I got a, a half bottle of wine, had a, I had a sip, put it back into them, tipped them 50%, walked out. So we're here we are. Beautiful times. Beautiful. But going back to the chicken parm, though. When you say like <laughs> underbreaded, overcooked, was it like a? It was like I would imagine that means it was a thin chicken parm, right? Well, they, you always gotta beat the chicken like to a thinness, but it's you know like you it's the it's the uh, the crumb rub, you know you gotta put like like flour, bread crumbs, salt, onion powder, salt, and uh, pepper, and like put in salt, egg. pepper, garlic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And you gotta like you gotta like do it multiple times and you gotta put it in oil on a pan, but not burn it like low temp, up temp, like boom, boom, boom. See how it goes what I'm talking about. Bottom line is it's pretty complicated. They didn't know the complication of it. So I was sitting there watching them. I was like, they don't know it, but it's fine. I'm just drinking, watching. It's all good. But Dave right. said this last night, and uh, it's funny how the conversation comes back full circle. He said, hey, you want to get laid more later in life, you lower the standards. It's younger and, and later, and there are different reasons. There are different reasons. But it's a great fucking point. I think the only type of I, – I, there is one person. There's a couple people in my mind that what I said last night, they'd laugh at me. First of all, these are the type of people that, that bullshit about their, their pussy exploits. But I'll say, but the, it, it, And we know a bunch of them. But um, I'll say this. <laughs> If you are young, if you are younger, this is the only way I'm going to give you advice. And there's only one type of person that shouldn't take this advice near the 0.01% of people. This is the guy that, that dates tens, that fucks tens, that can marry a 10, every, anything he wants to do with a woman. If you are that person, don't take this advice. But if you are younger, I don't care if you can date a 10 or whatever. Here's here's the point. If you're younger, if you're under 28, 26, let's say that, lower your standards. Go All that's going to matter when you're my age are the notches on your bedpost because here's the deal. What are you going to what are you going to waste you, are you going to are you going to um, bone less 10s or 10 times more sixes? Okay, that's number 1. Okay, so you have more experiences, more more thought processes, more fun. If you're trying to chase after and find a 10, let's say you're lucky enough. First of all, if you get wife, if you've wife up a four or six or whatever, you're wasting your time anyways. You're an idiot. But let's say in that time period, you get a 10. Do you think that 10 is going to want to be with you in 10 years? Do you think you have a life with her? How many divorces happened before then? So you shouldn't be getting married to your 30 anyways. So there's almost no scenario, unless you're that guy that can do whatever he wants, to not lower your standards if you're in your 20s. Do it. I'm telling you. I disagree, though, um, cold Do hearted, because I have, time. I will say I have bagged some shit that I definitely shouldn't have bagged before, 
in my younger days. That's not what I'm saying, but you spend more time I'm on it. Saying, you spend more time on it. I've, I've I've fucked some girls. Priorities man. change as you get older. Soccer players and You're not young, young men like that. Like anyway, I got fucking see. lucky. Like <laughs> you, you all will. When you turn my age, you will all know that I'm making sense to the majority of people. Now there are people to be like, oh, Dave's an idiot. He just can't get. Well, first of all, I didn't look this way 15 years ago. Second, second of second of all, second of all, you'd be surprised what I can get now. It's called money. And, and brains but but third of all you're a fucking liar because i'm telling you right now if, if you if if people would, would go back and to follow this they'd fuck three times more women they'd stop chasing they'd go to the bar and they'd pick out who they want and after they realized instead of chasing what they wanted until two o'clock in the morning they ditch it after 30 minutes and they'd go get laid with their with their chubby friend okay you know i think just I, to I jump off on that i think which is very very interesting point we've all been 20 some of us are 40. We're all in the middle. I think most of us on this broadcast. But one of the things that really came to me when I was going in this game, I used to chase 10s 100%. 100%. And I got I got some 10s with Bill, like 100%. Like, gorgeous women. Like, I was like, how the fuck am I in this environment right now? Like, yeah, what is going on? And I will say this, though. One of the best quotes I ever heard, I think McConaughey said it, a couple other guys said it, and they said – don't chase money. Let money chase you. But that applies to women. Don't chase women. Let women chase you. And what it means is if you really chase your own quality as a person and you really take yourself in a serious way and you do work, you create a business, you create your enterprise, you, 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 know, you know, work on yourself, people come to you. I mean, look at this channel. The four of us are guys that don't know each other. But all of us took some work in our personal life to do great things and all of a sudden we're on a great channel, a great conversation. That is the ultimate definition of don't chase something, let it chase you and it will find you in a process. And that's what women is too, because women don't that's want crazy. to be chased. Let yourself be the commodity, the process. They will see you, they will come to you. Whenever you overreach on a woman, she doesn't want that. She wants to feel somebody who's centered in their being, really solid, powerful if you can go to that example but that's exactly what's going on in this on this video actually with all of us so just take that as a point of reference as we go forward here guys i'm gonna give you guys you. I'm, I'm never i don't want to talk about this conversation ever again i'm never going to bring it up unless billy or someone else is but i'm going to tell you a story when i was 27 <laughs> years old i was 27 years old i came i had a time when i was in college then i got out i was in a relationship i got relationship mental and physically i got back in shape i did p90x uh, uh, 2011 was the year uh, I had a little money in my pocket at a job. 27 was a great age. It was the slay year of slayers. Okay. Um, but there was a Saturday night and a Sunday night that went back to back and it was two really good nights, two different situations. Saturday night was a, uh, I would say a Manhattan beach eight, which anywhere else would be a 12. That's a, that's a St. Louis 12. Um, uh, she was a lawyer. She came from money. I don't know how I landed her. I went back with her. Um, uh, uh, I slept with her and she never, and I called her, called her, called her, never picked up the phone. The next night I went to the Irish pub down the street from my house. There was a girl with a missing tooth and she was about 30 pounds overweight. She wanted nothing to do with everyone else. She went home with me, walked in the rain home with me. Stop. had, had great, great sex. I got up for work. I left everything there. She made the bed, did the laundry and wrote me a note. Lower your standards. No, I, I will agree with you that, Dave. The uh, When I was in college, uh, I would say second or third fat girl I ever fucked in my life. She used to drop me off fucking <laughs> home-cooked food, bro. Home-cooked food. Yeah. Right to the crib. I, I, well, my dorm oh, room. Shut this but, door. You know, I, I will say this to you guys. I will say this to you guys. There's, there's a certain line, for, at least for me, that I cross in terms of, like, the actual sexuality of it. Where I just I can't like go I can't like, I'm not attracted to him like like I know the loyalty is there the family's there the beauty like the whole thing I I bro I can't do it like I'm like I need to like fornicate in a fake one on the side to just like you know like I'll, I'll see you on that I'm not in there like for me I just I gotta have some attraction so just I agree with you guys in terms of the loyalty but like I need that attraction a little bit so yeah hey. 
I think certain guys would would agree with that because you gotta you gotta like be hard on for these chicks, right? Like, come on, like you gotta see what's up. Yeah, you just turn them around, don't look at their face, and then that's what I'm saying. Though, like, it's like, fuck, like, well, it's like it's it's like when you're betting, you 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 like betting on the top teams and shit like that. But sometimes you have the shitty teams that you like to bet on. Am I right? Like, there's always like you always end up (laughs) thinking to yourself, how the fuck am I watching a Big West basketball game at one o'clock in the morning? At watching a Hawaii basketball game they have no shot of making that Do you want to be betting angels and yankees games no give me the pirates give me the reds i want the mid shit i want the fives i want a, i want a girl that I, got, I want a girl that you have to be halfway drunk and close one eye and then she looks pretty that's what i want i wouldn't say all that though dude. Yeah, it's plus 25 yeah. on the dude, road I'm not, I'm, yeah i'm not gonna sit here and say like i've never done it i have 100 percent uh, I remember I was in Argentina actually back in 2005 and I was at a nightclub. I was like seeing sideways. I was probably on like four different drugs and I was walking around and some girl was like so nice to me. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. We go to this like makeshift hotel. You guys know internationally you got these like, it's not, a, it's not even a brothel. It's just like a fucking like hour long hotel. Definitely hooked up with this girl. And I walked out. I was like, that was not the most attractive woman in the world. So I, I, I'm right there with you guys. But I'm only saying domestically, like smart guys like ourselves, we don't necessarily have to like have these like, you know, like images of the the halfway uh, spots in our in our mind. I don't think. What's the chat saying about this? What do the, the, the chat know. Is with models? Yeah, this is like we model want chat. Here. Or is this RBG's a, got me rolling. He said, "I love my shorties, very <laughs> thick, young, and dumb." This is this is, is the model chat out here. Are these the guys hanging out. What are we fucking? What are we doing? What's going on, gentlemen? We love it. Philly we Eagle love it. Flyer, great therapy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how we got into this. We love this. I mean, this is like real talk. I mean, like you know, I always say this. Like you know, one of the things that's great about sports talk, it's life talk is the the source of sports talk because that's what it is. You know. Like people live their life the way they play sports. So when you think about athletes, the way they live, they do it exactly how they do the, this exact type of stuff. Like most of the things that pro athletes say to themselves behind closed doors is exactly this. So that's why, like, it's fun to talk about this because, you know, we're being just generally very realistic as to not only like who people are, but sports as well. So well, I'll uh, I I actually, we love you guys. I actually think the lower your standards talk is good for women too because. Women, women, like they really want like a per the perfect guy to or seeking for marriage. They want the perfect guy. Cheers. Lower, oh lower, lower your standards a little bit, and you'll be happy too. I think if we all lowered our standards just a little bit, we're more accepting and oh more. Like, right back. I think we'd all be better. And I guess there's three single guys here. CMX just here because CMX married. So I mean, at least we got no NBA tomorrow. We got no. Yeah, NBA. Uh, tomorrow sucks as a betting day. Meaningless uh, NHL. Let's kick it around, though. Talk about some of these games, though, for uh, on yeah, Friday. Um, since there's no NBA tomorrow, you're going to probably have to bet the games a day in advance. Uh, Chicago, Miami. Chicago's taking a trip into Miami. We don't have clear news on the Jimmy Butler MRI, but he's getting the MRI done. We won't have that news until around 3 or 4 o'clock tomorrow if the MRI is clear. Even if it's clear or if it's negative, it doesn't. It, I don't know, man. Uh, he clearly looked like he was grimacing the whole entire game, hence why I think that's – from a Sixer fan perspective, I think that's the only reason why we came back, bro. Jimmy Butler is not healthy. He was grabbing his left knee the whole entire game. Um, I kind of like Chicago, though, man, at plus two and a half. Um, but is that recency bias where we saw two dogs cash on the first day, two favorites cash on the second day, and now the third day here – does that my public condemnation kind of think that uh, a dog is going to win, or is it just don't overthink it? Bet Miami at home. Man, I think it's Butler to wait on that news. I don't know about the Bulls. That was a good win tonight, but on the road. That's how bad I don't know the if Hulk I want them. Is. You know, the Hawks defense will allow the Bulls to shoot 131 fucking points. Well, the game was way over too. I didn't think you go over that far, you know. Does it balance itself out though? Because uh, I definitely think the under two hundred eight, it's going to be sweaty in the end. But um, maybe a first half. The game over. went over today, Billy. I mean, that three did it, but still. Yeah, but all that was those a, points. That was a bullshit. Yeah, I mean, 
that was a bullshit, but I'm just meaning it got there with all these crazy points at the end. I know that was bullshit, but that's why I didn't take it. Remember I said there's always this, when it gets to that low, I told you in the early thing, what, I had 212 and a half, 213. That was for me, the under. So when it didn't match up, I, I had to stay off. I just went with the heat. What I've heard is playing games, usually the biggest favorite out of the four games, the public ends up betting the dog on the spread, but the favorite usually just wins on the money line. And, for example, the Sixers, a lot of people bet the minus five because they wouldn't bet the money, money line at minus 200. And look exactly what the fuck happened. The money lines ends up hitting and the spread doesn't, but – that's one of those ones where, like, the bookies didn't take that big of a loss, even though it was a public play. If you bet the Sixers on the money line at minus 200, I mean, yeah, you had to pay to play. But uh, yeah, that's up to you. That's how I put it. If you want to pay to play, do it. I usually don't like I mean, I mean, I mean, it's not my work, but I'm just meaning for people, if, they, if they're down to pay, two to one, I mean, get it. Do, yeah, are we, do we really think that the Miami can't beat? Chicago without Jimmy Butler. I I mean, think about who's on their team and think about how they play. Yeah. Take him out. Out of bio can stand there and deal with Vucevic and Drummond. And then Jaime Hawkins can run around like a crazy maniac. Hero can shoot threes for days. I mean, oh, I yeah. think I don't think I think they win no matter what. Take them now. In, in That's where I lean to. Yeah. But with them, I don't even. I was just mentioning like I don't even like laying points of the Heat. It's just been a kind of a problem where this team's been struggled to cover. That's all. Yeah. I was saying before, Chicago has been just great on the road. Yeah. yeah. All right. year. Particularly since the turn of the new year, like really good, which is yeah. psychological. Yeah. Like for some reason, the group just gets their shit together on the road. And I think like to a certain degree, like you saw it tonight when Jimmy got injured, like, like what, like, Back end of the fourth quarter, third quarter, something like that. Yeah, that was the first Tyler quarter. Hero. Oh, oh, okay. So he labored, but yeah. Tyler Hero hits a bunch of shots. He's always going to hit a bunch of shots. So when you see this version of Miami without Jimmy, if he's not playing, it's going to be Tyler Hero, but Tyler Hero is not Stephen Kirk. And that's the kind of the game he plays. Like he plays a dribble drive, like handshake right, crossover left, shot, top, mostly threes. He's yeah. not that efficient, so they can't rely on that. And it also disrupts the Bam Adebayo underground game, which is like if he's not on the court, which Tyler Hill was actually injured for a long period of time this season, Adebayo functioned great down low. So it's kind of this weird clusterfuck between you don't want Hero being the number one, you wish he was not playing, and Adebayo could just run it. I mean, C-Mac, I, I honestly don't have a, a significant take on this game, but I just think like – in terms of these, the way these guys feed off each other, it's it's not necessarily advantageous to the Miami side. I think that yeah. Chicago, the biggest knock on them the whole entire season was their shooting. And I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't know when, but they switched it up a little bit. They did. Uh, Green was a late addition uh, free agent signing, they fucking threw a dart on the board and ended up nailing it because he's been electric for them off the bench in this last couple of weeks of the season. Um, it looks like Io DeSumo is becoming himself here. He had a great shooting performance tonight, and he wasn't tonight. They shot it good, yeah, exactly. Keep going, yeah. you know, can they have another hot night? If Chicago can hit shots like they did tonight, shit, man, that's going to be a tough out because they lock up defensively. You're not getting no easy layups on Chicago. Like, Chicago's like a fucking 90s basketball team. They it's lock Billy up. Donovan. I mean, it's Billy Donovan. I mean, it's Billy Donovan. I mean, the guy, like, mm -hmm. even when he, he's been coaching the Bulls and he was coached OKC before, like, I, I know C-Mac would connect with this. Like, you go back to the Army days for this guy, like – I continue to watch the product, and I think, how far is he going to go off the grid without making a stand? Because, you know, most of these Army guys, at some point, put down the foot and say, guys, like, this is how we play ball. Authoritarianism, physicality, discipline. Billy, I mean, he might be the biggest yes man for, like, the whole project. Because he, <laughs> he keeps up in his shit, you know, UF, OKC, like, whole thing, multiple championships. Like, like, let's be honest, right? 
you know, Hurley up at UConn, two two time uh, NCAA champion. He's not going to move to the the NBA. No. The last guy that won two in a row was Billy Donovan. He moved to the NBA. Talk about a social climber, like a big timer. Like he, Billy Donovan, like even though he's got this fucking army thing, like Coach K and all these guys, he's got something about him. He's got a bravado about him. And I think his teams have that about them. Like that's why Zach Levine didn't fuck with the franchise, if I'm being super honest, because Zach Levine is actually a sick grinder. Like the, the, the reason, like Zach Levine disrupted this team this year. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. weird. That's weird because Zach Levine is their best player, and he's also not a timer at all. He's, he's a like, quiet dude. dude yeah, exactly. He's like an eight guy. He's like a Leo. He's like a leader, like passionate. Like he loves people. So like when a guy loves people but he's disruptive, that means the group is weird. And that's where like I started to think to myself, like even though the Army thing with Billy Donovan is super realistic, and it's probably not even realistic, just it is what it is. There's some weird vibes going on with the Billy Donovan type of thing. Like, it's like a bad army group. Like, it's like groups in the wild. Like, certain ones just don't come to fruition in the wild. And, like, this is – Billy Donovan's just not the guy. And I don't know. Like, I just think, like, when you ostracize your best player, who's also a super good dude, weird fucking vibes. Weird fucking Yeah, but it seems like, though, Shark, (laughs) where you know when you have a a free agent signing and they have to kind of learn the system a little bit more, they got to buy in a little bit. But when you have a homegrown like Kobe White who kind of already just knows – he doesn't know anything else but the system. Oh, he's young. He's young. Yeah. Yeah, he's young and dumb. Like he doesn't he doesn't specifically know the NBA. He just knows Chicago, and it, it kind of has worked out for them. Where yeah, just like Kobe White had the keys to the city and uh, will go pretty far places if he can hit jump shots. But Sacramento versus New Orleans, this is a um, head twister. No Zion. The bookies always do this weird thing where they always post the injury news in days in advance, and all the money comes in on one side. Sacramento has absolutely owned them head-to-head wise um, in the last couple of seasons. Is this the one? You mean the Pelicans? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely owned them head-to-head wise. Um, Is this the one? Or Because Brandon Ingram, the Brandon Ingram thing, you could say what you want about how bad his play was, but when you have your shoes untied and off with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, yeah, bro, you're not healthy. They benched. Yeah, I don't think he is. They got he yeah. got benched. Straight yeah, bro, benched. Had shoes off, like untied off. Bro, in bro, this, bro like, if you if you want if you let, check this, like real talk, real talk. What happened was Willie Green said to the franchise. Zion is our dude. He scored 40 points before he got injured. He's our only access point. However, here's the key point. Zion can't be himself with B.I., Brandon Ingram, and and, uh, C.J. McCollum calling for the ball. So he put a roster on the court, Zion, Larry Nance Jr., Herb Jones, Trey Murphy III, and Jose Alvarado. And and Charles Barkley even said this in the pregame. He said they don't have a point guard. This kid from G-Tech, Jose Alvarado, he's a legitimate point guard. He's not trying to shoot. He's their only point guard. He's a second unit guy. And then you look at the three other guys he put on the on the floor. Larry Nance Jr. is a wing defender. Trey Jones is a wing defender. Herb Jones, excuse me, is a wing defender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All wing defenders. What he did, he put the Jordan lineup on the court. Zion is Jordan. Nobody needs the ball. They all are sick defenders, and we have one distributor. It's B.J. Armstrong, Scotty Pippen, and a bunch of guys with Jordan, and that's it. You don't want guys that need the ball and to shoot. So the point was Willie Green. If you guys remember this a couple of years ago, Willie Green in the in the playing tournament, they're about to lose on their home court. I forget who they were playing against. He had an epic quote, and he just basically called out his guys. And I was watching. I thought to myself psychologically in that moment, I was like, this guy's a sick dog. Like he he made some move on his guys, and they just came out and just ripped this team in the fourth quarter. He did that intentionally. He knows their best unit is Zion, principal, everybody else secondary, and one yeah. distributor. 
dead and spot. That's the lineup you put on the floor, but that's the lineup you put on the floor. And Bi sitting there, I actually felt terrible for Bi because Bi should be on a different team that he can play principal in a, in a big moment. But Bi is not on the right the right team. This has to be Zion. McCollum can hang out, but all these guys that that's the team. Like Bi needs to be on a different team, but that was the right move, hundred percent. Like and, and you saw how great they were. Until he, yeah, the bench he unit looked amazing. The be, the, you, could, see, you could just watch it and just know that, yeah, once yeah. the subs come in and shit like that, Trey Murphy, who started the last fucking 10 games of the season, looked electric as soon as he subbed in. But the caveat is, how do they play now? A guy like Jonas Val, are they going to have to go through a post player like Jonas Valanciunas wow. and slow the game this down? Is, this is what they'll do now. This is what they'll do now. They'll put – CJ and BI back in because Zion is so disruptive. That's why I say it's the Jordan lineup because Zion is the Jordan. Like, you, you can, yeah, like, it's so unique. When you That's what work, the Kings struggled with him, too. He could do whatever he wants and get to the Jordan rack. Line. They exactly. have no answer for him. And they're so bad defensive, the Kings, I think, interior. Like, they just, they're not tough inside. They just don't have those guys. Bonus, there. Great, yeah. great. My bonus great. is a weak yeah. defender. That's what I yeah, like. Yeah. Jonas Valanciunas is props. And Billy doesn't like it, but in this now, game, Dave, I I'm with you though. Now that Zion's out of the lineup, you're gonna have to look at it. If you look at it, uh, Jonas Valanciunas over 21 and a half points and rebounds. Over, he's been over his last five games against Sabonis. And Dante the Sabonis oh, is that oh. typical European player that's yeah. soft defensively. He's great offensively, soft defensively, and Jonas Valanciunas is a body. So bro, listen um, to I, I like bro. him. Without I also, Zion, J Val has I gone over. I like the over here too. I think points and rebounds and seven I'm straight. Like, I like the over. Uh, where'd you where'd you see the total at? What does it have on your book? It's, uh, it's I'm looking at thirteen. Yeah. It went down five points from two eighteen, but I don't care. Like I know the Pelicans are you know later. offensively. I think. I think the Pelicans are going to score at will down. I mean, whether it's whether it's Zion or Valanciunas or whoever, I think they're going to score at will. And I think the Kings are too dynamic not to be able to contribute to a two thirteen. Um, I like the over. I like Jonas Valanciunas. I don't know who wins the game. I actually don't give a shit. Um, but uh, I lean Kings. I think the Kings without Zion. I think they. You know, whether it's a bonus, Keegan Murray's coming into his own. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the guy. biggest home road splits I've ever seen from a I understand. I, th this is the thing. I think it's too wide open to pick a side because you've got points on both. Um, I th I think with Zion being out, narrow it narrow it down to what what the Pelicans are going to do against the Kings. That's why I like Don Chunas. I think that's my favorite. Yeah, you're right. Uh, if they're going to have yeah. any shot, I, I got to screenshot that because um, I'm going to sleep on it. But uh, Jonas Valanciunas is crushing without Zion on the court. Uh, yeah. Over in seven straight games, over in six out of his last seven versus Sabonis, and these aren't these are like way overs. Like I'm talking about in the 30s, and yeah. uh, this line's at 21 and a half. Uh, With no Ingram too, Billy, they're not 100. percent That just and he's got to play big, so we'll see if that happens. But CJ McCollum's got to be huge too. I mean, he went one from nine from three. The other day, yeah. and he's gonna shoot that man I was talking about. Like he's he's got to hit, you know, four or five. He's gonna shoot a ton, but he's got to probably score twenty or more. Even when Ingram was out, it worked for the most part. Pelicans got by, you know, well, you know, one they had some bad losses, but he was really the number two guy to score because it was Zion, just him, and they kind of kick it out to him. But now he's gone. No Zion Ingram. I just don't think he's, he hasn't. He doesn't look right. When he came back, I think he had 11, 13, and he just had a, 11 the other night. He just, yeah, it looked. Unders on the But um, yeah. I think the biggest interesting thing is that maybe, because uh, now looking at the stats for Joe Val versus a bonus, you got to remember both of them are on the Lithuanian national team, and Joe Val is always like the older veteran guy Sabonis is kind of like the younger guy coming up maybe Joe Val just knows maybe it's a Lithuanian on Lithuanian thing and like he just feels superiorly competently bet like playing against Sabonis because he remembers him as a little boy or something like that like it it's got to be something with Lithuania or something like that because they're both on the national team they're starting center and power forward 
Definitely. It's that, it's that classic, classic Iron Curtain, big brother, little brother, right? Big brother, no, little brother. Question, I'm just kidding. You know, like, just in terms of this matchup, like in terms of, uh, you know, like just actual prognostication, just you talk about the intrigue of the unders just continuously being the right side of these games. The last time these teams played, the score was 135 to 123. Yeah. And now the line is 214 and a 214. half. I know. And all oh, five of their games close. went over this number. Right. Like and all five in these played, yeah. And it's like, yeah. it's just like I was saying to people before, and I'm glad to be on here talking about it with you guys on, on, on this point, but just bet the unders and don't think about it. Like it's that simple in the NBA because there's a different product in the playoffs. And I was actually saying this, and I, I really hate to say it, but it's like, kind of bizarrely disingenuous in terms of the NBA product to sell us seven months of a complete garbage, like <laughs> yeah. carnival. Yeah. It's a carnival. <laughs> like here's like every game, like 135, 122, blah, 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 the whole thing. All of a sudden, here it is, April 1st, 95, 92. We care. And it's like if Adam Silver was not so tone deaf to his own brand, he would realize that – if you don't want to make the NBA regular season just be completely nonsensical and useless, you can't have your regular season games be averaging like 250 points. And then you flip a switch with the same players in one week. And it's like 100 to 99 because people are not stupid. And they realize you guys were coasting. You're proving to us. You do not care when all of a sudden the playoff games are completely opposite. And it's like, for guys like all of us, we all proved that we were in the age range of somewhere between 20 and 40 on this broadcast, which is beautiful for the ladies in the chat. But in, in our lifetime, at some point in time. Shout out to all those ladies out there, by the way. <laughs> it's in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. but I keep going. <laughs> at some point, at some point in time, the NBA decided that the regular season would become totally unimportant and we're going to play half-ass ball no defense the officiating is going to be totally different like gambling on it's going to be totally different like the total is going to be wild to be all over the place and then all of a sudden when it comes to the playoffs we're going to go right back to what it's always been which is competitive on-court basketball and again the key point in terms of what i'm saying is not that it's left or right. It's the fact that they're proving with these playoff games that are old school games. Basketball hasn't changed. The NBA regular season is just totally fraud. And if they want yeah. to make the regular season even reasonable, they have to figure that out because it's being proven every single time. That's it. They got it. They, 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 they try. They try to put an in season tournament. <laughs> like, really, they're, 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 no, I don't know what it's like. I did a video about this two days ago, the Laker game. That's why I picked the Lakers to win. How did the Lakers in a year, you see AD being wheeled off in a wheelchair. You see LeBron. LeBron's always injured. Like you have to, you have to have a legitimate injury now. It can't just be time off. They're still doing workload management. How does a team like that sneak into the playoffs, then go to the Western conference finals? How does that happen? You're absolutely yeah. right. They sandbag the whole fucking year. They fake it. They play the game. They get into the playoffs and they play. And that is a bad product. I'm with you. Still better than 100%, 100%. WNBA. 100%. It's too many, <laughs> too many games, bro. 82 Useful. games is fucking ridiculous, bro. It started. But Bill, Bill, but Bill, like real talk. Here's a question for you. It's a great question. Great question. Because I agree with you, but I think this is a great question. How how do you take the regular season down to less games? And I, what I would say, and I'll, I'll preempt you on this, because I've been watching a lot of English Premier League, Champions League soccer. They have the same calendar. They start in August, even longer calendar, actually. They just have these bigger gaps. They go August, September, all the way through May. And I think the NBA could just take bigger gaps. I'll throw it to you. I answered your question, but I'd love to hear from you anyway. Well, there's two ways you can do it. You could cut the games down kind of similar to like a lockout season, but, you know, start around November, around Thanksgiving, right right around the end of football season where, so you know, you kind of condense. Yeah, or you can do how the Premier League does it. And the reason why there's so many gaps is because they have the Champions League, they have the FA Cup, 
they have the Emirates FA Cup and shit like that. Like, there's three different other things going on throughout the regular season where uh, you can kind of reschedule games and stuff like that. But yeah, right, right. right. You don't. They can't afford to take down the games because a lot of the TV deals with the TV networks are highly conducive for that type of schedule, like TNT. They're Tuesday and Thursday, so they probably lose less money. So realistically, you might not ever see them cut down the games because of the TV deal situation. But who knows? We'll see how this HBO Max thing goes next year. You know, for people that don't know, uh, the NBA is going to be exclusively on HBO Max next season. Is that right? Yes. HBO Max bought out the NBA TV deals. Really? Like TNT even? Yeah, we're going to be watching HBO Max. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't know, like, all of it, the ESPN and the TNT. I mean, there'll probably be a couple of, like, Sunday, the Sunday matinee games that they're not going to get rid of. Wait, so, Bill, go back to that before we go to that point. Just go back to the actual center point of the sport, like, in terms of, like, the competitive quality. So think about, like, European soccer where they have, like, two games a week. It's You know, it's not NFL football. It's not college football. But you have two games a week. You got, like, a Tuesday, Saturday. Kind of like, like college it, basketball. Kind, yeah, kind of. And like per league, got like 30, like 25 teams. Like, but the thing is, like with the NBA, like, do we cut teams? Like, is that because if you cut teams, then we don't have teams. bullshit matchups. But think about like the, the, teams. But think about think about European soccer. They've always done this. They cut the bad teams to the secondary leagues. We never done we've never done this in yeah. America. If we had a G League. Team yeah. that got bought up, then that fucks up the G it League. Wasn't moved, it, was, it wasn't moved in and out, though. That's the key point. It wasn't moved in and out. Like you weren't like you didn't you weren't like good then bad. We moved you up and down league wise. And the thing is, like with the NBA, part of the problem is in terms of the league scheduling. Why the bad teams kind of bog the league down is because there's been okay. teams that are terrible, and that's what happens in European soccer. They put you in a secondary league. And the thing is, I, I'm not saying I agree with it because I love the fact that, you know, growth and competition, 100%. But if we were going to cut the league schedule down, we'd have to cut the bottom half and put them in the G League. Yeah, no. and everything's just so money. They'll never do that. That's like They'll if they were going to do anything, they add games. You know, kind of like yeah. the NFL added. Like, they, that's, they would never be, I don't think. If you uh, notice, though, the best G League Too much team. money. The best G League teams are usually the best NBA teams. So, like, for example, this year's G League final is the Boston Celtics team in Maine. What would you do? Have the Maine team come up into the NBA? And then, like, what happens to all those people that are on two-way contracts and shit like that that can't play for the Celtics because the team's so deep? No, what, what would happen would be the ten teams that didn't make the playoffs, the five bottom in the West, five bottom in the East, no, like not the playing teams like Utah, Portland, you know, these, these yeah. Detroit, whatever. They would be up for relegation, which is what has happened in European soccer for years. And it's, again, not a point of disrespect. It's a point of competitive quality. And you get to a point where you say to yourself, if we are – and this is, this is why we're having this conversation because if the season is so elongated – because these bad teams have to play all the good teams. If we want to make the season shorter, cut the bad teams out, make them compete harder in a secondary league, and then the shortness of the season will be a direct replication of cutting out the bullshit games. It's an idea, but the... That's what I'm saying. The Premier League is so unique because... There's so many teams in such a small surface of areas. That's what we're doing here in the NBA. There's so many teams in a small surface of area. The point is we're hosting all the bad teams that are terrible. Like all these bad teams, it, we're not moving them like to Antarctica to, to be like dead or anything. We're saying secondary <laughs> league. You're just, you're there. Yeah. You guys are all bad. Play all each other. And, and, yeah. and not only that, we have a secondary league with these G League teams. Because you have to remember this also. Like, part of the reason why college basketball is so deep right now is because there's so much talent across the board. You yeah. could feed a G League, a total G League, which is like the Europa League, like the secondary league. They could all compete, and you bring them up. So you cut the NBA by 10 teams. All of a sudden, we have less NBA regular season games. Nobody's complaining on the north side, the top side. 
but they're also competing more on the, on the lesser side, and then the whole thing profits. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Adam, yeah, yeah. Adam, Terry Rozier, he's got a bad back, I believe. That's why he was out. This is all. This is all like a good, a good, interesting conversation. But we're talking about enterprises that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, so yeah. much well, money. You know what's ruined? But now? it's good to time. It just what could be. It's is, is that nowadays it's just so crazy. You're right. Money, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. interesting. But I, I think, I think what's ruined the game. Them, is yeah. the, the power of the players and then guaranteed money. So, like, what, what I what I would do is I would in, in in football, if you get injured, I know it's sad, you don't get paid the same. So this whole you want you want to see whether an injury is real or not in the NBA, you really take away. Um, so you you're gonna play hurt. You won't play injured. You'll play hurt. Don't be a bitch. But if you're gonna if you're gonna use injury as load management, which AD does, which now you have to because you get fined or whatever the case may be. You write the contracts differently. The problem is the players' union is too tough and harsh. They're never going to let it happen. So it's gotten – we've let the players get out of control. You cannot tell no, me right. this, isn't the, this isn't the good old boys thing. I know, Billy, you're too young. Every year the NBA's product gets worse. It was better 10 years ago. It was great in the 90s. And it's because the players have gotten – I mean – we're talking about John Morant in a strip club. We're talking about Kyrie Irving in the flat earth. Who the fuck cares about all that? But now that they have enough power for that to be in press conferences and all this, we've given too much power to the players to do that. And it's, it's irreversible. Media though. That's the trade off with social media. With social media, that's everything. One the, that's one of the factors. But here's the deal. It's a beast. And now I don't know how to put, how do you put it back in Pandora's box? I don't know how you do it. You don't even have to watch a game, and you already know what the injury news is for a game nowadays. Like just off of social media alone, or like you could, it's it's social media has given the voice back to the players. I feel like I think that's bad. Uh, Here's what, the thing: what, what, great, what great organization? Check out this. Check out this. Yeah. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. Yeah. The cross section here is that the players are the enterprise. But the owners are the enterprise as well because they give them the infrastructure to play, but it's old school shit. So the thing is, like, this is where it gets this cross section. Like, they're both totally, totally, essentially deserved of this money. And it's becoming more so this player, you know, this, this is the whole, like, the player league, the money, like, pay us the money. And, like, LeBron's been, like, the protagonist behind it, like, the max like pay us the fucking money because we are the league. I agree with it because the player, the players are the guys that prop up the entire league. The reason why this stands for what it is is because it's this old school infrastructure in this country where the league was created like 85 years ago. And these guys created this structure for them to make money. So the, it's it's the reason why women don't make money in the WNBA because there's no infrastructure for them to make money. The product and, is bad too. Ex, but that's my point. There's no infrastructure because they can't sell the product. Yeah. And the thing is, like, basically what it comes down to is the fact that, in my opinion, like the best infrastructure league would be players who are smart, like LeBron. I think LeBron is a business genius. I think he's so much smarter than, than Michael Jordan ever was. Like, if you want to say Jordan, LeBron, I think LeBron is far smarter than Jordan. I don't mean on court in terms of competitive, like, bull market, like, like kick your ass in the fields of the war. But, I mean, like, in terms of business infrastructure, I think yeah, LeBron is like, – Jordan's shoes, LeBron's making schools. Genius. Right, genius. I think certain people, like, in the league are incredibly smart. Uh, so many guys that I respect immensely. I don't put on record. I love this conversation. But I will say this. I, I really believe this. NBA players are getting paid – so much money per game right now and it's most most of the time they don't even care about the game they really don't and second of all they are just getting paid for every person that played the game that never got paid and the owners do have a bit of a monopoly on the pay process and you know what it's not great but i will say this Become better businessmen if you want to get paid more, you know, per your value in the game. 
Well, the yeah. NBA is the only sport that I've ever seen really implement that fucking lockout shit multiple times. Well, NFL did it too. Oh, yeah. The NFL did do it. And like, baseball did it in 94. Baseball did it in the 90s. In 94, 95, 94, there was, yeah. there was, there was about to hit 65 home runs and break the record, and they cut them off at like 50. Was it, like, wasn't was Tony Gwynn going to have was batting over 400 or something? Yeah, and Frank Thomas was about to hit like 400 as well. Yeah, yeah, it was. I remember that. But here, here's I okay, I agree, I agree. But when does the best thing about something because it's become its worst enemy? So here's the deal the best thing about the NBA, and this is what I say about like baseball like, na- go to a random person, name five basketball NBA players, they can. Name three MLB players they can't. The N- the NBA's product was so good because of the players, but the players have brought it down. Now they're prima donnas. Now there's no defense. Now when you go to a game, LeBron, Luca, uh, whoever might be sitting that day, you're paying money, and now you have people watching playoff games that they think are boring. We as sports fans love it because we remember how it used to be, but they think it's boring. So everything is so confused, and that's created by all of – the best part of the league, which is the players. So I think they need to be reined back in. I don't know how you do it, but um, the product is suffering because of the players. You can't right? because of the shit that's happened in the past where the owners were fucking over the players. And You're right. Get- I'm not saying the owners are the solution. I don't know what the fucking solution is, but it's – it's There's a huge players. gap between what the owners are thinking and what the players' association is thinking. Well, you know what? Let them all do that. I'm going to bet – I'm going to bet what I'm going to bet, and I'm telling you right now, I know it looks fishy. I'm going to be on the over in that game, and I'm going to be on um, fucking Valanchunas. And I, I love the Joe Val prop. Like, uh, that That might be the only bet on Friday. So last night, I mean, I, Sabonis is a horrible defender. I got it. You know, Friday evening, uh, PFL 3 regular season is back. So for me to bet something over MMA, I would have to fucking love it. Because I yeah. actually love the PFL card on uh, Friday. We're going to make some good money on Friday. Uh, make sure you guys check out picks from Dave Friday night. We're going to be so, going live. And uh, it ain't an MMA stream, but, uh, you know, when people are punching each other in the face and we're making money on it, how does it not become an MMA stream? It's whatever. It's become a horse stream, a soccer stream. We do what we want. We go where the money is. And last week and the one of the weeks before, we absolutely slayed MMA. Slayed it. Bro. The PFL week two last last week was uh, amazing and beautiful. Hopefully, we can repeat the same performance. Uh, Adam Hurley says Spolcher needs to use Thomas Bryant if they make the playoffs too. He'll give him eighteen and twenty points with ten rebounds. I, if you're Spolstra, uh kind of don't change the lineup. I mean, if Jimmy's out, just put in Caleb Martin and let Caleb Martin play the Jimmy. Yeah, to forget about Caleb Martin has, has come up in big spots. I mean, we forgot about. I totally forgot about him. They literally play the same exact style of basketball. It's just Jimmy is way better at doing it. It's just Caleb Martin can do it for a game or two. And only you only need one game. It's win or go home. They're not so. very deep though. They, I mean, Rozier out, Butler hurt. They're 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 pretty thin. They got Lo- Kevin Love on the bench. I mean, Kevin Love played a little bit more minutes than I thought he was going to this evening. Yeah. But I would say um, very encouraging performances from the rookies. Uh, Hami Haquez and uh, Nikolai Jovic. Nikolai Jovic has been a uh, great addition for the Heat. Granted, it took him a year or two to really hit the rotation, but um, he's given Miami a different lens than what they had in years past at the power forward position. So let me ask you the question. Who do you guys have in the Champions League next round? I haven't seen who's in it. Let's like, take a look. Oh, I, was watching, I was watching it today. I will, I will say this because I've seen my guy – uh, Adam Hurley in the chat, a couple of European guys, Sammy Comer, I know Canadian guys, big dogs. And I was watching it, and I want to make this reference point. I really fuck with Man City. I really do. I think that Pep Guardiola is a, a legendary coach. I, I'm super behind this guy. And I, I want to, I'm prefacing this for more content going through next year as they open up their season in August. But I don't say this arbitrarily. This is the first team I've watched in my adult life that I really emotionally back. And I love this fucking team. They lost in a shootout take to Real Madrid. Somebody was making the comment before, and I made the uh, comment on it. But I was, like, kind of struck about it. And I, I was like, I love these fucking guys. They're great. And I know Sammy Comer follows this. If anybody follows Champions League or Big Dogs, 
I'm getting into it. I will say this. I think it's super interesting. And it's also fun, Dave. I know you I know you fuck with this. And Bill, I know you fuck with this as well. Like as we get older, like you need new projects, like you need new adventures, like you need new like fan bases. Like it, it's get it gets boring to do the same thing every single fucking day. And like I, I actually was watching the Netflix show about Man City and I started watching their players and their mentality. And I, I got like I really got like connected to them. I was like, I love these guys, they're great. And I started yeah, watching yeah. them today and they lost the shootout. I was like, but I it was like the first time I actually felt like a little fandom in like years. Cause when you bet sports, it takes your fandom away to a certain degree. Like, a thousand percent. Right. Like everything is fucking money. Like even my best teams, it's money, it's money, money, money. And I was like, you know, I haven't gambled on this fucking team. And I was like watching them. I was like, I like these guys. Like I'm just rooting for their plays and like just getting forward and like competing. And I was like, I miss being a fucking fan. And yeah, I think like just like, a real talk point, like in this, in this conversation, is it's nice sometimes to just watch a league you don't gamble on and you can just be a fan because we're such gamblers like it can take your life away to a certain degree that's why i love the WNBA shark is because i'm not emotionally invested as much as the nba like the nba you know say what you want you're, you're emotionally invested it's a long season but the WNBA is the same exact basketball concept theories that we've been using in college basketball and nba the whole entire year and we can yeah. use those methods and trends and data you know like the spot like we're spot betters that like you know that's the way we bet nba we bet on the spot it's not usually the team that wins that's the better team that night it's usually a team that's in a better spot and the WNBA is such a unique product because it's like summer basketball. It, it, it matters. It means they're playing defense. The offense is at a minimum. You're not getting any flashy dunks. It's like what you cap is what you're going to see. Like if you cap this team to go under. I forgot it. Was, I forgot it. Summer basketball. Like a weird like Tuesday morning shit. Like like – Caitlin Clark is going to be, like, laying up at, like, 11 o'clock, like, July, like, 14. Like, we're, like, hung over off the floor. We're, like, oh, yeah, we forgot. We got to put, like, you know, like a fucking grand on this this girl coming in just to, like, rip a fucking game. But it, it is, like, the weirdest scheduling, right? It, it's, yeah, it's weird scheduling. But shouts to uh, Sam Colomer. I'm right there with you, bro. PSG, oh, the PSG to win PSG. the Champions League is gotta be well, here's the thing i had to look to see where everyone goes but i i because I, I remember that my fucking yes, holland was on man city because i'm a man i'm a man united guy man city has the best all-around team i think but the best player in the world is mbappe so yeah, so PSG, i mean yes she's gonna get to the final and win so it there you uh, go there yeah go. and also Wait, yeah. if you watch the game today man city dominated the game they just they couldn't get there they couldn't score a goal uh real had a great defense the whole time Thierry Henry in the post game was talking about it. He was saying, you know, like, because they were saying, like, is the best team the best team? And he was like, no, you know, it's a it's a four quarter sport basically. Like, if you can defend, that means you're the better team. Like, it doesn't matter if you have like the best offensive players. Like, they defended better. So I respect Thierry Henry for those great comments. And I know Sammy's in the game a little bit more than I am, but you know what? I'm getting the game now. So hold on a second. We're in here now. Going yeah, down. it's crazy though that Real Madrid. Uh, you would think that they would hit some regression over the last couple of years due to how big of name players that they've lost. But yeah, uh, yeah. it's a culture. They're the fucking Yankees. They're the best yeah, of all the, time, and they're going to be the best of all time. They're like the fucking Yankees. That's weird. their their team has. I mean, I think who are they playing next? Uh, Sammy knows who. who are they playing I, have next? The, I have the bracket Bayern open right Munich. here. They're playing Bayern. They're playing, they're, playing, yeah. uh, they're playing Bayern. No, wait a minute. They're playing Man City, aren't they? they just no, lost. they just played. They just lost. Just beat that too, too oh, you're yeah. right. I'm looking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got to go Bayern. Bayern kicked the shit out of Arsenal. No, they did. It was actually one nothing. It was a close yeah. game. I, I was. Yeah, it's watching. Bayern, Man City, Paris, Dortmund. That's who. Okay, so Bayern versus Real. See, this is the thing. I was, I was actually, I was, I was out watching the game earlier. I was saying to people, were like getting all emotional about. It. I was. That's why I was saying to you guys, it's so fun to be an emotional fan for like. This is something we should bring these these broadcasts. Like, like we bet on everything. Like, if we don't bet on everything, it's like our mm-hmm. authentic selves. Like, I was like myself for the first time in a decade. I was like fucking like fired up. They lost in a shootout, but I was like, I feel like a human being for the first time in ten. You years. gotta like, watch the games, but more casuals. I feel like uh, sometimes you, you watch a 
game with like your local buddies that you're with or something like that. And, you know, they might bet on game, but it's like recreational betting. Like they're just betting whatever, just because the game's on. But sometimes watching sporting events with casual people that aren't indulged into the sports betting community really reels it back to me where I like, you know, people are (laughs) great. And it's because it brings us back to our unprofessional selves. Like when we were like, when we were just kids and we were just like, we watched these guys because they were heroes and they won, they lost. We just like live within them. Like, like it was just a great time, you know? And it's like now every, every fucking moment we're trying to cap them, predict their future and like our emotional, like financial bankrolls are like dependent on like their frequency and their ability to execute in the moment. It's like, oh, and like I've gone, I've gone through this so many times, a great conversation because I, I go through it every day. Like sometimes you just don't want to gamble on a sporting event. Like you just, it just sucks. It really sucks. And like, it's a beautiful conversation for the three of us to have on the air because we're watching these guys and our guy says, I appreciate you guys for going on this long. I'll say this. We love to do it. We really love to do it. All three of us. We love to do it. We'll do it. I, I will go on here for another two hours. I promise you. I, I have no cap, but I, I'll say this. We love to have the conversation about it because we are so versed in sports betting where we know that there is a secondary side to it where it's not just so fun and recreational after your job. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the other side. Dave, talk. What? No. What? What? Do I look like I need to talk now. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. You look, yeah, you're looking, looking, looking at uh, computer. No, no I'm, I'm looking at shit for tomorrow. I got I oh, got excited no. about something I saw. Sorry. Uh, I, can no. I, I, I can talk. I could literally talk on this broadcast for the next 12 hours. I promise you. Bill, yeah. give me give me a fucking shot. Talk to me. Uh, they're saying Mbappe goals live. Uh, the one thing I'll say about German soccer league teams, because uh, I I don't play a lot of video games, but the video games I'm good at is FIFA, really only FIFA. So by default, that's, you know, I've played so much FIFA that. Same, bro. Actually, same. Game. That was one of the only games I ever played. I swear to God. Like when you said I, I was like not faking it. I, I Wow. Like I used to be sick at fucking FIFA. FIFA's the only soccer game is really the only video. I'll play I play Call of Duty with the buddies and all that, but I'm telling you right now, I fucking suck at Call of Duty. Like we'll be Same. winning, we'll be winning like the war zone things, and they'll be like, Bill, how'd you not get a kill? I'm just like, I'm just I'm just here for the vibes and the party chat. <laughs> <laughs> just here for the vibes and the fucking call of duty. <laughs> That ass though, dude. I fucking suck at Call of Duty, but I still play with the guys. Hey, bro, I'm always like, I'm always like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, fuck that. I'm like, give me a beer. Just like, 2K, 2K's a game. dog shit video game. Uh, used to be a big <laughs> basketball video game person, but the 2K product has been horrible for the last four years. But um, German league soccer teams go over. Bayern Munich might not go over against Real Madrid because their style of play. But is that what is that? If you don't know what this is, uh, it's too bright. Blackjack? Oh, Street Fighter. Yeah, that's this is 1992. Those are the only video games I play. I don't know anything about it. After before Halo, everything before Halo. I think I have a. I think I have a video game controller right next to me. But that's, hey. that's the shitter. That's the shitter game. I, uh, shouts to Jeff Slaughter, man. Jeff Slaughter, man, the myth, the legend here at Pub Sports Radio. Jeff gave me uh, really good advice when I started first working at Pub Sports Radio. And um, he said, "Lower your standards." You gotta, not besides that, uh, you gotta don't be, don't even don't ask Jeff about my ex girlfriends that have fucking tried to blow up his phone. But um, he told me you gotta get your mind completely off of betting every once in a blue moon, and the easiest way to do that is by playing video games. Your mind kind of goes mindless for a little bit, and for a capper. Sometimes we're always looking at the next bet, the next sport, the next spot. And like you, you end up doing this all the time. Like late at night, you end up start looking at lines for the next day. And then that leads that I screenshot a lot of pictures on my phone and those screenshots the next day. That's where my cap starts besides the national holidays. But um, yeah, that's why I think the video games, I, the, the You're holiday. not gonna bet a black pitcher on Juneteenth. What was what was the fucking yeah, name last Juneteenth? Year? Josiah Gray last year on yeah, Juneteenth. Yeah. 
Don't, don't bet don't bet against the black pitchers. So you're you're not gonna bet against them on Martin Luther King Day. You're not gonna you bet, bet against the Hawks on Martin Luther. Or you bet against the Hawks on Martin Luther King Day. That's like everything has to do with a cultural holiday with fucking Billy every time. But that's I, if you want me to be honest with it. With you're not gonna bet on Conor as McGregor much as on stats, St. Patty's as much Day. As the stats are there for us and stuff to look at. I think that's all. It, it's good for player props, but I think that's all fluff or bullshit. I think all yeah. sports are scripted, and you just have to find the script. With inside the script, though, is where the puzzle and that's where the game starts being played. Like, if you're starting your cat with this player, this player, and this matchup, as I've learned from, like, higher professional sports bettors, like, it's – you got to gravitate towards something that isn't normal. Like, if you meet a, somebody that is betting – ten thousand dollars a game or some shit like that i bet you damn well in their right fucking mind they can't name the fucking starting five lineup that they're betting on in this random ass college basketball game they're betting on it because of what they know and we have to i kind of use that towards our advantage what we know is what's in front of us the different like for example national holidays and stuff like that that's a part of the script bro that shit matters man Bet against the fucking Marlins on fish day and watch what happens. Like, no, go on. I'm listening. I'm just pouring beers. Listen, go on. Please talk. Yeah, like there's all these games have the, – you're telling me these multi-billion dollar organizations are allowing the players to play out the games themselves? No, bro. There's a script and there's an agenda that they're trying to accomplish for a bigger goal, which is to make more money and revenue for the leagues. By doing that, they have to do certain things. Like, for example – why do you think the fucking Lakers were one of the play-in teams that made it to the finals last year? Why? It's because they give more importance to the play-in tournament. Now everybody's watching the fucking play-in tournament. But I'll tell you three years ago when the Indiana Pacers were a fucking nine seed, nobody was watching the fucking play-in tournament at all. Also, the Lakers had 300 more field goal or free throw attempts than the entire league this year. So – that's not by that. accident. But I will ask you this question because I have a ton to say on this. I'm just, I want to like see what you have to say. So, do you think it's rigged or do you think it's just like slightly moved? Depends on the sport in the organization. So, I always use UFC as an example. The UFC is such a unique sport because those are. It's the clo- – WWE – remember people thought WWE was real until it wasn't fucking real? The UFC is fake, bro. Like, some of the shit that you watch and some of the stuff that happens with the refs and the some of the shit that happens with the uh, it judges and stuff like that, they want certain people to win so they can make more money as an organization. When the organization's in the infant stages of really building itself out, that's when it's more volatile. That's why I like betting on the UFC. And you know but, why the uh, UFC versus other sports is easier to have this, this controversy? Well, check this out. And we've talked, we've mentioned this too. And I'll, I guess I'll ask you, Shark. Um, For sure. What, why would the UFC be the one sport of all the sports we can think about that, well, there's other sports, combat sports. Um, why why these would be the sports that can be rigged that can't have controversy that can't have conspiracies why there's number one one reason compared to other sports there's a big difference there's only two people inside the no. game also, how, one who, word. what's the out if it goes to the end what's the outcome determined by one word one word by judges subjectivity subjectivity judges exactly judges subjectivity. judges judging it's not it's not it's not the performance that you can knock them out but if it goes to decision it's not the performance of a team it's someone who's not in the event judging the event their subjectivity exactly but leading on to that though when you talk about it in different organizations now I'll use the NBA as an example Dude, Tim Donaghy and fucking Scott Foster used to go on family fucking vacations together, bro, outside the country. You don't think that the white people. By the way, what's what's the documentation on Scott Foster? What do you mean? Tim Tim Donaghy was like prosecuted. Yeah, but they needed a uh, they needed a front face for it. 
and there was certain parts of Bill, this. Bill, 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 like real talk, like like I'm I'm literally just like sitting here, like just listening and trying to like figure out what's going on. I know that obviously Tim got Tim Donaghy like had this whole fucking thing and and he got prosecuted and the whole Philadelphia thing. mob, the Philadelphia mob, exactly, exactly, bro. And like and and not only that, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just confirming my own knowledge. That group were all like South Philly guys that were like kind of grinders, like outside of like you know like where Parks is, Ben Salem going a little south, like down that coastline. Sands. Exactly. Well, no, Sands, Salem, not ben Salem. Sands in the middle. Parks is like that Ben Salem. Like I get mid- Ben Salem and Bethlehem mixed up because they both have casinos. One's got Parks, one's got Sands, right? Right. Parks. Uh, and, like, I think it's called Valley Forge now. It changed. There was a Sands what? when I went. Right. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, was, whatever. Yeah. But Bill, like, just real talk. But I'm just clarifying, like, because you, have, you, you're more local than that. Like, I grew up in North Jersey and uh, in New York City area. But in terms of the Donaghy thing, and then the Scott Foster thing, just like I love having these conversations because I like to see, like, really the truth. If I'm being honest, and there's so much speculation on this guy. And I just don't know if anybody's ever said he moved an NBA game. And people used to say, it's Scott Foster, it's done. It's this and that. But is there ever legitimate documentation that he moved an NBA out- outcome? I, 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 I got no bias. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, I got no bias. So My just- interpretation from watching certain games is the way the – rig or the way the shit's happening it starts from the top down so the league or the league it's not like the teams are picking who the officials are the league sends out what officials they want with the stats the nba is such a unique sport because of the tim donaghy situation now the betters have information on the stats you can just tell like this certain ref home underdogs are cashing or something like that referees it's really the referees and the star players that are at the top that are getting that threshold of a money why does devin booker who's if you watch him in a fucking gym he'll make 100 free throws in a row but for this spread he's going to end up missing this jump shot or today we saw a prime example tyler hero shot that fucking three-pointer like this this is the game winning shot like they, it, like they already knew. Like it, it's yeah. something that I feel like is a uh, hard dynamic balance. Is like, the stats matter more for prop betters. The stats are for the prop betters. I feel like. But just, just about, just purely on the reps. And like, guys, just trust me. I'm not going anywhere. I could sit here and drink thirty beers on, the, on this record. And Jimmy the Bag would be like, "Yo, Sharks, ridiculous legend." I, I'm not even kidding. I could drink thirty beers. When I was on here in the middle of the morning with Jimmy, I drank 40 beers that night, and it was just shit done. <laughs> like, doesn't matter. In college, I put down a fucking handle of liquor, and they were looking at me like, you're like, what? And I was like, yeah, what? But I'm not even that. I just, I'm just being honest with you guys. Dave, are you not drinking anymore? I am. Um, well, okay, so it's a surprise because Dave talked about drinking a lot. I, I was ordering bottles of booze when I was on stream for years. Um, right. So seven, I'm seven weeks in. It's not forever. I'm going to my birthday, which is in June. Um, I've lost 30 pounds. Um, and that's also because I'm doing I'm I'm on I'm in ketosis, I'm intermittent fasting, I'm doing all this shit. And it's to shock my body. I'm not going away, but um, there were some health things that were going on, not actually technically drinking related, but it was because of that. And uh, I'm getting those straightened out and um I sleep better. I feel better. The only the only time I wanted to, to tell you the truth. And it's a day to day thing, and I don't act like I'm in recovery because I'm not. I'm going to drink. I'm not quitting. Um, yeah, sure, sure, is because sure. is 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 doing streams because streams. Yeah. I stopped vaping too. I'd sit and drink and vape and drink and vape, and, and it was a big joke. But um, it. I feel so good. Why not keep going until I give up? You know, until I give in. You know. So and also like I, I know the being like on streams like you got to pump like it, it just like it just it's endless like. And like, especially when you used to go on there, like for what, like five or six hours every night, and like, it's like, uh, yeah. And then we did fourteen hours or sixteen hours on Saturdays. It killed me. I I said it was going to kill me. We started a college football. We did 
I did Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, all day Saturday, then Jimmy the Bag Show on Sunday and Monday night. I had Tuesday night, I would do Who Bang. And I mean, I had Wednesday nights were the only nights I, I, I didn't do stuff till I added it, but it was just too much. So I, and, then, and people suspected different stuff because they saw how much I drank, but I just took a break. I didn't go to rehab. I'm not doing any of that. There's no, I'm not, I, I, I don't have liver problems. I, I, I fucking have some other things that are going on. Uh, stomach issues and stuff that I'm getting straightened out and alcohol is not a good thing to have. When For sure. no, I, I was just asking the question. I remember last time yep. I was on, you know, popping the, I think it was the Jameson shot. Like just, yeah, no, I, I, I'm known, I'm known to drink a bottle squirt. of night. So. Squirt, the squirt cocktail. The squirt. Like, the he was like, so, he was so good with it too. Just like, he was like right here. He'd just be like, yeah, yeah. we're good. Yeah. And like, yeah. But no, I mean, yeah. dude, like, please do. Like, I, I'm just sitting here drinking because I, I enjoy drinking. I, I mean, I kick my own ass. Money well, the pe people actually, uh, my viewership's gone down a little bit. People are, people say a lot in the chat, they say we like, we like drunk Dave more than sober Dave. You know what? So, well, you're, a, from a chat perspective, you would take more. I'm much more fun. I'm definitely. I feel like you would live tap more, a little bit more, but that's also the time of year that we're in. Like, yeah. watch fucking college basketball oh i was i'm, I'm more patient now but no, that's the thing like oh you're not when, there, there's no basketball and there's no football on you don't bet baseball the same way that no. you bet that um yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah but i'm more conservative now that i'm not drinking but i don't i don't think i'm winning or losing any less i think it's about the yeah, same like you know, like 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 serious like between the three of us like in terms of the, the broadcast like it's no different really like it's just a flaw you know like i i I was only asking because I noticed you weren't drinking. I, I thought you actually you did look obviously a lot cleaner. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. It 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 just smoke uh, weed, man. That's what I learned. Smoke fucking no, I'm gonna, weed. I'm, gonna, I'm going. I told you 420. The shop's giving away 5k, and I'm just gonna go to see what that's about. But I looked into I looked into some stuff, and we're gonna try weed again. Um, I by the way, Shark does know. I used to do. I mean. In my twenties, I smoked every day. I uh, I, I did well, all the USC, shit. That tells you everything. I did every, I did everything. I did it, and I w was very high tolerance for everything. Then I hit a point with weed that just gave me panic attacks. And this is be this is pre really scientific. This is like 2010, 2012. And so I've I've dabbled here or there, but um, I've always been worried about panic attacks. But now I think, especially since I stopped drinking, I'm going to test it out for now to see what I like because uh, I think I could uh, benefit. Now in my older age, from um, yeah, using that to wind down instead of a drink, you know. It I, I will say it depends. I mean, I've gone like, like I've never like been like super like wild, wild, wild. Even when I've gotten completely obliterated in my life, I'm just be honest. Like I always yeah. come back, work out, lift some weights, and come right back. Like yeah. for me, it was always like kind of like this like thing where like I would just get drunk because I wanted to get drunk. Yeah, and like people yeah. would say you have no control, and I'd be like. Actually, I have complete control. I'm trying to get drunk. Yeah. Like, that's why I'm getting drunk. And then they'd be like, oh, so you can, like, go out and have two glasses of wine. I'd be like, absolutely. Like, let's go have two glasses of wine. I'd come back, ex-girlfriends, hook up, blah, blah, blah. And she'd be like, oh, I didn't realize that. And I was like, yeah, like, like I'm a total, like, alcohol-induced alcohol enigma where, like, I can do whatever I want with it. And I can definitely push hard. And I've done a lot of content where... I actually said to myself, particularly in, in the quarantine, this is actually when it started in 2020. Nobody was doing content at all. Yeah. And I was in Florida and they were selling alcohol uh, 24 hours. And so I thought to myself, okay, like everybody's flat. I was in a couple of group chats with gambling Twitter. I had like 5,000 followers. I thought to myself, like, what's a great way to get followers? go to the liquor store in the morning when people are going to work on weekdays because nobody's going to work and pop off, play some rap music or, you know, whatever music it was, it was all different types of music and just jam and just talk to people and say like, I got you, I respect you, blah, blah, blah. And that's when my channel kind of jumped because I was always there for people like in my, in myself, like psychologically, but in the quarantine, it really popped and people were like sharks there. And I was like, Okay, I connect. That's that's what I wanted to connect. It connects, and it started to jump from there. And that's when, like, I started the show with Jay Money. Jay Money was like, "I love your shit." We started the show, and it just went from there. But the point was, it was content, it was music, it was conversation, it was the whole thing. And it, sports was just a component of the whole of, of the whole thing. 
but it was it was definitely sourced in the the emptiness of the quarantine and that's for like dave for like like super real like there's been numerous times in my life where like i overdrank on the air and looked like a complete mm -hmm. asshole and like i had to wake up and look at the video and like i've deleted videos so i was like you know what like people that watch that that's premium content for me you got that <laughs> It's yeah, so about backstab, backstab. You can get me, you get me on stream. There's a camera in front of my face, and I'm like obliterated. Like there's That's no camera. Concept. There's definitely, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely been some moments where uh, I I've learned uh, let the producers do the producing job, right? I don't have to watch it back. Let the producers do it. <laughs> no, I, I've been on there numerous times, and like again, not like super agreed or anything. Like it's more so just like like the end of my run, like. Like what we're talking about, like what I said to you guys in terms of like being on here for five or six hours, like no joke, like I could sit on here for the next six hours and just literally just talk to people. Like I have no, it's not so much that I'm sitting here like doing anything other than just chatting, but like I love people so much. I want to connect with people because people are isolated. They're lonely. They don't have any sort of like connection within what's going on. And it's like, I see everybody in their lens. Like there are so many people in, in their lens right now looking out to us who just don't feel good. Like just feel, it's not horrible, but like sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's, but it's never great. You know, like if it's great, it would be on here talking outward. The guys that talk outward are the ones that feel pretty damn good. And there's a lot of people that just like sit there and they kind of look out and they see the world and they kind of have this scope and I realized that a long time ago and I said, I want to talk to those people in a very direct way. And that's when I started Sharky Waters Nation. And that's why I love collaborating with you guys. I mean, going, this is years and years in, in the making, but I just want to continue this, this, this idea that there's always somebody that wants to talk big, like big. There's always somebody that just cares more. Like I'll sit here, Bill, you sit here. Dave, you sit here. You know, you cut drinking for a month. You look fucking great. You know, Bill, you've been like, I remember the first time I went live with you. It was like a 10 way chat with like Jimmy. And we were just like, I shouted you and you shouted me. Like, here we are, like hanging the fuck out. Like, it's like, it's this constant like integration of life. Like, you always are in a better position when you just take one step forward in terms of your self trust. And I just, that's what I've always said to people like, trust yourself a little bit more. There's a better point for you in the moment if you just trust yourself and trust your intuition. And I, I, I will, I will go on. But Bill, talk to me. I will go on. I want to go on, on this. For no, 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 no. Continue on, because uh, 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 two a.m. might be the uh, cutoff here. I gotta, I gotta look at some of these fucking. Yeah, yeah. These yeah, I gotta, I gotta do, I gotta do my video. Yeah, because you know, I don't, I don't, I, I didn't mean on this channel. Like, no, I, no, no, no. Uh, you know me. I'll, I'll go. I'll. Go, I mean, there have been times. Granted, there was booze and blackjack and stuff going on backstage, but recently, in the past months, I'll go to seven, seven o'clock in the morning, uh, uh, East Coast time. But not tonight. I got to do a video. Um, but it's good being on. I mean, we. <sighs> I talk to I talk to guns. I don't talk to you hardly as much as I talk to him. And I don't talk to him barely at all. But we do need to cross pollinate more. I think it's good. Yeah. I think it's good for everyone. Um, I even I mean, even if guns is coming on my show just to promote himself, which is what he does. Who wants to who wants to come over to gun, whatever? I just I just want I just want to be involved with you. You want to know why? Here's a, here's the real deal. Good good people surrounding themselves with good people. Um, good things happen, and you don't need to even know what those things are. Um, when there's bad people involved, um, you, the, the vibe's bad, bad things happen. And I think um, definitely you guys, but Chuck, you need to, I mean, Billy knows I'm, he's my boy. But but the chat, to, though, the chat loves to see an integration from different channels. Cause what, what I've learned from being on the other side, meaning like not the panel side on the producer side, a lot of the same exact people in the chats on watch all the different shows that are kind of in the same exact genre of topics yeah. on YouTube. So it's like kind of conglomerating everybody into like basically like one bar and we're all drinking and smoking together type of thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like the closest thing that you can get to that virtually. So I, that's the one thing I've learned. A lot of people in the chat watch a lot of different channels and usually it's the same exact theme type of people. So when you conglomerate and kind of cross platform, it's kind of like 
when you would watch your favorite rapper on like VH1 or MTV and you would see them drop a new song, you're like, oh shit, so and so is on this bitch, let's go. You would even know the song, but you by two songs down, you're fucking repeating the words. Like it's the same exact thing I feel like for YouTube for sports betting. Like uh very rarely do I feel like I see a cross conglomerate of platforms and that's what usually um gets the fans going uh somebody becomes a fan of you and they end up watching a stream or some shit like that they might become a fan of another and uh you know always spread out the good love in the world shouts to everybody in the chat we've been live for almost seven hours on a impromptu nba playing tournament stream uh there's no ufc this weekend so uh this is your ufc stream for you right yeah um, but before we go on out of here, swinging around the panel, David. Yeah, I'm calling you David now. You can if you want. Get into me. It's 2 a.m. Dave, where can they find you? And when is the next? Uh, I call them watch parties. I'm. I'm uh, I call it watch parties, but really live stream. When's the next live stream? Yeah, we kind of downgraded after. <clears throat> you know, it's MLB. Yeah. We're doing fr Friday Friday nights. Until I was going to do a, a stream tonight, but Billy wanted to, so it'll be pop ups. But every Friday night on Picks from Dave YouTube channel, and it's um, it's an all sports. Sometimes we go on and don't even talk about sports for hours, talk about it's just guys getting together. But we we do win money, um, you know, because we have all the same kind of characters. We've got Mike on there, Billy on there, Nick's my co host. So, um, if you guys don't know, most of you in the chat already subscribe and come in there but if you don't i have a youtube channel picks from dave i run a show on friday nights it's live if you aren't going out clubbing or you know taking your wife out to dinner pop on best is when sean higgs comes on and sean higgs comes on you would this think you, you would think you would see sean higgs on all these different websites at the top cap where he's going to talk about a bunch of sports and we're just talking about life sean, sean higgs has come on um um ramon's got Ramon Scott comes on. I mean, everyone from all used over the place. One dude from Hollywood. Uh, Mitch used to come on. If you know who that is, not Doherty from Australia. The other dude from Australia. He's right the, there. Do Doherty's right there. Two twenty nine. Not, not, not Doherty though. There's Damn. the other dude. He it, not from Australia. He lives in like one of those uh, Asian countries. Oh um, uh, yeah, Jesse Shul. He's an Jesse uh, Shul. Shark's doing some wager talk stuff. He should know. He should know. Um, not anymore. Oh, sorry. Okay, never mind. Jesse Shul's doing that. Anyway, Jesse Shul lives in uh, Thailand. No, no, no problem. They got problems, so let them let them whatever. Know. Jesse Shul from Thailand. Jesse Shul's also picks and parlay. He's everywhere. He's one of those guys that's on our show. But yeah, we it, it just shows you I'm a little teeny tiny channel. I'm not even monetized fully yet. I'm halfway there. I'm trying to get there, but I don't give a shit. You want to know why? And we get to monetize. We're there to win money and have a good time. That's what we are. So I have famous people on my show, and I'm a little guy. So suck it. No, I'll definitely give you credit on that, though. Sharky, what, my favorite quote, don't swim through the water unless you expect to see a fucking shack. I'll that say is, that. Gun said that, I think. Yeah, the Guns, the the guns, guns channel. channel. That shit's so funny. When Guns does the... Uh, uh, no, guns, do you have a shirt on or talk, off? I talked to Guns last night. He was like... I don't know. Guns like thought that I was like deserting him. I was like, Guns, you're my dude. Like, we're yeah. putting on like these big time shows. It's just not college football season. What am I supposed to do? Like, come over to your house and like give you a hug? <laughs> but the thing is, like, the chat's live. 29 in the house, my guy. Big dogs. Jason Meyer in the house. Everybody's in the house. Picks from Dave. Bills on Bills. Big dogs. Sharky Waters Nation. Nine words of lifestyle. Ride the wave or get out of the fucking water. That's my that's my moniker, Bill. That's what the fuck goes down. So it's I, ten words, big dogs. I love you guys. Jimmy knows I love him. Jimmy, the big dog in the house. Daddy Cab, Dutch, big dogs. Cheers up, fears down. Love you guys so much. We love you guys. Seven hours in the books. Are you kidding me? We're real, big dogs. Close my Let's go. Hell yeah! Uh, make sure you guys join the uh, NHL bracket contest. All the seeds are locked in, and all that good shit. 
The NHL playoffs are finally here. Not long from now, one team will be awarded the greatest trophy in professional sports. And here at Pub Sports Radio, we are celebrating it with our first ever NHL playoff pool. $50 to enter and all of that money except for $3 in credit card fees goes into the prize pool. Your job is to create a roster of 20 players, any 20 players of your choosing. One point for a goal, one point for an assist the team with the most points at the end of the stanley cup playoffs gets the cash the top 10 percent will be paid here in our pub sports radio nhl playoff pool 